Everybody want this cookie My spoil your rotten cookie Yeah, everybody wants this cookie My spoil your rotten cookie Yeah, everybody want this cookie My spoil your rotten cookie Yeah, everybody wants this cookie My spoil your rotten cookie Yeah, everybody wants this cookie yeah. Let me stop that music and we about to get it popping now what is up youtube the doctor is back i am the celebrity doctor and i am here to write a script for your favorite or maybe even your non favorite celebrity i really don't care i'm gonna make you mad either way with what i say and make you laugh too and as somebody just put in the chat i'm gonna make your intestines jiggle i want to make your stomach curl turn Hurl all that shit. I want to make your sphincter tighten up and I want to damn sure make you piss on yourself tonight. So anyway, before we get into everything and all of these celebrities that are coming into my office with all these illnesses, y'all know I'm not a real doctor. I'm a peopleologist. Nothing more, nothing less. I put Tiffany back in the room. I wore her out today, so she's not going to be assisting us. Uh, you know, we, we, we did some crazy stuff last night. You know, yeah, y'all don't even understand. So before I get into everything, let me know that you can hear me and see me good, and then we're going to get it popping. And then we're going to get it popping. All right? All right, we ready? I think y'all can hear me. Thank you, Melissa. You all ready? Y'all make sure y'all hit the like. Keep it at 50% and make sure you send a brother the super chats and the cash apps. Because the doctor needed. it. I got to say, hell, I be getting all kinds of malpractice suits. Anyway, first things first. We got to talk about our favorite thug, Young Buck. Uh, young Buck, you know your ass is a little too old to still be called young. So we're going to call you Old Buck. Uh, matter of fact, you look like an old buck. You you look like a car mechanic. You look like one of them car mechanics that be having them cigarettes named Marcus that be like, it be hanging right here off the lip. I grew up, I grew up around niggas like you, uh, Young Buck. I'm about to call you Marcus. I done forgot what your real name is. That don't even matter. But you is a Badusi chaser, and that's what's most important, and that's why we here today. Um, The doctor is here to open up your eyes to some things, and um, if y'all don't, well, much like he really can't open up his eyes, but I'm gonna open up your eyes to some things, and the doctor is here to let y'all know that if what I say tonight offends you, then you can lick my nuts and my grits. Moving right along from that, Young Buck has been arrested was arrested for vandalism because he went to his ex-girlfriend's house tearing up her shit. Now, I'm not going to put her picture up here, Buck or Mark. I just really want to call you Marcus. Marcus, I'm not going to put your ex-girlfriend's picture up here because you have embarrassed her enough. You know, when you was out here looking for chicks with, you know, titties at the top and sausage at the bottom, when you was going to every sausage fest possible, when you was, you know, getting ran through in G-Unit because we know G-Unit did not stand for Gorilla Unit according to the game. It stood for Gay Unit. Now, that ain't what I know. That's just what I I heard allegedly allegedly i would say sue me if you got an issue with it but i mean damn you barely could make your bond of a thousand dollars to get out of jail you know you still ain't paid for to send back his twenty five thousand that you owe him so i damn sure don't think you even got the five hundred dollars for the filing fee as a matter of fact you might want to pay that child support first before you try to actually come and sue me but okay don't get mad at me so it anyway you are so violent towards women, and you won't leave this girl alone. All right, so I definitely have to write, I definitely have to diagnose you as being a stalker. You is a grade A lifetime movie type stalking ass nigga that don't want to take no for an answer. The girl done blocked you. She done blocked you on social media. She don't want to be bothered. She didn't all, look, you've been throwing off her pH balance for years. You didn't already embarrassed her. And on top of that, she was paying your bills and paying your cell phone bill. You can't even just do her the courtesy of leaving her alone. You got to go vandalize her shit. Why you got all that smoke for that girl but ain't got no smoke for 50 Cent that's been uh, roasting and dragging you for the longest? I'm just saying, you know, shorty want to ride with me, but they say that, you know, the only shorties you was riding was was, was actually shorties, you know, not shorties, but shorties. And in addition to that, they say you ain't even got no car with no back seat in it no more for even for them to ride. They say your registration is expired, your insurance been gone, and uh, they say that you, you riding down to the hubcap. So shorty want to ride with you, but y'all not going nowhere. Y'all not going nowhere for 
far in life, much much like your music career. Unfortunately, young buck, let's just keep it real. You vandalizing and you so violent and whooping hoes ass because you really just you really just want to go get little Tracy round the block. You know, you want to get Tracy with the nice boobs at the top. You know, sprinkled with a little chest hair and the nice deep bowls that you like. I'm just saying, just go be with a lady boy and call it a damn day, buck. Go be with what you want. We already know. Come round showing her off and you'll probably be happy. Hell, them trans girls, them T girls just hustles. They'd actually show you how to get a bag out here. Or at least go maybe pimp a couple of them so you can actually pay your child support and pay your car insurance and your, and your cell phone bill. Buck! Stop vandalizing these hoes. So anyway, in addition to that, I'm also diagnosing you with just being slow. <clears throat> I told y'all in this life, <clears throat> in this life, excuse me, you got, you know, you got your average people, right? You got your geniuses, your bright people, stuff like that. You know, you got your slower people. You know, you got the mentally retarded. But I told y'all that people like Young Buck is what you call pre-tardation. It's the level right before you get to mental retardation. But it is usually still pretty functional. Sometimes you mistake it as an average person. But they do shit to let you know that that brain ain't working right. That elevator ain't going all the way up. Up to the top. I also uh, am uh, going to write you a script to get that DNA test, and I want to know if you're. <laughs> I want to know if you you are the product of cousins fucking because your eyes is just a little bit too close together for me. So anyway, and we still don't know what that knob is at the top of it here. Anyway, but I want you to take my script and get up out of my office. Go find you a nice tea girl to put you up in the house. They usually have some nice places. I know your credit is shot, so she damn sure can't come stay with you. Go live your life and be happy and stop. Beating on and vandalizing women, shit. Leave that girl alone. She don't want to be bothered with you. She don't want to be bothered with you no more. Anyway, real quick, we're going to talk about little Uzi Vert next. Little Uzi Vert. All right, but I'm just going to write you uh, a script in the name of Lucifer because that's who you named yourself after. Um, the people say you've been online tripping, talking about you, Michael Jackson, talking about you want to bleach your skin. We ain't even going to talk about the fact that you made up that lie that you put a $30 million diamond in your head because, I mean, you had already sold your soul for about $100,000. And I would just hope to think that, you know, you wouldn't have $30 million to spare and you wouldn't at least put JT up in a home and get her out that damn rented condo. I'm just, y'all niggas, y'all sell, sell y'all souls away and, and sign these contracts and, and really be living like us here in Atlanta. Anyway, that ain't the point. The point is Lil Uzi Vert talking about he want to bleach his skin. The, the, Lil Uzi Vert, I'm diagnosing you with having nothing more than an MK Ultra mind break. That chip that they put in the back of your head is is, is, is malfunctioning. And you think because now you that you just sold your soul, you think if you change your skin color and transform it to somebody else, that you know you won't have to pay up, you know, with your soul for eternity when your ass died. But just like you told them, oh, I'm sorry, like you told that Wonder Bread, that was, ooh, ooh, that was bad. Like like you told Wonder Bread that was at your concert because it really ain't that, that many black folks listen to you like that. Because I really don't get the appeal. But anyway, like you told Wanda Brevin, they was at your concert that they was going to hell with you. Well, I want to let you know that it don't matter if you, you know, stay dark or if you change into Sammy Sosa, Michael Jackson, or whomever the hell. You are still going to burn an eternal hell for selling your soul to Lucifer. Now, you know, I will tell you that you can break that contract, but it would end in your immediate death uh, or, or assassination, you know, or you being uh, S-worded. You know what I'm saying? The Chester Beningtons of it all. But, 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 but this ain't about that, Lucifer. This is about the fact that you really just been lying to us this whole time. You said you was about that life. You said you was about that that Lucifer life, that devilish life. And I just got to diagnose you for being scared. Now, don't be scared. Now, did you get a vision of hell and realize you didn't want to burn for eternity there? Well, hell, JT already taking pictures over there, covering up her right eye. And young mom, young, young, young mommy, <laughs> young Miami and already gave that cookie up to Diddy and Diddy giving her the worms and all them other spirits he putting up in her. So y'all all done sold y'all souls for pretty much a Birkin bag and now y'all want it back. And I'm just going to tell you, no, your application uh, 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 has not been approved. Uh, uh, the devil will be repossessing your soul upon your immediate death. And the best that you will be able to do when your ass die, either from all these diamonds and foreign objects you're trying to put in your body or when the industry get ready to sacrifice you or hell over when jt gets out of your shit and get ready to sacrifice you either way when you die your uh soul will be going to the lean holder who is lucifer morning star light star day star hey tori whatever you want to call it all right now and the best you're gonna be able to do is to go into the bankruptcy foreclosure court of the lord and plead and beg for it back but i want to let you know that they will not let you file chapter seven bankruptcy on your dead to lucifer 
for you will always be in chapter 13. They will be rearranging your guts and ale, sticking pitchforks up your ass with no spit nor any lube for eternity. You know, you 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 heard about they had allegedly, you know, it was literally had Michael Jackson down there dancing down there in hell and legs kept falling off and he kept dancing for eternity. He just kept doing the moonwalk. So that is what you will be doing. You will be running around with purses, riding Satan's pitchfork with no lube and no spit for eternity. Ain't no AC down there. Ain't no lake. Ain't no lake. It's a lake of fire. Ain't no water. Ain't no none of that. So enjoy your riches while you're here and enjoy your purses. I heard Lucifer carry a nice purse though. I heard he did. I heard he did. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm. Volume up, can y'all not hear me? Wait a minute, can you hear me? Let me make sure y'all can hear me in the chat. Can y'all hear me in the chat? Let me know. Let me know, let me know. I want to make sure y'all can hear me. Somebody let me know you can hear me. They talking about the, the volume. What? Yes, Pamela said yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Now, before we get into talking about Summer Walker, people, I had to come and talk about our sponsor, Her Sacred Place. My vagina is steamy clean. Now, the doctor ain't got no vagina. I'm letting you know. I ain't, I ain't got no vagina, right? I got a sausage. But this company here, right, provides you with feminine wipes. Look at that there. Look at that. Feminine wipes, right? Don't want you with no spore rotten cookie. Yoni bars, sacred yoni bars to keep your yoni clean, right? Oh, and even got the shower wash too. I'm just saying. So listen, people, listen, listen. Make sure you click the pinned link in the chat for her sacred place. Helping your vagina be clean one steaming at a time, okay? You don't want no spore rotten cookie? Valentine's Day is coming up. You don't want your man in his group chat talking about that you smelling like fish and all kinds of other guts. And in addition to that, it's almost summertime, right? It's almost sundress season. And you gonna wanna make sure that your shit is aired out and that you don't air people out in your pussy wind when you walk past them. We didn't all been there. Don't act like you haven't. All right. Moving right along from that, we need to talk about Summer Walker. Um, and let's, uh, let's let our brother come up here too. So listen, I'm not too mad at the haircut. I'm not going to lie. You know, people uh, was, was coming at me talking about doctor. You got to write some of the script. She done lost her mind. She, she over here on her Jada Pinkett. Is this MK Ultra? What is going on with her? I'm letting you know, this ain't nothing more than summer being summer. Y'all know summer, whether it's summer, winter, fall, spring, whatever the hell, summer is weird. They say, y'all, I actually like it. This is nothing more than summer waking up and saying, you know what? Not only am I not going to wash my feet today, I'm only going to shave 90% of my head. I ain't even going to worry about taking no head and shoulders to my scalp because I still see the dandruff flakes in your scalp. You didn't even try to fade it out. No, did you? Why is it so red around your edges, too? No, not only that, you didn't even give yourself no line, and not the boy lining or the girl line, the summer walker. So you really didn't give it damn and as far as london's baby mamas are concerned i don't know why y'all thought y'all was dragging her by posting this mortal Kombat picture right here now she do look just like that but the point is someone knew that when she woke up and she knew that when she took the picture she don't give a damn she didn't even brush her hair she didn't even grease her her dandruff written scalp and nor did she even put take a line into that shit matter of fact i don't think a professional did it i think she woke up and did it herself while little bubbles was in the room playing with her stepdaddy so with that being said y'all this girl don't give a damn Damn, man, she don't care. Ain't nothing wrong with her. Except for the fact that she got caught up with a no-good ninja and ended up being the fourth baby mama. She ain't the first. She ain't gonna be the last. And, you know, now she got a new nigga to hold her baby. So she good. Now, Summer, you know, you do got a pretty face. We don't want you putting no more tattoos on your face. Uh, we don't want you doing nothing else. You are done, all right? You're, you're done. You got too much going on at once. You know, you can't be weird at the top and weird at the bottom. We're gonna need you to be normal somewhere. But you have come a long way from taping condoms or magnum condoms uh on your face at that in nasty ass public bathroom so I, I i give you that summer walker i i really really does but um yeah that's it um uh, uh, other than that the doctor is gonna write you a script for a housekeeper i don't want that and you know that baby old enough to be crawling around now so i don't want her crawling around on no dirty ass floor because you don't believe in cleaning mop and sweeping a swiffer and on a consistent basis so i am gonna send Guadalupe uh down there around there by your house uh i want you to take the cost because you know 
I heard that your contract was shit. Uh, but hell, your ass used to be a cleaner, and now you don't feel like cleaning. Is that why you don't like cleaning your house? Is that why you walk around with black feet anyway? And, and hell, you barely like getting in the tub. But I know you got social anxiety, and maybe when you get in the tub, the shower curtain, the soap, the water, the tiles, it just makes you feel claustrophobic. So you just want to be free. <laughs> but you ain't free of all the bacteria running all up and through your skin. Anyway, with that being said, we're going to send Guadalupe, you know, some kind of maid down there by your house to keep it clean on a consistent basis. So at least when the baby's sitting there walking through and rolling around on the floor, we ain't got to worry about her having the black feet or her getting any kind of ringworm in her head. By the way, what happened to ringworm? I ain't heard nobody with ringworm in a long time. But I'm just letting you know something. I, 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 and, 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 and listen, Summer, I know you don't leave the house like that. So you might feel like, well, I ain't tracking nothing in the house, but I want to let you I want to let you know the, the floors is dirty, baby. When you be walking outside in that mud and go back, y'all, with them, them bare feet, I feel like you got veiny-ass feet, too. And, and it's skinny bony toes but i just feel like when you come back in the house you, you you track all that in the house that baby crawling around you can't tell me nothing different and you know you ain't always watching that baby and baby's gonna push it in their mouth make sure you baby proof that house too don't make me send cps around there anyway with that being said clean your house um write you a script for a shower i'm gonna write you a script to go to a proper barber to fade it out get you some oil sheen as well and give you either the girl or the boy lining either one i don't give a damn and if you're gonna wear this shit then wear it and wear it right Thank you, Summer. Ah, uh, y'all know YouTube be tripping. It went from, there we go. It went from seven views to 1476. There we go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I ain't think too much of it. That's how she is. Next, we got to talk about Tisha. Bankruptcy. Campbell. Used to be Martin. Went back to Campbell, all right? Now, $7 Tisha here, because when she left her marriage, all she had was hurt feelings and $7 in her pocket. Or we can call her Apple here. I don't know. Whatever y'all want to call her. I still think she's pretty. I love me some wide mouth joker smile Tisha Campbell. I do. I like her wide mouth. I like Candy, Lanice, Burris, hyphen, Tucker, two R's and two S's. Her wide joker smile mouth. Fantasia, wide joker smile. Why y'all think I like a wide mouth? Anyway, that ain't the point. That ain't the point. That ain't the point. We here today, Tisha, to call you in because the people is saying that you is a Tisha Smollett. So, unfortunately, the people want me to diagnose you with wanting some attention and using sex trafficking slash kidnapping as a means to increase your uh, to increase your career and make it better. Now, I'm here to let you know it didn't work for Jussie. Uh, Jussie lost $60,000 an episode pulling some ish like this. Now, you ain't made $60,000 in a year in a real long time. So I would think that you ain't trying to mess up the few little coins that you got left. I just I would I would hope that you ain't you ain't doing that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, uh, so let's 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 talk Tisha and let's keep it real. Number one, the people said that had you really called a taxi at a whole front row hotel that they would have had some camera footage for you to then go and get so then you that so then you could report who it was that gave you the number to the taxi company in the first place now y'all gotta understand tisha left her marriage with only seven dollars in her pocket so she might not have been at a hotel where the camera was working she might have been at the red roof of the motel six i don't know where i don't know look you you working on a project i don't know where they put you up at but i'm just saying if it's that small of a town and you got that little amount of money then they you probably was not you know at the four seasons that's all i'm saying there was no security in that parking lot all right number one number two people want you to give the police the number of the so-called taxi company that tried to pick you up and throw your ass in the van because like you said you from newark and you is from newark but we got a lot more questions too so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go in too hard on you tisha while you here in my office i'm gonna just put this script on hold because trafficking is a real thing and which i feel to realize is they traffic and kidnap people of all ages and just because she ain't got no proof don't mean that this did not happen you also got to understand she in the industry she she might not be in jacumatati i will hope you ain't jacumatati you didn't feel if you want jacumatati but you know you are jacumatati 
aligned. At the end of the day, your ex-husband is Dwayne. He ain't worked in years yet still sustains his lifestyle. And we trying to figure out why Will Smith and Jada Smith own the house that you got kicked out of with only $7 in your pocket. And so I have to diagnose you with being a punk. How you going to be from Newark and you let this nigga take this house out from under you for $7 and you didn't kick that drop kick that nigga down the steps. You left out in your U-Haul crying with tears. You from Newark. You supposed to beat his ass first then cry, number one. Number two, I have to uh, diagnose you with holding in too many secrets. Come on, Tisha. That's why I don't nobody believe you because you told us that Dwayne Martin was straight for all them years. So I'm just, I, we want to know the real tea. And tea, I feel like when you give us the real tea and you let it out into the universe, everything that you want positive is going to come to you, Tisha. That's just how I feel, all right? Uh, number two. Number three, the people said that if your ass is lying about this, that they want us, they want you to go back and retroactively give us an apology for saying that Martin was sexually harassing you back in the day. Because you never, we never really came to no true conclusion on that. I think you got a little settlement. The show ended up going off air and it was what it was from there. You claim and he claimed it was a misunderstanding, but either you got sexually harassed or you didn't. You was either about to get kidnapped or you wasn't. Now, we gonna call Tony D. Rivera and and we're going to make sure that this ain't another Masika Kalisha, you know, uh, uh, Capri Sun type of situation going on here. Hopefully you wasn't using trafficking for clout. I'm going to put your script on hold and call you back into my office in 60 to 90 days. In those 60 to 90 days, I need a full police report because the police said they don't know what you're talking about. Although the police be trafficking women too. So, you know, I don't really believe the police department that fucking much. But anyway, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to need a full police report i'm going to need video footage and i'm gonna need you to take a lie detector test and i'm gonna put ftn bayonne over that line on that man i'm gonna need you to take that full lie detector test so we can determine what was coming up i i, I hope you wasn't lying y'all head. i hope you wasn't all right moving right along they said come on the show tisha come on the show but well, she probably ain't now she probably ain't now she probably she probably ain't now all right. Her name is Tisha. My bad, Tisha. My my bad. Golly, y'all so. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. It's okay, y'all. Damn. Next, we got to talk about Tristan. Third try. I'm not even writing out your script. You were in my office so much, sir. I'm gonna have to put your plaque on the wall. So let's. This is going to be a quick one here. Let's go ahead and expand the picture, all right? Tristan, our favorite Canadian thotty with the cover girl makeup and a pretty filter on Snapchat, is out here showing chest and abs, talking about grind time, and the doctor is here to let you know that your grinding time is over. How many children are you trying to make, sir? You already about to retire and ain't going to be able to afford the child support that your ass already got. Do you think Chloe is going to pay all this forever? Now, we dragged Chloe for filth over here, but one day she is going to get some self-esteem and finally leave you and she is not going to be paying your bills anymore. Do not get comfortable over there with those Kardashians like Tiger did when Kylie was sitting there. Kylie got tired of paying off all them damn era repo men. You know Tiger would go get a chain or Tiger put it on repo, you know, put, excuse me, put it on layaway just like a nigga. Even though, I mean, damn Tiger, at least get this shit from Walmart so they don't try to be coming after you and kill you. You know, you gotta make your, your underage girlfriend pay your, your debt off. At least all Walmart. Lay Do Walmart still got layaway? I don't know. I don't know. We used to do that back in the day uh <laughs> boy boy I, you know i ain't ghetto but damn my family did some ghetto shit anyway all they gonna do is fuck up your credit and not you know mess up your life but he all in the mirror uh, uh showing us something that we don't want now sir they say you gotta take the picture from the front because you sure don't want to show us the donkey in the back and how you uh, got more donkey booty than chloe now we want to know when chloe got all that ass put up in a in a uh, uh nether region that she's not trying to get out because she's going to try to go uh, to for a first time in her life, probably going to try to get her a white man, even though she got a half Negro child. So that white man ain't going to be coming for you like that. We are oh, another court. And another thing, Tristan, is that weave in your head? I just remember that. I don't ever remember you having an afro. What in the Shamar Moore was going on on the right? Boy, you look, you you look at you got strong Jamaican edges. I ain't never met a Jamaican without edges, but you got strong Jamaican edges. So. You know, you still got your hair, but God, that that's, that shit is fake. I just realized that anyway. Uh, 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 with that being said, Mr. Raccoon Eyes, who are you trying to grind on? Your grinding is over. Your grinding is worth forty thousand dollars a pop, and I promise you, Tristan, ain't no nut worth that, sir. Ain't no nut worth forty thousand dollars, but you love giving your money away to Wonder Bread and. 
You love you love the hoes and you love not using protection. And here you go again trying to be a thought. You are never going to stop being a thought. Who asked for this, Tristan? Nobody did. Nobody asked for it. This wasn't even post-workout because you're not sweaty. This is pre-workout. So before your ass left the house, when you got out the shower getting ready, instead of rolling over and making love to Chloe, you said, I'm going to get in the mirror and get some more holes because I am truly over her and I only think about myself. You truly is a, you truly is a, a, a Caribbean man. They say Caribbean men don't give a damn. They holes to the day they die. You know, Scorpios is holes to the day they die. Die and so are Caribbean men and they assholes and there's nothing you can do about it. I do want to know when you making these Snapchat videos, Tristan, what voice do you use? Your Canadian one, your Jamaican one, or your American one? Do you go bare face or make a matter of fact? Let me Kevin Samuels you, Tristan. When you fresh out the shower, no weave and no makeup. What do you rate yourself on a scale from one to ten? <laughs> We want to know. What do you rate yourself? No makeup, no weave. What do you rate yourself? Let's let the people rate you. I'm going to let the people rate you. What y'all what, what y'all rating Tristan? What y'all what, what rating Tristan? Y'all let me know. Storm, I'm a Scorpio, not a hoe. Miss T3000, you going to be horny to the day you die. I'm sorry. You going to be horny to the day you die. You a Scorpio. You was born to be a hoe. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Ne two, negative six, two, three, eight. Oh, oh, zero. Oh, golly. Golly. Well, Tristan Thompson, they said you are not a high value woman. <laughs> Get out of my office. Have a good day. Tristan, Trevor, James, Thompson, Kardashian, you gotta go. Matter of fact, all that cover girl makeup you wear, Tristan, Trevor, James, Thompson, Kardashian, Latifah, you gotta go. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't fucking know. Anyway, let's move on to talk about Lamar Bubbleguts Odom, um, who is truly on some crackish behavior. You know, the more and more that you are just out here living your life, Lamar, I understand why every woman in your life takes over your life you know we thought sabrina parr was you know the 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 demon and we thought she was a controller one but sabrina was just like if somebody don't take control we ain't gonna have nothing we ain't gonna have nothing but a house full of shitty pamper i'm sorry shitty sheets you know and no toilet tissue so first off lamar odom over there on celebrity big brother at least he over there working i ain't mad at it and they say Lamar is over there steady talking about Chloe. He dream about Chloe. He want Chloe back. He misses Chloe. He misses Chloe. And I gotta say, what's that nigga's name you was talking to, Lamar? What's what, what's that Negro's name? The one that be what what's the Negro's name that was uh uh talking to Bubba Guts here? Excuse me. What what is that? What is that ninja's name? He be around there with uh, uh Taylor Swift when she want a, a a Negro around in her video to twirl. What is that Negro's name that he was talking to? Damn, he's a YouTuber too. I can't think of his name. Boy, I tell you, Lamar. It, day day after day, y'all y'all continue to prove Cynthia G right. Just trash bag dusties. Todrick, Todrick Hall, thank you. Why did I want to say Terrence? Okay, so you sitting there talking to Todrick Hall, Mrs. Taylor Swift himself, Mrs. Soraya himself, talking about who was your ex-wife. Nigga, you know, you know damn well who his damn ex-wife was. Boy, the gaslighting is real over there at Celebrity Big Brother. Just ask him what you want him to know, Todrick. Just ask me what you want him to know. So anyway, I'm diagnosing you with being back under MK Ultra Mind Control. Ain't no reason why you still need to be dreaming of Chloe uh, uh, nowadays. If Chloe ain't doing no kind of astral projection on your ass, then I believe that your ass is, is back on that shit. And your ass is sitting there and, and your life is flashing by you, nigga. So you, you better make sure definitely around the corner for your ass talking about Chloe. Acting like this shit is 2012, but we in 2022. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. She don't want you, especially if you're gonna be embarrassing her like this. All right, now you. I'm. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just keeping it 
real over here. We're keeping it real deal older feel. So anyway, I feel like your ass is under MK Ultra Mind Control. I'm also diagnosing you as being an eternal child. So any woman that get with you will always have to take that lead role because I just believe you checked out of life a long time ago and you just don't want to do it. And it's okay. I understand that it's hard. Apparently, it's hard to keep your guts up in your ass and apparently it's hard to brush your teeth too because they say your breath used to stink. You got away with them rotten ass teeth in your mouth all them years because you were so tall so you over everybody so when you speaking and, and that green gas of rotted air is steady coming out your mouth we don't really know we just like oh it's an overcast you know and then when it rained it comes down you know feeling like acid but you know when you lean down and lean over and kim smelt your breath on keeping up with the kardashians when she was trying to teach your big ass how to swim because after all these years you we went from sea to shine and sea to get crack but never learn how to swim boy you truly is a ninja but anyway this ain't about you and your ninja ways it's about our show tonight and so with that being said you know you just it's just too much for you to really care for yourself and so you don't even need a woman you just straight need a caretaker that will let you hit ear now and then now in addition to that you know your astral projection that's being done on you i'm also diagnosing you as being uh in a gin jar somewhere in a kardashian basement it's all kind of witchcraft being done on you and being done on you that you are not even aware of and so until you go to a shaman i'm gonna work just here for a shaman to get that shit removed from your from your aura and your chakras you're just gonna be in a perpetual state of confusion but anyway in addition to that you then got your big ass up with your big tail self at your old age and sat there and shit in your bed and then talk Told everybody about it and now you said you've been suffering from ibs for for years ibs and, and, and just an ups and just a sensitive stomach yet you drunk milk and ate candy cookies chips ramen noodles i mean you had you a whole meek meal kind of a feast and wonder why you had the bubble guts and shit it all in your bed you said that you felt like you had to fart and instead of at least getting up and going in the bathroom because you know at your big age farts truly will surprise you all right much like you surprised Chloe when you were screwing them prostitutes and not being faithful to her, faithful to her much like when you told her that you loved her and you would never hurt her. And then, well, you always loved her still, but you, you definitely hurt that girl. And that girl traumatized to this day. Now, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Lamar, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. And so what you did at your big age was to shit in your sheets in a dormitory style housing, then hop in the shower and, t I mean, and tell everybody and talk about the fact that you shitting in your bed as you wash your black ass in the shower. Now, at least he did let the water hit in between the booty cheeks which is what i tell y'all you got to make sure you clean up in between them cheeks he was doing that i didn't see nan rag i saw you using your hands so you've been around wonder bread a little bit too long so i'm also going to write you a script for a loofah i need you to scrub yourself from head to toe and exfoliate you know maybe we can bring back some of the color in that tattoo on your chest as well now too but i'm gonna need you to exfoliate from head to toe and i'm gonna need you to get back in that tub and take another shower in my black grandmama voice get your ass back in the tub because you was not cleaning. You're not going nowhere with a stanker, Lamar. You not, we not, the black folks, the black community is not going to claim you anymore if you're going to be shitting in your bed and taking showers without rags. We black, we use a rag. Where is your ranching rag, ranching towel to range off? What in the hell? Did y'all see that shit on Celebrity Big Brother? He was taking his big seven foot hands. I mean, his hands is bigger than my head and putting and, and, and putting the soap on his hands and rubbing that in, in, in the crack of his ass. Like he might have felt like because that shit was runny and not solid that he don't have to really scrub no you need to scrub you too big to be shitting on yourself you too big to be messing up your stomach on purpose you know you got a sensitive stomach sir you did crack for many years you're going to have a sensitive and surprisingly upset stomach and messed up intestines for the rest of your life do you know why let me hip you out to some game when you do drugs like crack and meth a lot of times you just like you, you like you just straight be constipated like for years and you hardly ever do number two and then when you finally stop it come out and out and out and out and just never stops ask a method or a crackhead a former one and they will let you know if they're honest enough and so i'm just here to let you know you sat there and had a meek meal meal and then wonder why you sat there 
and gave us something from Flavor of Love Season 2 all up in your bed and instead of secretly throwing them sheets out here, your ass could have said you had a nosebleed. You didn't nobody really know. Apparently, it wasn't that funky yet, but you didn't handle it. You got there, got your big tail self in that shower that you too big for. And instead of using a rag to rinse your ass out, you use your big old hands. I, I didn't see that much damn soap, so damn, I hope you weren't just rinsing off with water. I mean, you there is truly Wonder Bread ways. Now, thank God Sabrina Parr took you to Wonder Bread. Or, 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 that might have been Chocolate City she took you to, but she took you to some kind of spa to get them pubes laser so at least your nuts is not as stanking and funky as they would normally be. Now, I wonder why she had you. Now, I know why she had you laser all the hair up off your body because she got tired of you stanking. She wouldn't understand it. She said he getting in the tub, but it's still stank. Okay, maybe it's too much hair. We just going to get rid of that down there. You want these women to be putting their mouth, putting their mouth all on your Johnson and berries and, 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 and you know, and, and, and I'm sure you like that booty, that bonky A too. So you want these women to be doing all that and this fake, this funky and stanky and you ain't even walk, you ain't even ranged off with no rag. Oh. So we're going to write you a script to throw you in the biggest tub of bleach and we're going to try it again. And try going vegan too. You too big to not be knowing how to handle an upset stomach. They ain't got no Pepto Bismol in that house. Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. It literally tells you in the song. Have one of them white producers go to Walgreens and get you a little something, something if that's what you need, sir. What y'all think about Lamar? Hey, Kelly Studio. She said, I've been waiting all day on this show. Love your personality. Too damn funny. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. Oh, my God. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, they said they want you to bathe in ammonia. Uh, Caramel said his top and his bottom is cracked out. Damn. <laughs> they said take a bath and then range off. I need him to range off. I don't know how to range off. You you get you get in that tub, get a rag, and you you range. Y'all don't know how to range. I gotta teach y'all everything. I'm so through. I'm so through. Y'all mustn't have no grandmama from the south then, if that's the case. Y'all y'all really did. When am I gonna pick up that net? Ooh, ooh, I gotta pick up that shit. Uh, anyway, anyway, moving right along from that, real quick. We're not gonna stay on her long, cause she's not that important. So we need to bring Kylie. Kristen, build a thought, black fishing ass, insecure ass. I am a regular white girl living in a Barbie world, wanting to be a black Barbie, but will never be. So I have mixed children so that I can literally black fish into the next generations. Jenner. All right. We bringing you in the office today because you acting like you scared and you acting like a Karen. Now, Kylie, I got to let you know, you can't be wanting to blackfish and be a Kylisha by acting like a Karen or Kristen, which is your middle name at the same damn time. It is your turn to go testify against Black China in court. As I know, Black China still suing the Kardashians over that show. They ain't let that battle go yet because Black China is in the right and, and, and these Kardashians just can't stand to ever lose to a black woman ever. They thought that Black China was a black ignorant bitch from D.C. Little did they know just because you from the hood don't mean you a dummy. That's where y'all underestimated her and that's how I know the Kardashians are actually damn racist. No matter how much black D they get up in every orifice, they don't mess with y'all Negroes like that. They use y'all Negroes. We are the energy source. We are the source. We are their money. We are their paper. Literally, bitch. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Mm. Pay Brandy back her money. And the Norwood family, I'm mad at y'all for letting the Kardashians steal $250,000 from y'all back in the day to buy the original merchandise for the dad's stores. Only for y'all to, that's okay, we not gonna, we gonna fuck. Put them, you supposed to put them hoes in jail. Black people have literally funded everything from your stores to your sex tapes to your careers to your children. You are nothing without us. And your daddy, Satan. <laughs> Between black people and Satan, you can't lose until you die. Anyway, she claims she's too scared to testify against black China. And of course, she claims that she is scared of black China. Let me tell you something, Kylie. If black China wanted to whip your ass, she would have been done it. You ain't got nothing to be scared of. Now you ain't scared of unprotected sex. You ain't scared of having an open relationship. You ain't... <laughs> 
<laughs> you ain't scared to have children by a dude that look like Travis Scott. You ain't apparently ain't scared of how they gonna come out. So you ain't scared of your your damn daddy who's a devil who your mammy is truly married to. So you ain't really scared. I mean, hell, you weren't scared to be popping that coochie when you was underage for Tiger. You wasn't scared. So you ain't scared to be a baby mama either in, in the societal effects of that. So at the end of the day, you was not too scared and scary to go and testify against Black China in court. Your sisters had to do it. It's time for you to do it too, much like them rituals and all that damn sacrificing that y'all do. Get your ass in court and testify. Point blank and a period. I'm sick of that shit. Anyway, moving right along from that. Thank you, everybody, for the donations. All right, I'm going to read our comments here for just like 40 seconds. And then I'm gonna get back, uh, back to the show here. I gotta get my throat, gotta get my throat a break. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Sake. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, how did they treat Jordan exactly? One scared to bully her. They said she's scared of Omarion. No, she ain't, cause she had Meg the Stallion talking her booty in her in, in 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 her pool when there was a damn lockdown. Meg getting shot all up in her front yard and shit. She ain't scared. The infl it's inflation is more now. Why can't they just go broke and go away? Oh, because they serve Satan. They're going to be fine. They're just going to burn in hell. Eternal hell. All righty. All righty. Anything else? Wait a minute, though. We got 2,300 people watching, and I only got 799 likes. I'm going to need 1,000 likes. I'm, go I'm going to need 1,000 likes. Don't worry. I'll wait. I'm right here. Get them likes up. I need a thousand likes. I'm gonna sit here and watch it on my phone too, just in case. We need a thousand likes. We need a thousand likes. I don't know why I got a big guy every day for these likes. Thank you, Anna Dimples. Thank you so much. Hit the like button. It's free. It's free. Come on, people. Hit the like. 926. There we go. There we go. Why y'all don't want to show people that child over here with me? 945, we almost there. We ain't even got to make 1.5. Just give me a cool thousand right now. Give me a cool thousand. All right? 971, thank you. Let everybody know that you over here having fun. 993, there we go. Run it up. We had a thousand. Thank you. Thank you. Give it to me. Give me likes. And when you get off my show, go get your ninja some ass. Go do it. Don't be stingy. Anyway, <sighs> moving right along, we, we got Onika Tanya Mirage Petty in the office today and her beef or, or well, one-sided beef with the city girls. Yeah, I know I called them the shitty girls. They lack talent. They lack originality. They lack lyrics that would be memorable in five years. Godly, they didn't even uh, live up to their hype. They lack the fact that they lack the ability to, you know, uh, I mean, remain legal or to even just be in a girl group for five years consecutively without a baby, uh, 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 any kind of sacrification or any kind of beefing and vacations with old ass men that are old enough to be your grandfather giving you wounds all up and through your cervix. Now, the city girls, the shitty girls back in the day was trolling Nicki Minaj, saying all kinds of crazy tweets about Nicki Minaj. Said she wasn't that bitch. Said her career wasn't going nowhere. Just talk crazy about her. Said they was Team Cardi. You can be Team Cardi, but you don't have to talk bad about Nicki Minaj. But now they want to be in Nicki's good graces. And Nicki, I'm definitely diagnosing you with having mommy brain. This is not your personality. Why is your ass being so forgiving? Them girls don't give a damn about you. They still felt the way that they felt before when they was on the breakfast club and when they was broke in Florida on Twitter talking ish about you. They feel the very same way. All they want now is a feature because, well, really, they have nothing else. They don't even have a house with a mortgage on it. They're still renting. So I'm just saying, I know you're, you, I know having a baby softens you up, but I'm going to need you to harden back up a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm going to need you to call Roman or Martha. I know they're away in England, Nikki, but I'm going to need you to bring them back. I'm going to need you to summon them demons back over here so they can put you back in your damn right mind or wrong mind. Because for you to be this nice, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't like it, Nikki. I really don't. But anyway, but anyway, because I don't believe them. So anyway, they've been begging and begging for years to be unblocked. Begging 
begging and begging for a feature, which I ain't going to never get, shitty girls. Before y'all get a feature, Santana is going to get the feature because Santana is the true city girl. And if Santana had an actual vagina, he would be bigger than both of y'all. If ninjas weren't so scared, scared of being outed or just being around a T-girl like Santana, what do you call, what does Santana identify as? I don't know. But if they weren't so damn afraid of being called gay and just would do a feature with Santana, Santana, Santana would be the biggest thing popping out of uh, uh, QMC, QVC, whatever the hell that shit is that don't pay y'all, that got y'all in them slave contracts. Can we keep it real? Come on now, let's keep it real. The shitty girls give you titties and booty. Santana give you wide body, but lyrics. Nothing more and nothing less. And so they begged and begged and begged to be forgiven by the queen. And finally, they were. They might have been unblocked. But I still don't think that they're ever going to get a feature. I just, I truly, I truly, truly don't. Okay, let's just keep it real. The only way I'm going to ever give, uh, the only way I'm going to ever truly give y'all public forgiveness shitty girls is that you admit that the reason why you really went against nikki is because she had and was accomplishing everything that you didn't that she is and has done everything that you are not and won't when y'all came out they said y'all was gonna be the next trina and we're already over you they said you was you know gonna be the you're gonna take over nikki's spot and, mm, that didn't happen y'all can't even put out one album uh, everything about y'all was manufactured redone repackaged and y'all was too lazy to put in the work to actually make it work when the block was hot i forgot when the block was hot when y'all was on old block in prison the remy ma of it all and so with all the accolades nikki has and all the albums she has sold and all the money she has made and all the endorsements she has gotten Y'all not want to be a part of the team. Y'all see that she wasn't truly going nowhere, even though the height of Nikki's career is over, in my opinion. To me, once you become a mother, the rap just don't hit the same. Uh, you don't have the same oomph about it, and that's, that's just the truth. The, the newest song is cute. I like it. You know what I mean? I, I, I like it. I do. I do. I do. I was vibing. You know, but we're going to see what this album doing, but I just don't feel like Nikki going to have the time to really put in the tours and the videos like we need. And so I'm writing a script for Nikki to stay home and just nurse Papa Bear and to, and to, to you know, just get on live and mess with us every now and then and let us enjoy the old music and bring up some girls up under you. The shitty girls, I'm, I'm writing out a script to actually get in the studio and do something besides suck off old men and uh, Luciferian ass worshiping uh, uh, lady boys that is, that's smaller than you for money and cash. I, I just truly don't. I, I, I don't get it. I don't see the appeal. Never did. Never will. Yeah, I got a couple cute songs though, but that's about it. That's it. It's cute. Santana is the one with the talent. It just, it is what it is. In addition, why you in a forgiving mood, Nikki? I want you to go ahead and, uh, I want you to call, uh, I want, uh, Lil Nas X to actually call you and I want y'all to come to a true forgiveness. And I want you to give him a feature. If anybody deserves it, it's him. It is not the shitty girls. A feature with him is going to shut down the internet. A feature with the shitty girls is going to, you know, trend for about seven to 10 business days before we forget about it. Much like we've forgotten about everything that they have put out before. Uh, You know, Nas was going through some stuff. Yada, 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 Nikki, give the boy a chance. If you can forgive them, I know you said you forgave him, but I want you to really forgive him, and I want you to do a record for him, Nikki, because if you can give Takashi 6 9 a record when he was a snitch and rat, you can damn sure forgive Satan worshiping ass Lil Nas X. This shit would be epic. I actually like the music, and so it'll be nice, but I'm writing you a script to play nice with Nas, but let go of them shitty girls. They ain't messing with you like that. They need you. Know the difference between when somebody really like you and when they need you. There is a difference. Although they can both coexist. So anyway, anyway, Nikki in a good mood though. So maybe you can get in her Nas X. That's the best I can do for you. You know, you just, you disappointed her because you was a barb and then you, you just, uh, you, mm, you folded. You folded and barbs don't fold. Never, ever, ever. No matter what nobody thinks. First rule of being a barb, bitch. Anyway. Moving right along from that, Kevin Samuels and then Nicki Minaj had a conversation. And uh, I mean, I'm, now let me first say this never in any dimension, we in the third dimension, the fourth, the fifth, or the twelfth, that I ever think that Kevin Samuels and Nicki Minaj would be on the same Instagram live together. But that just lets you know what did I tell y'all? 
the celebrities watches. Did I not tell y'all this or no? Did I not tell y'all this, yes or no? Yes or no? Did I not tell y'all that the celebrities watch us too? They watch us too. They take our shit. Tyra, talking about some side with it too. You ain't never said it like that, Tyra, ever. You and your overly done eye makeup. It's 2022. I need you to let it go. I need you to keep a bang. And I need you to talk normally in the camera. Take accountability. Be less of a narcissist. <laughs> so many female narcissists out here. Get your money, though. Anyway, with that being said, they had a conversation. And Nikki, I got to admit, I was a little disappointed because you, 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 you proved yourself to do what all the other women do when they go on Kevin's show. You, at the end of the day, no matter how big you were and important you were, you still wanted to know how this man rated you. And I was like, not Nikki. Now, Nikki over here wanting Kevin Samuels to rate her. No shade at Kevin, but I'm just saying, Nikki, really? Really? You got a whole husband, and that's the first thing you asked him is, what do you rate me? Now, Kevin was being nice. Kevin was on a whole new playing field because I just noticed that Kevin was very sweet and very attentive, and he rated Nikki a 9, and Nikki is not a 9. She is. A seven, like she said, a seven or maybe eight, but she's not a nine, but that's okay. He's been nice about it because it's Nicki Minaj and she will eat him up and uh, chew him up, spit him out. Literally, she would. And so it was just interesting to me how people are different depending on who they're speaking to. Truly different, uh, truly interesting. But anyway, then they go on to talk and Nicki basically roasts him in his face. He goes into talking about how women need to focus on finding a man and being there for a man. And he, she stops him and says... Why we care what these niggas think about us at all? And, 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 I mean, it just pretty much just shut down every talking point that he had right there in his face. Now, I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong, but I'm just saying I look, he feel like she brought him up there to literally clown him. But, Nikki, if you, 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 you didn't clown him, you might have thought you did, but you really did because you gave him exposure, which is great for him and silly of you to even care. But anyway, this what I want to know, Nikki. The next time you bring him up, matter of fact, because I know y'all going to talk again, I want you to do a true interview. I want you to bring Kevin Samuels to Queen Radio and do a thorough interview because we got questions that we need answers to. Number one, we need proof of the high value lifestyle before the YouTube fame. Number two, Kevin has been accused of taking Thomas, Tommy Sotomayor's points, remixing them and making a million dollars off of it. So I need you to ask them about those points. All right, I need you to ask some of those major questions. We need to know about the alleged child support. That was fifty dollars a month. We need to know about the alleged stealing the <laughs> buying the perfume off the stone and then trying to return it to blooming this. We need to know the real questions. This is no shade at Kevin Samuels at all. This is just me saying. If you're gonna bring people up for them to talk their talking points, I need y'all to ask the real questions that the people wanna know. Why y'all think people don't come around here like that? Because we going to ask the real questions. Did you buy some cologne from Bloomingdale's and then try to return it after you had used half the bottle? Wanda Bread said you did. We want to know. We want to know. Is it true that at one point you were making less than $1,200 a month? We want to know. Yes or no? Is it true that in 2017 you called into the Tommy Sotomayor show? Say that you had been watched all his content and you wanted the old Tommy back. And then when the old Tommy never came back, you took advantage of all the binge watching and you made a successful channel. You took the talking points, removed the hateful rhetoric, and got famous. Is nobody going to ask these questions? Is nobody going to ask these questions? I just, I, 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 I just want to know. I just want to know. I'm going to read your comments here. I just want to know. It's no shade. It's no shade. Sir, we can take a half empty bottle back. <laughs> now he makes his money. Black women, oh, it's the blueprint to making money, period. I told y'all that. That's stealing. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. They said, right? 
Oh. He is honest about his talking point. He said they are not new. Okay. Okay, Meredith. That's so see, that's why you ask. That's why you ask. That's why you ask. It just baffles me when people it it baffles me sometimes when people blow up and then I'll read comments where it's like, I've never heard this before, and it's like, yeah, you have. Uh, <laughs> this is nothing new. It's like me. I cannot get up here and do my doctor character without giving credit to Kaya. How can I get up here and not give credit to the queen? Kaya, the queen of this shit. I didn't get the doctor shit from her, but we can't act like this ain't a format that she did make big on YouTube and Facebook and MySpace and all of that shit. Now we got everybody that want to gavel, everybody want to do a judge show, everybody, uh, 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 uh her and Madison, got to give Madison credit too. Uh, uh, now, uh, what's their on YouTube from All Deaf Digital Cancel Court? Kaya started that shit from her red couch. Come on now, how we gonna not give credit? We tell the truth and we shame the devil over here now. I'm going to hold off on y'all's script till you come back with that evidence. But uh, go and let them come in uh, to Queen Radio, Nikki. And I want you to ask some questions that I just told you. And get y'all get some better producers on these shows. I'm sick and tired of watching people way bigger than me do interviews. And they don't ask the real effing questions. They don't even do research on who they talking to. Or is it that when you get to a certain level, you're just not allowed to ask real questions anymore? Which is it? Can somebody tell me? Now, back to our sponsor for tonight, Her Sacred Place, helping to keep your vagina clean one wipe and feminine wash at a time. Now, I want y'all to actually look at the Yoni bar here really quick. Main ingredients, olive oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, shea butter. Look, look at this here. Look, look, look at that soap. Oh, man. Smells good, too. Now, I don't have a Yoni, but I know some people with Yonis. And uh, I'm definitely going to give y'all some real life testimonials, okay? We definitely going to do that. But I wanted to let y'all know that Her Sacred Place is here to keep your vagina clean and healthy. One wipe, feminine wash at a time. You stay with Her Sacred Place and you will remain sacred and not spoiled. Speaking of cookies, moving right along, we need to talk about Young Pharaoh. Young Pharaoh was being brought into my office today because they say that you didn't have a mental decline. They say that Illuminati kidnapped you and took your soul. They said that you, that you was finally chipped by MK Ultra. They said that you had may have even possibly been drugged and had all kinds of hallucinations. And at last, they said that you got to bring him into the office because now he is showing us who he truly was and the fact that he is now a porn star. Now... Before I get into writing this script, did anybody else see the OnlyFans video besides me? Did anybody else see the OnlyFans video besides me? That, that's what I want to know. Now, nah, at the end, I'm going to show you everything in the box. They said Young Pharaoh is gone. Now, he here. He's online. All that in the bug. All that in the bug. Okay. Okay. Well, let's. Let's talk about it. So, I have to say, young Pharaoh, that, you know, you always welcome on the show. We love, we, we love you over here. We got questions about your alien experience. But it is not, I would be remiss to not notice a change in young Pharaoh. And I tried to go back to figure out where was the change. Wait a minute. Before I do that, let me spray some cologne. Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec, people. Y'all kept asking me what I was wearing. The Kevin Samuels of it all. But I ain't do this because of Kevin Samuels. I did this because uh, I like having nice cologne. So y'all want to know what I smell like? This right here. This Cartier. This sh Man, this shit is bad. But anyway. Oh, man. Look at. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Anyway. I just. I, mm, I wanted to smell it again. Anyway. Much like he was sniffing and smelling all in Martina Devine's ass on camera. Now. I do have to say that when I look at the series of unfortunate events that happened with young Pharaoh since, what, about last March, I've come to this conclusion, right? Allegedly, he didn't karate chopped his baby mamas. Allegedly, he threatened to kill them. Allegedly, he dragged them like uh, Helen was being dragged through the house on Why Did I Get Married To? 
allegedly he ain't now he is now not allowed to see his kids they think he's crazy he had all them ninjas in his house and we don't know what they was there for and why they uh, he was letting them basically use them for his money because basically that's all them niggas was was leeches now i have to say that i believe due to young pharaoh's own personal trauma because this is a man that has been through a lot i believe that when golden left him not to say she didn't have a reason to leave if we ever interview Golden, then we'll get her side of the story. And not that stuff she put on YouTube, the true story. Not them being angry with one another, then still screwing in the bathroom. But although Golden, after I seen him eat Martina Devon's box the way that she did, I see why you went back. You might say this ninja crazy, but don't nobody hit that spot like Pharaoh. Just saying. He did all kinds of levitations. <laughs> In Martina Devon's box. I'm just saying. He, he was <laughs> the cure for the black community. It was apparently in her box. The way he was eating and sucking it out. And anyway. We'll get to that part later. I truly believe that due to his own personal trauma. That, with, that when Golden left him. And the kids left the house. That the man once again felt abandoned. And got triggered to go into a fight or flight state. He got triggered to go into straight survival mode. It was almost like he was back in prison again. He was back on the streets again. He regressed mentally when the man lost his family. Not saying it wasn't his fault. We not get into that. We'll get into that later. But what we're saying is we can't act like that that decline did not start when that woman and them kids left that house. Because what's clear is that that woman and them kids was keeping him together the whole time. Because behind every man is a strong woman. That's just that's just what it is. How many successful single men is really out there like that? It, it really it, uh, it's always a woman holding them up and supporting them. That's just what it is. Praying for them to whatever gods they pray to. I don't know. Maybe they pray to the Egyptian ones. Hell, I don't know. But as soon as you ain't got no black woman praying for you no more, your life is done. I'm here to let you, <laughs> I'm here to let you know. A black woman's prayers are powerful. I'm sorry. They, they just are. I don't want no white people praying for me. Black ladies only. All right. Black only. All right. No whites allowed when it come to, <laughs> when it come to my prayers. Their prayers get hurt. Anyway. Ah. So I do believe that he was triggered. And I do believe that he's had a lot of mental regression. I do believe that he got drugged and had hallucinations and went through literally a psychotic episode. I do believe he did. Right. But. In order for us to actually get into that, we need to get into some other things. Young Pharaoh has also alleged that he got kidnapped by aliens. When he got kidnapped by aliens, they did work in his vertebrae. I think it said 32 vertebrae. I don't know how many vertebrae you got in your back or your spine. I ain't getting into that part. The part I want to get into is the fact that whatever went into him, right? Because aliens are entities, spirits at the end of the day. Whatever went into him he said that he asked permission first and then it entered him i do truly believe that he has some kind of dark entity or spirit that has been placed upon him and placed in one of his chakras and after doing all that astral projection and playing with them spirits he got a spirit a dark cloud over him that he has not been able to lift off when he get that spirit out of him that is when we will have the old pharaoh back okay Nothing more and nothing less, okay? So I'm going to write him a script also for a shaman, not no white one. <laughs> we want you to go to a colored shaman that understand our ancestors, and I want you to get that lift up off of you. I ain't saying you got to change. I just want you to be clear-headed and clear-minded, all right? Now, with that being said, let's get to the video. I told y'all I was going to go watch the video. Soon as I saw his video that said he was eating box on OnlyFans, and it's only going to be there for 30 days. So I had to go do the research. I had to go do the research. Is it ready? Is it ready? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So. First thing I noticed in the video. They sold the video on the girlfriend's OnlyFans page. For only $9.99. I do appreciate them not overcharging for the video. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Number two. In the video. All right. First, no, first, first off, on the girlfriend's OnlyFans page, there is another video of her sucking some very hairy dude off. So that's the first message you get. She's sucking some dude off. Oh, 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 okay. So I'm just, I, I don't know if she's the pimp or he's the pimp. Y'all tell me who the pimp, because I never would have thought Young Pharaoh would have been doing this. But I digress. So we get into the video. All right. And when I tell you, in the words of Kwame Brown, Pharaoh had his whole 
Nee, nee, nee. Ja, en is ho. Nee, nee, nee. And was eating that box like his life depended on it. He was eating that box like he was there to save the whole conscious community one lick and one nut at a time. He was actually doing a good job because Martina continued to be slopping wet and continued. It was, it, it was very wet. She was very pleased. He knew what he was doing. In that moment watching that, I understand why Golden went as crazy as she did and why hell, his other baby mama gave him problems. We know what it really be about. They be going that old thing back. They just want you to act right, Pharaoh, and they want you to be with just them. But you all, you know, you 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 gonna do you at the end of the day. But you uh you did it. I'm just saying. He put his whole head in it. Had all the juices running down his face. Now, I do got to give them credit because they show her feet. They show Martina's feet in the video, right? And so, you know, you know, I be watching some nasty good shit. And so, I expected her to have the dirty black summer feet, too. I thought she was going to have some dirty feet, too. Now, it looked like they might have been in a hotel or something. But I thought she was going to have the dirty feet, too. The sheets was clean, wrinkled, but clean. So they just had got started, right? Right? So it's definitely foreplay. Cause it wasn't even a wet spot in the bed yet. But her feet was clean and her toes was done. I didn't see no 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 callus or no husk on her feet. Toenails was clipped and clean. I was very impressed. A lot of them girls that do OnlyFans don't give a damn. It may just be the goodest shit I watch. But I'm just saying. Alright? And then Pharaoh goes to rub her down and rub her down in some kind of body butter. Now, Pharaoh, I need the name of the body butter that you was rubbing on her booty. Cause that shit had her glistening and neither one of y'all was ashy. She won ashy, your knees won ashy. I give y'all credit for at least being moisturized. Now, you may be eating all that box the way you do cause you want that beard to connect. So I'm thinking what you thinking, Pharaoh, is that the more box you eat, the more that beard gonna come in. I don't know if that superstition is true. But in the meantime, while you trying, you might as well just keep putting your whole head in it because she seemed to uh, enjoy it. And y'all seem to be very good at what you do. They kept the camera steady, good lighting, uh, background noise was out. I mean, you put, you if you would just put, if you would go back to put this kind of effort into your videos, you'd have a million subs again like damn like i remember all the effort and all the studying you did for you know when we was in a pandemic you had forty thousand people watch you you ate that box like it was forty thousand people watching that was the most passionate i had seen you in a long time pharaoh i gotta give it to you so anyway that was that was the video now i ain't gonna lie your eyes was kind of crossed and rolling in the back of your head I don't know how drunk y'all was. I don't know what y'all was into before then. You did, like, you looked in the camera, but you weren't looking in the camera at the same damn time. But she stayed wet, and he, both y'all stayed moisturized, and both y'all had some clean feet and went ashy. I I, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I really would. I I, I, I really would. Okay, I'm not mad at it. May, you know, since I ain't gonna let you ever make money on YouTube again, hell, you might just want to do OnlyFans now. But at least make your own page so Martina ain't getting all the money. Just saying, did you pimp on her or is she pimping you? Who's the pimp? We need to know. We need to know. Let me ask y'all, are y'all disappointed? Thank you, everybody, for the donations. Are y'all disappointed that young Pharaoh did OnlyFans? I thought he was married. Now, nah, he not married. Who's Martina? I want to see the, uh, wait a minute, Classy Diamond, is that you? Wait a minute, I can uh, make you moderator right now. Uh, Y'all want to see what Martina look like? She's pretty. Wait a minute, let me find her. She's pretty. She is very pretty. Uh, let me find a, a good, uh, a, an appropriate picture of her. Um... Uh, do 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 do. Let's see. Let me put it up here. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, she's she's very pretty. What y'all think? She's very pretty. Golden was attractive to me too. 
they're different types of pretty, if that makes sense. But yeah. Yeah. They said he eight out of ten for selling your soul. Oh. They said I'm disappointed. Well, we're gonna write him a script for a psyche valve. All right, we want a full drug test. We need an interview because we need to know this alien story. Full details. We got questions. And then last but not least, you're going to at least give us more videos where you're demolishing it. I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, do it all. Don't do it for 30 days. If it's going to be up there forever, get your money. Why y'all like being light porn stars? Like L-I-T-E. Like, do it and do it. Golden looks better. They said Golden look better. What's the name of the Cartier you wearing? This Cartier, uh, this is Declaration. He's not going to feel that script. Come on now. All right. Anyway, they said he went from godly to deadly-ish. I'm just going to let y'all know. I want to conclude with this. Let me put this picture back up there. I want to conclude with this. I'm going to take her picture down. Now, this is what the doctor want to conclude with. I know us as black people don't have a lot of role models no more. I know that we as a people, our daddies don't stick around like that. We ain't really got no male figures like that. And everybody is looking for this manly, fatherly, black figure that they can trust. And everybody looking on YouTube for it. Listen, the conscious community is not a real thing. I'm sorry. I know he ain't a part of it no more. I'm just break. I'm just break your heart so we can just move on. So we ain't got to worry about that. All right, cool, 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 cool. Ain't no damn conscious community. These people don't care about Africa. These people don't care about getting you in touch with your African ancestors. They don't give a damn about what they teach them. Okay, when they start, they're broke, they're poor, and they will say anything to get a bag and get a like and a view. They damn sure don't even care about marrying black women like that. Pay attention to the people in the con to the men in because the they're supposed to be the leaders in a conscious community that are actually married to black women. And I ain't talking about oh we live together. I'm talking about illegal marriage. Not talking about that's why people should be living in America. You feel that damn strongly about it? Go overseas. But while you living here, we need a legal merge. Because that's going to be the only way the black community actually starts to build. We're going to need these things called actual families, right? And not continue to create children out of wedlock. I'm sorry. It's the American way. If you don't want to be here, go somewhere else. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Number one, number two. Don't trust not name one that you don't see actually married to a black woman. Not the Nick Cannon style of half and you can't tell they black unless you take an ancestry DNA test. No, 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 no. Undeniably black, unambiguous black, as Chrissy would say, unambiguous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, don't trust one that ain't got all their children with one woman. A lot of people like to copy the polygamous lifestyles of African and Arab cultures and don't even understand the real cultures of it, <laughs> Nick Cannon, because the whole point of when you have the multiple women is that they all live in one house because all your children are reared together, not children from sea to shine and sea. That's called baby mama, baby daddy shit, point blank, point period. Okay? Okay. The conscious community was fake. It always was. It was used to get a bag. A lot of these people are ex-felons. They can't go get a job. What do you expect them to do? It's just like the church is full of ex-pimps. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everywhere you turn, somebody lying to you. But if somebody is an entertainer, you better understand that everything they say is for entertainment purposes only. Because when they get a bag, they want white holes. They want Latin holes. They want the Versace, the Gucci. Why is Brother Polite over there driving Lamborghinis and wearing Versace? I'm not hating because I ain't going to tell you I ain't going to never wear it if I can't afford it. But my whole point is that ain't very pro-black to have an Italian man name on your chest. Ain't no black designers. I know ain't no black cars yet, but ain't no black designers. You got all these wives. I'm looking at up and down Brother Polite page. Jesus, high paid escorts. Stop. Women that would never talk to him if he wasn't who he was and he even had the money that he had. Let's just keep it real. And black women, y'all put that money in his pocket. I'm not hating. I'm just telling y'all the truth. This shit is fake. It's for entertainment. If these entertainers, if they inspire you, beautiful. But don't take none of us that seriously, ever. You will always be disappointed. Always. Now, how Morilla can I keep it than that? Hey, thank you for the donation. How much more really can I keep it than that? Don't look to no entertainer. 
to better your life, better your own life, and better your own family. And nothing that these conscious people do that ain't very conscious will surprise you or disappoint you. I went up and down Brother Polite's IG page. Ain't nothing about Africa. Dr. Umar, we still ain't got no school. Dr. Umar got a dirty apartment begging for $20 cash apps. What? And he can't stay away from them scruples. What is going on? They're ninjas at the end of the day. Men get money and success for one thing, women. We shower for women. We get a haircut for women. We wear nice fitting clothes for women. It ain't to better the community. It's to get women and women that they never had access to when they were broke. And it's typically going to be one that ain't black. Damn, wake up. Sick of y'all being asleep. Speaking of sleep. Speaking of sleep. Speaking of sleep. Mm -mm -mm. You have to see Young Pharaoh roast Umar apartment. I can believe he roasted it. And listen, I say all that to say Young Pharaoh's still my guy. I want to I want to talk to him because I feel like it's a lot of questions that we need answered, and then we can move on. But he's welcome anytime. I think actually he might have my old number, not the new number, but he's welcome anytime. Just let me know. I wish him the best, though. I just, I, I hate that guy happened, and I still feel like he got drugged. I just feel like he did. Give it down what nobody say. Anyway, move right along from that, people. We got to talk about Nicholas Cannon. Uh, Nicholas walking around, li literally living up to his last name, Cannon, using his cannon, shooting off babies, and everybody that'll let him have, I'm sorry, you know, if they can pass a paper bag brown test, uh, they can have it. If they do not need a metal pick, then they can have the cannon. He's out here uh, slanging around that weapon of mass destruction. And ever since y'all exposed it on Twitter, this man ain't been able to stop running his mouth. So, uh, Nick Cannon, we're just going to diagnose you with not only diarrhea of the penis, of the vast deference in your urethra, uh, we're also just going to diagnose you with having diarrhea of the mouth and just talking too damn much about a bunch of nothing. Uh, I sat back and tried to figure out, Nicholas, why you really was knocking up and uh, uh, all these Wonder Breads and having all these children that you you ain't gonna have the time for because you got about 50 11 jobs because i mean you always look like you got bags under your eyes uh, and, and when you had your Whoopi goldberg incident and they took everything from you in less than 40 in less than 48 business hours you was ready to be up out of here because you realize how you gonna take care of all this wonder bread and all these kids if you ain't got all these jobs and so it's a lot of things you're gonna have to work on nicholas like owning uh your content at this point i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just saying you've been in the game too long not to own that content let me ask y'all some weird question that i just noticed is that a relaxer in his head or is that his hair is that a is is that a S curl kit? Don't tell me he been around Wonder Bread so much now he won't want to bread hair. Oh, he looked tired as hell. Golly, well you got to get a vacation to get some sleep. Stop, no, not sleeping with women get some sleep. But anyway, we also want to diagnose you with, as being the virgin Tyrone because we're trying to figure out how somebody who is celibate uh, just, you know, announced their eighth child that they're having by five different women. And so Nicholas claims that, no, 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 no. This was before my celibacy. Mm -hmm, that's what they say. That's exactly what I say, too. I'm going to start my diet tomorrow. I'm going to start it Monday. No, no, no. I'm going to start it next week. We want, your, we want you celibate, and we want it now. The last time I wrote you a script, Nicholas, you kept your, your, your weapon of mass destruction and the cannonballs behind it, I'm going to need it all. I You know, I want to trust you just to put it in the chastity belt and then I keep a copy of the key and I put the other copy in the safe deposit box, but I can't trust you for that. So I'm going to temporarily detach it from your body. Don't worry, we'll be able to reattach it later. We're going to put it on ice and Cairo, uh, Cairo freeze it, Cairo freeze it, however you say it. I ain't a real doctor, bitch. I don't care if I mispronounced it. And after that... We going to let you run around for a year looking like a, a G.I. Joe doll by the bottom. And let's see if you can actually stay, remain celibate. We're we, 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 we going to take it while we add it. We're also going to cut out that tongue because your baby mama said you're talking too much and you're getting real insensitive. And so we're going to give you a good year or two. You ain't even going to work. I'm sure you got enough money saved. I hope you do to keep up with all these wonder bread and your children. And we're going to have you to spend time with your kids and go on vacations and do all that. 
but no sex for you. You will cut off, and we don't even really want no talking because well, you ain't talking about nothing but all your damn indiscretions. I got another question, Nick. Is the true reason why you doing all this debauchery is just to have content for your show because people really ain't watching your show like that. They thought you was going to take over Wendy's spot, but it just really didn't work. I mean, you did good when you hosted Wendy's show, but it didn't. nobody was really feeling what your show was or what it was about. I'm going to be honest. They're not feeling it and what it is about because they really don't understand the concept yet. It's another daytime talk show. What's gonna make it different from anything else we've been seen? And y'all know, y'all you know, y'all know how I feel about Steve Harvey. But damn, I'd rather have Steve Harvey back on the main screen than than, than a, a show from Nick Cannon like this. I just I don't think this is your lane. I don't think I I think it's comfortable for you, and I think you like the potential money that you can make from it. But until you find really what it is that you do, I'm not buying it. I want to know what happened to the turban. What happened to being Muslim? What happened to the, to, to being the the J word like Tiffany Haddish? What what happened to all that? You, you, you was pro-black and a Muslim at the same time that you was a Moor. I'm so and Egyptian and, and, and you said that these Wonder Breads is cave-dwelling beasts that ain't even human, yet you keep knocking up cave-dwelling beasts that ain't even human. So, what I tell y'all before, the conscious community is a joke and whatever they say is for entertainment purposes only. Oh, thank y'all for the donation. They say let that loose little man stay where he is. Now I want him. I want him to go see all this kid. The thirteen guy that said it makes no sense for the women to agree with this arrangement. It's the money. It's the money. Thank you, Angelique. Thank you, Lisa Ford. It's the money. It's the money. I'm just saying, it's the money. So. We'll move right along from that. Get him up out of here. All right, next we need to talk about Rihanna and ASAP Rocky. They announced their pregnancy. Now, I'm not going to lie. You know, I didn't really ever think that this relationship was going to actually work. Well, the people say that they are the op they, they are basically the same person in different genders, even though we know that Rihanna is really wearing the pants in that family and ASAP is wearing the kilt, and it's all good. We want to congratulate ASAP Rocky on having the worst strokes ever and still managing to get the queen pregnant. We also want to congratulate uh, 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 Rihanna for giving a bad stroke dude who wear more skirts than you, you know, the time the time of day i guess rihanna said she ain't had enough good d in her life she don't even want good d no more she just want a man that's gonna actually stick around and gonna be trying to piss and shit on her or, or make her the fifth wife or make her clean up her image she just want to be her do her have you know have these kids and get back to running her empire we do got many questions uh number one who gonna watch the baby while rihanna working is it gonna be a, a nanny or is asap gonna take on the the role of the Woman in the house, because I just don't ever see Rihanna ever settling down and being like that soccer mom. I don't, I don't really see it. We do want to congratulate them, though. I feel like y'all is going to have a boy first, uh, although this going to be a very well-dressed boy. Whether it's a boy or a girl, she is wearing pink, but that could have been to throw, to, to throw y'all off. I do believe that this is going to be the best-dressed baby ever, because between Rihanna's money and ASAP's fashion... This baby gonna be rocking some of everything before it's even available in the stores. In addition to that, Rihanna, I'm writing you a script for a prenup. This man is going to convince you to marry him if you have not murdered him already. And we're gonna need to make sure we protect the man. Since you a billionaire now, you may be you may be a hundred billionaire one day. You may make two hundred billion, three hundred billion. Your your fancy makeup is actually nice. People liking your draws. So all I'm saying is we wanna protect the assets of the past and the assets of the current and the future if we can help it. We're gonna write a script for ASAP to continue to go raw and nut and as much as possible uh, 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 after she had this baby in the six is it six or eight weeks before you can start hunching again anyway after it's up you're going to knock her up again ASAP I mean you, you got 10 million you do got some money but it ain't nothing like being a billionaire and so what you are going to do when you got Oprah like cooch in your bed is you is going to continue to inseminate it as much as humanly possible you should come you, you her, her body should be a cum dumping factory for you ASAP it should you should never be pulling out no matter what she says because you need to be getting this many babies out of this as you can so that when this is over because you, you you know one day you may want to play the masculine role and that's never gonna uh, fly with rihanna she will be whipping your ass so after you ready to then you know you know do you and move on and do other things uh, you know we is gonna make sure that you get that child support to keep up your lifestyle that rihanna has made you be accustomed to because 10 million is cool but it ain't nothing like a billion i'm sorry y'all nothing more nothing less a lot of y'all uh oh, 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 oh i'm also diagnosing rihanna as being as close to an 
alpha female as possible. Y'all know I don't like that term. I don't really believe it. But she is definitely as close to that as possible. Why? Because she needs a man that she can control and that she has more than. Why couldn't she find another guy? Another guy was not going to put up with her attitude, her mouth. Period. I'm sorry. Or, or or her image or her being half naked all the time. I'm sorry. Men that have a certain amount of means, you as their woman have to carry yourself a certain kind of way. And Rihanna is not going to dim her big personality in her lifestyle for anybody. And so she has to find a man that makes less than her if she wants to be in a long lasting relationship. Nothing more and nothing less. Did y'all actually think it was going to work with her and that Saudi Arabian billionaire? They don't They don't marry women that act like Rihanna. I'm sorry. They just, they don't. She was going to cover up from head to toe and when have you ever really known rihanna to wear clothes hell it's negative 20 degrees up there in new york right now and she's still getting frostbite all in her uterus and all by the belly just to show y'all that she pregnant even though we've been new because guess what your best friend spilled the beans when she liked the neighborhood talk comment months ago let's just keep it real so we got to give the neighborhood talk their credit for actually breaking the story not that photographer that you let break it we've been new you was getting big about the boobs and big about the face we seen you in that big old overcoat the other night before when you was coming out of that hotel and you had a whole belly and it wasn't just the belly that you have after eating Chinese food it was the belly that you have when you got some in your belly so congratulations to the couple the happy couple Brianna wear the pants and you know ASAP wear the tight pants and that's okay because it works for them but we will be writing them a script to both protect themselves and their own individual interests so that when this is over because I don't think this is gonna last 20-30 years we want to make sure that you know Rihanna ain't back to having to put out albums that she have has with me scenes on Thirteen God says yeah, he uh thank y'all for the donation. Um Rihanna is not a man. She played a dominant role. Ain't ASAP a colorist. Allegedly. Allegedly. Hmm. I'm just saying. Allegedly. What the hell do I know? What the hell do I know? Moving right along from that. We got to talk about Whoopi Goldberg, a.k.a. What's her name? Karen. Oh, God. What is your name, Whoopi? I done forgot. Karen Denise something. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, God. He, he just, oh, Karen Elaine Johnson. All right. There we go. There we go. A.k.a. Karen Elaine Johnson. Now, let's get right to it because I can't really tell the story because uh, I want my YouTube channel still. So, Whoopi Goldberg got Goldberg uh, on her show uh, and got sent home, you know, for a couple weeks with no pay and now wants to quit because her feelings is hurt and because she simply questioned um, people that, well, she should have known she could never question. Hmm? 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 Whoopi Goldberg, let's just, number one, talk about the fact that, you know, you never wanted to be with a black man and that, and that is your choice. I understand you. You, you, no, let's back up. Let's first talk about the fact that Whoopi Goldberg allegedly is right now being accused on TikTok of having a fully black child that she is not claiming, allegedly. So we going to see if that shit come to fruition or if you going to pay her like Jay-Z paid Letitia Mesa and got her house up there in Merlin with her kids to shut the hell up. That's what we going to wait on, number one. But number two, this ain't about allegedly an illegitimate child. What this is about... It's the fact that Miss Goldberg here got Goldberg. Now, I don't know if she thought that she had been with Goldberg her whole life and won the bread her whole life and that that was going to protect her and allow her to be able to say whatever she wanted to say. And it was not. Uh, she was not even able to question her own Goldbergs. It's funny that she, you know, did identify with the Goldbergs, with the Goldbergs and not identify with you. And no matter how far you go and how far you get in this business, you always get your nigga moment. And so I'm also diagnosing you with getting a huge slice of what, uh, uh, what they say, you eating crow, huh? Humble pie. Uh, 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 whoopie. Now, you know, I know every day you, you go to work, you off by noon, and you like to go have a burger and a beer. But this time, well, you off work. Now you damn near got fired on your day off. I'm going to need you to go and get a slice of humble pie. But do, because do you remember how you spoke to Monique? 
Do you remember how you sunned Monique on national television and spoke to her like she was your child? Do you remember how you told Monique that it was her fault and that if she would have called you, you would have told her to play the game? Well, guess what, Monique? I'm sorry, guess what, Whoopi? Had you called us, we would have told you to play the game and not even question your bosses or even try to talk on your bosses or your boss's history because you was uh, going to be Goldberg, Miss Goldberg. You can, <laughs> you can wear the name all you want, but as soon as they see your face, they feel like you're not one of them. Whether you really is or not i don't know and i don't care uh you carry the name goldberg because you felt like that was going to get you more roles because it is well y'all know why so you felt like that was going to give you more roles and that was smart that was smart thinking at the time uh you know it, it, it is what it is you didn't you didn't do it to necessarily identify with them you did it to get roles just like people have been doing since the beginning of the time so it is what it is we're not gonna act self-righteous now we're not gonna be surprised that goldberg got goldberg got a little too comfortable up there Whoopi. did you think because you had put in all this work and that you are a living you are a living legend Whoopi. there is no reason why anybody should be disrespecting you but did you think that in the you know being a barbie girl in the wonder bread world did you think that you was ever gonna be able to question the people or have a say so no you got you got your nigga moment and you got put in your place this ain't how I, how I feel. This how they feel. You gonna play the game? You gotta know your place. You thought be you know being an e guy and, and putting in all the work and having all the talent that you do. You thought you was a king or a queen on that chessboard, and they let you know you was the Joker or a peasant. Now you got suspended for two weeks. They said you lost one hundred and ninety two thousand dollars. Divided by two, this is how much Whoopi make per week on that show. This is how much Whoopi make per week. $96,000 a week. You better apologize and go back to work. I mean, you should have saved enough money by now. It really shouldn't even matter. It really shouldn't even matter. See, I'm a different kind of Negro. Once I get a certain amount of money, please... Bye, I retire. Bye, on fire. Bye. <laughs> quick. Y'all know I'll leave a situation quick. Bye. <laughs> I don't give a damn. That's how much she making a week, people. How much y'all making a week? Do y'all make that kind of money a week? Oh, we ain't even gonna forget that you tried to act like you didn't know what a Freemason was after wearing the after wearing the cardigan on national television. So I don't know if this is you being Goldberg or you simply, you know, being punished for exposing uh, Jakuma Tavi. They said, I'll take a job. You can call me whatever you want for $96,000 a week. So. Now, my own, the doctor personal opinion, did Whoopi say anything that was bad? No, she didn't. She wasn't disrespectful at all. But Whoopi got Goldberg and got put in her place and realized that you Ain't even in no position to question them. You should have let Joy Behar talk about that. And, and you should have left that on her, not you. Joy Behar. Josephine. What because Joy Joy name ain't Joy. Her name is Josephine son. And she's a Goldberg too. Josephine Behar. Real name. No, not Josephine Baker. And I don't know what my dog is in here eating, but I'm going to get on him. Let's see. Let's see. Josephine Victoria Behar. Married to Steve Janowitz and Joseph Behar. Come on now. You should have let Josephine answer that question, not you. Okay. Everything you said to Monique ended up coming back on you. So I, I'm going to write you a script to apologize to Monique and realize that she was in the wrong and that you were not above reproach and either leave your show gracefully or leave it kicking and screaming. Either way, you a living legend. You deserve all the respect. But just know no matter how much you accomplish, you'll never be a Goldberg to them. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, Whoopi. We, we, we talk to you later, Whoopi. We talk to you later. Joy's Italian. Tell Joy to take a DNA test. Did did y'all see Joy's did did y'all see Joy's real hair? Did y'all see Joy's real hair? 
I know she thinks she Italian. I'm telling I'm telling her to go take a DNA test. She gonna have some Ashkenazi just like I do. You already know what Barbara Walters is saying. Barbara Walters is saying uh, <laughs> none of them are a real interviewer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> none of y'all are. Y'all are not Barbara Walters at all. Y'all tried and y'all are just not her. All right. Last story we got to do is Kim and Kanye. I almost forgot about them. One day they will be forgettable, but no day soon. And I'm going to make all the money I can off them in the meantime. Uh, let me put them up. Let me put them up. Uh, let's try it again. Another picture. Uh, let's, okay, let's try this one. Oh, man. There we go. There we go. A different day when they were happier. Oh, boy. One thing about it, two narcissists ain't gonna never work. Somebody gonna out-narcissist the other. Always. And then somehow, Kim, want a nice guy now? Kim, you want a nice guy now. You want a regular guy now. You don't want a guy crying over band-aids and, 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 and putting man titties on your back and shit. Now you just want something normal, natural. Mm -hmm. They always want a nice guy for the second guy. Nah, stick with what you had. Anyway... Kim and Kanye, y'all are being brought into my office today for being hood rat, well, being billionaires and exhibiting hood rat behavior. Y'all is arguing back and forth on social media like y'all ain't never been inside one another. Like, Kim, like you didn't use a black woman's uterus to have all them damn children. And like y'all don't have each other's number. I mean, hell, Kanye, you looking into her bedroom right now as Pete long peak heavy meat davidson long stroke it from the back and that house that is cold as hell and looks like a museum with all them damn concrete ass walls i'm just saying the kids might want to be on tiktok because you don't have no decorations around your house you ain't got no crayons around there you the, the, the house don't look fun it looks sterile it looks like a hospital it looked like a crazy house it looked like where you go do rituals hell i don't know what y'all into all i'm saying is the kids want to be on tiktok because it ain't nothing to do around your house and they ain't looking at nothing but bare walls you damn they got them kids in prison but anyway Kanye now wants to um act self-righteous and bring all of his father issues to us online and we are here to tell you sir that we don't care what's the issue between him and Kim what's the true core issue let me dig into your ass he doesn't want her to turn his kids into whores the Kardashians have sold their souls and sold their bodies for money they come from a long line of hoeing Point blank and the period. If you can't walk in a black Hollywood function without seeing everything that has been inside of you, on top of you, straddling you, and creaming in your face or on your belly, you come from a long line of home. It is what it is. Matter, matter of fact, you need her sacred place to get you back right after a long line of home. He don't want her to turn North into that. He don't like that she let North wear lipstick. He don't like that she let North exhibit her femininity as a little girl. He don't know how to handle that, him or any of his personalities. Let's talk about it. North having a TikTok ain't that big a damn deal. Kim supervisor, she ain't letting her say nothing too crazy on there. All these kids got social media. I understand why he don't want her on social media. Probably because of, well, you know, because of, I don't know, maybe because her mammy and pappy is both naked as hell on social media. See, one thing about it, it's one thing for your kids to walk in on their parents doing it. It's, yeah. Thank God I ain't never seen no shit like that. But I would assume that it's traumatizing. But you come to realize that that's how you got here and, and that's an act of love. Uh, or just your mama, you know, trying to convince your daddy to buy her a Birkin bag. Either way, either way, uh, or Monster Protege. But <laughs> shout out to my parents. I'll be dragging the hell out of them. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My parents did it all the time. They talked about it. They said you're supposed to have sex every day with your partner. My parents is freaky. And they Aries. Maybe Aries and Scorpios is just hoes to the day they die. That ain't nothing I won't say to their face, so don't get in y'all feelings. Or well, this may be why nobody talks to me. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. But it's one thing to, you know, let's say you, you, you know, you, 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 Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson's kid. It's one thing 
kids. It's one thing to see your parents make love to each other on tape, which is absolutely disgusting. It's one thing for the whole world to see your parents make love on tape. It's a whole nother thing for a whole bunch of niggas that you don't know make love to your mama on tape. Damn me dark like daddy, but that ain't daddy. It's something that they will see one day and they will come across. Between her taking Johnson's and Kanye's Johnson's being all over media takeout and the intranet and that damn MacBook from back in the day, they all had a sex tape on MacBook. Kanye, Trey Songs, Chance allegedly. They say he was over there with the T-Girls. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just telling you what the people said. And so he's trying, he kind of gets trying to protect his baby girl from that. But excuse me, sir. Y'all showed us his baby's whole life on national television. There is no more protecting her from, from anything. Do you not read the comments, sir? What you trying to protect her from now? She's already out there and exposed forever. It ain't no going back. Because you did not marry a normal woman, you marry a high-paid high paid slut with white skin that in a fake body that gave you the children that looked the way you wanted your children to look. Nothing more and nothing less. Now, one thing you can't really breathe out is that head shape. It is what it is on that. And a hot dog pack in the back of the neck. That is genetic. But you wanted kids to look a certain way. You obsessed over her for a decade. As Amber Rose was putting two or three fingers in your ass. You were still thinking about Kim. And I ain't saying Amber Rose black either because I don't believe she black. Nah. Give a damn what part of Madagascar she from. She ain't black. She white. Y'all are idiots. Anyway. And so we'll be watching as a man that now wants to try to do a Uno reverse on his life decisions. But no. This is who you chose as the mother of your children. Four times over. And so your children will be a product of their parents. But I'm just waiting for North's tell-all. I'm, I'm just waiting for the tell-all book. Because I know she finna be dragging all y'all hell. Her mammy's scared of her. I'll never keep a child that's scared of me, I, uh, that I'm scared of. What? You act like the other one, then you're going to go live with that one. You, she look like a daddy. She act like a daddy. She talk like a daddy. You finna go around, cross the street, and live with your daddy. Y'all can say what y'all want. I ain't finna be scared of nan child that I'm feeding. I don't know. My parents are old school, though, so maybe that's just maybe that's out of style. To, to, and I, I ain't even trying to have no kids like that. Maybe that's out of style to say in 2022, but I'd be damned if I'm feeding and housing something that I'm scared of. Not a pet or a kid or a spouse. Kiss my ass. You can go. <laughs> I'll cut off anybody. And if you want to swing, I'm going to put you in jail. And if I lose the fight, I'm going to shoot you on your pinky toe. So which one you want to do? Anyway, this is why I'm alone. Back to these whores. So these sluts here, <clears throat> one, I was not to feel sorry for them for <laughs> dealing with the consequences of their slut behavior. Y'all think y'all was y'all thought y'all was gonna have all those spirits on y'all and y'all was just gonna be able to consciously uncouple and not have no issues just like the rest of us. Y'all got baby mama, baby daddy drama just like the rest of us. Kanye can't see his kids, they want him riding them kids. Why did you ever think you would uh, did did I didn't I tell you that, Kanye? Didn't I tell you they was going to use your mental illness against you, Kanye? what I tell you? Now I then came out, not only do she not really want you around your kids like that, you want to take the kids uh, to Chicago to go see your people. And she said, no, you ain't taking my kids around them ninjas. I say N-I-G-E-R-S because y'all know they say that around that house. <laughs> you thought because she let you come in her? That she liked your background? No, she just liked your bank account. She liked your legacy. She liked what you brought to the table. Because she didn't even like your face like that. I'm just saying. He is not pretty. Sorry. Reggie Bush, she actually liked his face. But had you stayed with Reggie Bush, Kim, you would have been happy. Maybe not have as much money, but you would have been 
But you ain't want that. So now you got what you got and you get what you get. And I'm here for all y'all to receive all y'all karma. And I'm going to drag y'all every step of the way. Kanye and Kim. He didn't take all that money and go find a regular or whatever race he wanted. Whatever race. But he didn't go find a regular woman that would have been a great mother to his children. He picked somebody who whose own mother doesn't mother first. She manages first. That's Kristen, Mary, Houghton, Kardashian, Jenna. These people ain't even got no God. They got a fake church that they funnel tax money through. Fun, funnel money through. That's how it stays tax free. How does the rich get rich? They don't pay taxes like me and you. They figure out how to get stuff for free. Scam and skeeve, sell a little soul, do a little this, do a little sacrifice. And then hard work. <laughs> you want us to feel bad for you, Kanye? The Kim Kardashian? The daughter of Kris Jenner? Is not letting you see your children? Not letting you take them home to get Chicago five? That's where they need to be around some real people. That's where little North need to be with them black aunties that's going whip that to whip that little behind when she get out of line, get to talking crazy. Sit your ass down like I told you to. No, you can't have more than one hot dog. Yes, she's going to eat these greens too with that macaroni and cheese. She need a little bit of that. I ain't saying she need a lot of that, just a little bit. She'll go back home and she'll appreciate her mammy. I knew something was wrong with y'all when y'all named that child Northwest. The fuck? They got a baby named Chicago that you won't let go to Chicago. <laughs> These two is not bright. I don't know. And these are the ones having all the kids. Listen, when y'all kids get older and drag out, I'm going to be here for every step of it. Every tell all that North gonna put out, that Mason gonna put out. Oh Lord, Lil True gonna really be dragging her daddy. But this ain't about us, it's about y'all. Kanye, I'm writing you a script to move on and make another family. Because you ain't gonna never be in control of this one again. It's done. Long Meat Pete is eventually going to go buy his business too. That ain't nothing too serious. But I'm here to let you know that you is never going to be in charge again and you were never in charge in the first place. And I'm still trying to figure out how somebody who claimed Wong the Bread was so racist to you, you still didn't want to be around them. Get you an attorney. You got money for it. Get your visitation. Like every other black dad around the world. Okay, Kanye. I'm sorry, yay. Gonna legally change your name, but them babies gotta carry that name. Kim, if you don't take them down, if you don't go to the courthouse and, and, and pay the $200 filing fee to change every single one of their names back to Kardashian, you an idiot. How the hell he gonna walk around with one name and we all gotta carry a name that he got? Boy, y'all, get out of my office. I, I'm about to, get out of my office. Get out of my office, because I'm about to burn it down. I'm about to burn it down for real. Thank y'all for the donations. I appreciate it. All right. Ooh, we went long tonight, but shout out again to our sponsor, Her Sacred Place. I'm going to actually show y'all everything in the box here. And how it comes, I'm going to take y'all comments. Whew. Damn, I'm tired. Putting in some work tonight, damn it. Putting in some work. So, as you guys see, all right. This is how the box comes. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty, okay? Some people just be putting their stuff and whatever and shipping it to you. Mm -mm, all right? The feminine white box. Look at it. Look at it, okay? Hold on. Let me open it here. Sorry, I'm going to tear it up a little bit. Oh, she got a tape. Ah. I want to show them what the wipes look like. Sorry. I want to show them what the wipes look like. Ooh, okay. Okay, there we go. Let me open this here. Let me smell it. I mean, if it's cool enough for the cooch, I can rub it on my hands. Okay, smells good. I smell the aloe, the mineral oil. Hmm, okay. Let's see. 
strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. Okay, all right, all right. I ain't mad at it. Then we got the Sacred Yoni Wash. Back that up. Ooh, we got Yoni Oil. Antifungal and antibacterial. Look at that. Look at that there. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Let me smell that, too. Can I put this in my beard? Oh. Damn, that smell good. Mm, 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 mm. I showed y'all the soap. Got another Yoni wash here. Oh, this is more. Oh, this is a foam, right? Yeah, this is a foam. Look, ladies, y'all know how to use that ish. Y'all, y'all, y'all know I don't, but there we go. And more wipes. So okay, pretty, pretty box. The link is pinned in the chat. Oh man, we love our sponsors here at the show. Okay, okay. All right, let me read y'all comments here. Hey, that, who sent me $100 twice? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Miss Spirited, thank you. Send me $100 twice. I appreciate that. How much is it? Y'all got to click the link. Is that the oil on your chest? It's shiny as hell. No, I should have put it on my chest, actually, but. They asking how much? Okay, let me go to her website real quick. Real quick. And I can show y'all. I mean, I can tell you. Uh, view products. I mean, the Yoni wash is fifteen dollars for an eight ounce. Uh, eight ounce. The uh uh ingrown hair serum twenty dollars. Bath bomb six dollars. The whole Yoni gift set eighty five. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So stuff ranges from six. Six to eighty-five dollars. Mister Pads, seven dollars. Come on, now. The entire box is eighty-five. Y'all better support a black business. I thought the oil was for after waxing. Listen, listen. Her sacred place. She's in the chat. Y'all ask her any question you need to. Uh, let's see. What type of oil you got on your chest? Y'all know it's, it's uh, shea butter and uh, jojoba oil. Hey, thank you, Miss Spirited. Damn, another hundred. Thank you cashing out on me tonight. Thank you. Uh, Roshi said, Wendy Williams allegedly suing Wells Fargo for freezing her account. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that. I said, take the cut. Oh, my God. Y'all, y'all so damn silly. Let me see. It's so tight. It's actually kind of hard to take off. Hold on. Let's see. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Hold up. Hold up. Like, this shit tight, tight. Wait a minute. Ah. Woo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh, that tight ass shit. I got to get my other coat. All right. Oh, man. Oh, that's better. That coat is tight. Have we talked about uh, Young Pharaoh already? Yeah, we did. We did. For being the, the, the connoisseur of cunnilingus. Uh, let's see. Oh God! It's not thirst. It's not thirst trap. They said to take it. <laughs> Y'all so damn silly. They said to take it all. What you want me to do? You said Wendy was next storm is messed up. I told y'all they didn't froze her account now. Now they didn't froze her account. Oh, thank you to my assistant by the way. Oh, hey, I know you watching. I'm not gonna call your name, but I gotta, I gotta pay you. <laughs> I'll send it tomorrow. You know I'll be late then. Uh, let's see. Love your tattoo. I want one, but I'm scared. Listen, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Oh, you mean a new one? Or you mean an old one? Oh, you mean, oh, you mean that one. Okay, probably. So if I didn't pay all this high mortgage here in Fourth City, you'd be getting some coins too. Thank you. That's, that's very sweet. Uh, please put it on your beard. 
she said I can do it. Hold up, I'll do it for y'all. Uh, it should be. It should be cool. All right, let's see. I know it's jojoba oil, not jojoba. I just like to pronounce it that way. All right. They want to call in. Okay, we're going to do another show and let y'all call in. Real quick. Let me just demonstrate, and then I can end this, and I'll come right back. All right. So the Yoni oil here, it has... Oh, this is good for toner, antifungal, antibacterial, a natural lubricant, so you can really get have your wop going. That macaroni and cheese, all right? Squirting like Aquafina. Um, a motherwort and calendula. Calendula. Uh, calendula. I don't fucking know. All right, anyway. All right, all right, all right. So let's see here. Oh, it smells good. It, sm it smells good. Oh, man. Let's see how it looks on the skin. I'm literally rubbing yoni oil on me. So let's see. It smells good. Like, it literally smells like delicious. I ain't mad at it. Oh, don't put that on the tattoo. I ain't mad at it, though. It smells good. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. They said I stay with the mac and cheese. I'm just saying. Why would why are Wendy's accounts frozen? Why you think? Why you think they was frozen? What's the fragrance? Oh, it smells good. Uh, jojoba, neem, aloe, red raspberry, coconut, motherwort, uh, botanicals. It smells good. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. It smells good. Uh, why are Wendy's accounts frozen? You don't think Kevin, uh, you don't think Kevin still got access to him? You don't think they trying to starve her out? You don't think they trying to starve her out? Come on now. If she has dementia, the bank can do that. Thank you. Her son needs to just take over. She needs to just make her son her power of attorney. That's the only person she can trust. Uh, okay, Storm, slide me your address. I'm about to pull up. <laughs> Michelle said it feels like OnlyFans. I'm so done with you. Have you heard about what Joe Budden said about Cardi? Yeah, I heard that, and Cardi don't need to be worried about that. You didn't talk about FTN Bay. Separate video for that. I thought about it after, like, no, separate video. I want to go watch the interview to make sure I don't uh, put my foot in my mouth further. Uh, let's see. It ain't wine. It ain't wine. Okay, what else? What else? Y'all got, I'm gonna give y'all five more minutes here. We're gonna come right back with the after show, which we're gonna leave at like 20, 30 minutes, and then we're gonna call it a night. Conscious TV says, Storm, you ain't want tattoos until you saw me with mines. Uh, sir, I've been getting tattoos for the longest. Y'all just didn't see them, but now you see them. That's it. That's the only difference. Um, Thandy Newton needs a script. Hell yeah, Thandy Newton sat there, had a whole career benefiting from colorism, and now she want to say, I'm sorry to dark-skinned women. Sit down. I need a prescription for a ninja. Email me. Bishop Noel and Loretta. Okay. What did Joe say about Cardi? Joe felt like she got time for a lawsuit but don't have time for an album. And honestly, she had a, uh, he had a point. But okay, peeps. I'm going to get off here. I'll be right back with the after show. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. Make sure you check out Her Sacred Place. The link is uh, The link is pinned. Uh, make sure you get my ebooks. My moderator should have been posting that. Make sure you text me 678-679-6077 to actually be on the texting list so you can get your notifications when I announce a live show, video, whatever, all right? I will catch you guys in just a minute. Give me like five minutes. We finna come right back for a quick after show. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie. Yeah.
shit. Spoil your rock and cook. It's a spoil. Yeah. Everybody want this cookie. My spoil your rock and cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie. My spoil your rock and cookie. Yeah, everybody want this cookie. My spoil your rock and cookie. All right, people, let's get it started. Let's get it started. All right, the celebrity doctor is here. All right. Ah, I missed y'all. I missed y'all. I think it's been two weeks now or something like that. I don't know. You let me know. I think it's been a minute. So before I get into everything, let me make sure you guys can hear me and see me good. The music should be muted now. We should be straight. All right. Can y'all hear me and see me good before we get into everything? Because I'm ready. I'm ready. Somebody give me a yes and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to stop. All right. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, some all right. Perfect. We finna get right to it, people. First things first, we need to talk about Sheree Whitfield. We need to talk about our favorite mush mouth. We need to talk about summer, spring, fall, spring, summer, fall. We need to talk about the fact that even though it took her 30 years to build a house and even though it took her 40 years of slave to get her damn fashion show together, she still, no, she has now finally brought us the fashions, okay? So, you know, we don't have no footage here because I don't really need to take the time to screen record footage because, well, the fashions that I saw is no different than anything that come out of any Chinaman shop that you see uh, on the Fashion Nova line uh, from Sheen or any other of these damn IG brands. Now, Sheree, you know, we, 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 we've had a few issues with you over the years. We still tried to figure out why it took you so long to bring Chateau Chateau together. We still figured out why your ass was driving a Porsche and you was going to child support court with Bob and you were sleeping on the air mattress. We were still trying to figure that all out. But now, okay, now you have finally brought us fashions. You have brought us Sheba Sheree, all right? And it's taking you only 15 years to bring it to us. And you still brought us absolutely nothing, okay? You brought us nothing more than what we would see in any Chinaman shop. And so for that, Sheree, I am simply writing you a script to give it up. If it take you 20 years to put out a clothing line and, and, you, and you still ain't got no fashions, then you're, you're, you're done. You're done. You're done, ma'am. Nothing more, nothing less. I wanted to screen record the fashions, but I was still waiting to see the fashions. Much like whenever you get your reads and give your reads out, I be waiting for you to get to the point, be waiting for you to get to the punchline. Sheree, you didn't got so bad with your reads that they now have to put subtitles on you when you talk on Real Slut Lives of Slut Atlanta. So anyway, they say you're going to be on this new season. They say you didn't almost got Tyrone locked up. You know, we were, still, we were still trying to figure out why you was even dealing with a Tyrone in the first place after all you had been through with Bob and we hadn't seen you with any nigga since. But that ain't the point. All right, Sheree. Sheree, the point is, all right, you took. Chateau Charay, you know, from shit to Chateau Charay, and we was expecting to see Sheba Charay actually beat something or, you know, to wow us in some kind of way, and it, it gave us absolutely nothing. It fell flat, much like your storyline on the show, much like this new season of Real Slut Lies of Slutlanta is, is going to be, is going to fall flat because it shouldn't have ended that shit a long damn time ago. Hey, Marlo, congratulations on getting your peach. Ain't you mad though they, get, they didn't give you your peach now that the show was in the shittiest season ever? Why didn't they give you your peach when you was hot? Why didn't they, Marlo, why didn't they give you your peach when you was going back and forth with Sheree in South Africa? And you was, <laughs> why didn't they give Marlo her peach then? It's been years since she slashed at home in the face in the club. Marlo shouldn't have been had a peach. Anyway. Welcome back to Real Housewives of Slutlanta, Mushmouth, and uh, I'm sure we will be seeing Sheba Sheree, not in Kmart, not even in Walmart, it damn sure won't be in Target, and I'm sure you will be giving us a link in your bio for us to go and buy some clothes that you will be haphazardly shipping from China, that's gonna take you, or China, I'm sorry, or Alibaba, that's gonna take your ass six to eight weeks just to bring us a set of panties from your ass, all right, I'm sure that, that fabric and, and, and the cut ain't nothing that fucking special, and it ain't gonna be nothing but China fabric with your name in cheap diamond embroidery across it all right so ladies are you buying she by Sheree? i dare not even show you the fashions because well i was still waiting for the fashions okay that's it 
Nothing more, nothing less. Next, we need to move on. Oh, I'm sorry, Sheree. I'm giving you this script for you to uh, go get you a job because <laughs> fashion ain't for you and reality TV ain't either unless you're going back and forth with NeNe. Okay, moving right along from that, people. We need to talk about Marilee Nichols. Who is that? She ain't shit. She ain't shit but a hoe. But she is now important because Tristan Tricky Dicky third trimester Trevor James. I'm sorry, Tristan Tricky Dicky third trimester trifling Trevor James Thompson got her pregnant and she then got a forty thousand dollar a month bag off of him. Ladies, don't you wish for all the nut that had been squirted in you over the years a nigga would have ever even gave you four grand a month or four hundred a month for your baby, let alone forty thousand a month. She didn't surely came up off this Negro, but these Negroes like getting got. All right. So now at the end of the day, Merrily is out here complaining on the internet because she said Tristan don't want nothing to do with her baby. He ain't came to see the baby. He ain't came to hold the baby. He ain't came to rock the baby. He ain't came to be a father to a baby. And she wants to act like we care. In addition, in addition to her complaining about her no good nigga being just that, a no good nigga, the same ninja he was when he climbed on top of you and squirted in you unprotected right after he had left Chloe's house, right after he left another bitch house, fucking up all y'all pH balances. Mary Lee took to the mirror, the gym mirror. I dare not put it up because I would not be advertising mother thottery on this platform, Mary Lee. But Mary Lee, let me tell you something. Can you at least let your coochie heal before you try to put it back out for sale? Can you at least let your stitches heal up and dissolve before you throw it back out for sale? I'm writing you a script to go shut the fuck up and go somewhere and go and raise this biracial baby, this biracial check that you wanted in peace and to find another nigga, a sucker nigga to marry you, lock you down to play stepfather to your child. Because at the end of the day, Marilee, you are nobody special. You are nothing special. You are nothing more than Wonder Bread that he wanted to spread his Nutella into. Okay, you might have thought you was better than Chloe. You was not better than Chloe. Chloe ain't even better than Chloe. And we ain't even seen Chloe in about 10 years. So we don't know who this new bitch is that's all over IG. I want to know why you thunk that this nigga was going to take care of your baby when he ain't paid attention to Nan, not one of the other babies that he done made out let me tell you something, Mary Lee. Tr Tr Tristan is a nigga. And niggas only claim the kids by the baby mamas that they actually like or the baby mamas that they still want to be in their lives. You know you are nothing more than a high-class escort, a prostitute. You didn't know this nigga let you let you let yet yeah, you let this nigga climb on top of you and get you pregnant. And now you are out here daring for sympathy. Bitch, if you don't cash that motherfucking forty thousand a month child support check and get the fuck out of our face, we don't give a damn about you or nothing that you selling, including that twenty out stapled up stitch still stitched up pussy that you out here selling now i don't give a damn if you had that baby by c-section or if you actually birthed it you out here selling that pussy and it ain't even healed you can you give it a rest god damn girl now you want us to feel sorry for you for what because you got got you let raccoon eyes get on top of you and get you pregnant we don't give a fuck about it but here's the thing about it ma'am you done relocated your ass from texas to california to get that forty thousand dollars a month i want to let you know this nigga will quit his job all right, and when that child support go down, what is you going to do? I really don't know what you're going to do because the first three to four babies is going to get that check first. So congratulations on your thought check. You was nothing more than, than another notch in his belt. Then some more wonder bread to spread his Nutella into to another white womb for him to put his black nut in because he hates himself. You were nothing more than that. At the end of the day, not only did you let a raccoon nigga get you pregnant, you let a raccoon nigga that were a cover girl makeup from the Queen collection with a high pitched voice that don't know if you want to be Canadian, Jamaican, or American knock you up. God damn, you let a nigga knock you up that got wider hips than you. You let a nigga, you let a nigga that's boat legged knock you up. You let a nigga that switch harder than you knock you up he have his hands on his hips more than you i bet you when he was doing the doggy style y'all both needed some pillows under your knees i'm just saying i'm just saying when he was hitting that shit from the back Mary Lee, you didn't know if you was clapping or if his ass was clap clap clapping behind you so you know and i bet you suck them titties too because you look like a nasty motherfucker anyway with that being said i am writing you a script to go shut the fuck up you were a side chick you were a side piece you were paid and, 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 and go and go and go off and live your Life. You take you and your illegitimate bag and go live an illegitimate life and save this child support money because your illegitimate bag will need therapy in the future. Nothing more.
and nothing less. Okay, Marilee. Oh, I didn't sing the Wonder Bread song. Do y'all want me to sing the Wonder Bread song for her? Do y'all want me to go sing? Do y'all want me to sing the Wonder Bread song for her? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. I'll go sing it because she is Wonder Bread. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread new. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread. Want the bread, want we got that want the bread news, that side chick news, bloody pussy news, that hoish ass news, gonna raise a son with a whole ass mama ass news. We got that want the bread, want the bread, that plastic news, unseasoned news, no Vaseline ass news, no lotion using news, no soap when you shower using news, S E S bitch ass news. We got that want. The bread, want the bread, that want the bread new. Take your script and have a good day, Merrily. I'm sure your parents are proud that you grew up to be a mud shark. I mean, a well paid mud shark nonetheless, but a mud shark. <laughs> All righty. All righty, people. Moving right along, we got to talk about Brandon Bills. Okay, this is Yellow Bone's brother. Yellow Bone is what he want. Whoa, whoa. This is Yellow Bone's brother here, Brandon Bills. Him and his curls, the same curls that he got tossed over by like a rag doll uh, down there at the bowling alley when he was trying to fight the baby, all right, to protect his sister. Well, Brandon Bills, the ultimate clout chaser, and that's what I'm diagnosing you with. You are a clout chaser. You are a conquista. You are a, you are a, you are a, a Caucasian from the Caucasus Mountains, cow chaser, of the highest degree. You and your sister bring nothing to the table but white skin and curly blonde hair. That's it. And black culture that y'all immerse yourself in because apparently them people over there uh, at Univision or Univision y'all don't want nothing to do with you motherfuckers. Why y'all ain't took y'all nasty ass down there to the Latin Music Awards and singing your native tongue? But you over here trying to rap with us, get tattoos like us, get your beard lined up like us. You ain't fooling me, bitch. We see that uh, curly yakky at the top of your head, and that's yours. You didn't buy it, and it ain't nan perm or S curl that's in it. Bitch, you don't even know what an S curl is. That's how I know you ain't one of us, nigga. Oh, God, I did not call you nigga. You say nigga too fucking much. So, anyway, you went down there to try to go defend your sister. Defend your sister for what? For being a side chick, for getting embarrassed in front of 155,000 people on IG because she gave her pussy up to a nigga and she thought she was... Man, I ain't even worried about no monetization on this video. Your sister gave her motherfucking pussy up to a nigga and thought she was better than the black baby mama who was there first, who not only kept that nigga in check, but kept his lining together too, because the baby lining and his fade ain't been the same since he left me. Me, I don't give a fuck what none of you motherfuckers is talking about, okay? So you went down there to defend your sister for what? Your sister willingly bent over for the baby. Your sister willingly spread her legs for the baby. Doggy style, missionary, frog. I'm sure he done, did, done that new position too, where, 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 he, where he hitting that shit from the back in the front at the same time she sucked that nigga dick and swallowed all of that nigga black nut she did all of that shit willingly and at the end of the day with when, when that video came out and he embarrassed her and on ig even though loki she embarrassed her motherfucking self talk about she got a goddamn baby and ain't got nowhere to go i'm trying to figure out how you gonna be princess minty and ain't got nowhere to go i'm trying to figure out how you gonna be getting fucked for a year and a half unprotected and you ain't got nowhere to go i'm trying to figure out how you just had a nigga's baby and you didn't fill out no wick paperwork when you was in the hospital i don't have anywhere to go go to the motherfucking hotel so the baby can keep running through holes that look just like you the same holes that would never give you a nigga the time of day if he was a regular nigga on the street if jonathan kirk worked at midas you to never get that nigga the time of day y'all wear the same size shoe and when y'all lay in the bed, I know your legs is longer than his, uh, uh, Danny Lee. Danielle. Danielle. Brandon. Y'all even tried to nigger up y'all names, didn't you? Brandon Bills. 
trying to use this nigga to pay your bills. And you took your ass down there to fight. You threatened him. You said when you saw the baby, it was going to be on site. So on site meant on site. It didn't mean talk. Do you not know who the baby is? Do you not know that he killed a nigga in Walmart and got away with it? Do you not know that he built like a tank? Or did you think that you do because you was bigger than him that you was going to beat him up? Did you also think that because you was white, you, you that people was going to somehow come and help you? Bitch, this ain't how it work. This ain't how it work. You bit a little bit more often you can chew. Now, you is a Dominican. Don't y'all be uh fighting in the motherfucking streets in, in, in Dominican. I thought the Dominican, I, the, is it only the black Dominicans and the brown Dominicans that can fight? Cause you, I thought the, the, the regular Dominicans can fight. Now, I ain't trying to fight. Fight your brain and bills, so that I ain't never told nobody you was gonna be on site when I saw him either. You try to defend your sister's honor when your sister was being a slut. What I know is you defending when she took her ass down there with somebody that she knew had somebody unprotected and tried to get a bag because her career really wasn't going nowhere. What would you, you know what you should when you should have been protecting your sister when she recorded that damn yellow bone song? You should have said, Sis, this ain't it. But see, you don't understand the culture. You not woke. You wear them fucking glasses inside like you Stevie Wonder. Thinking you cool. You took your sloppy body ass down there to the bowling alley and thought you was finna beat up the baby when your body ain't seen a push-up since 7th grade PE class, motherfucker. You thought because you braided your hair up. You weren't going to get pulled by and still got slammed by your edges, sir. And now you suing the baby talking about emotional distress. I'm writing you a script to go away. That's what I'm writing you a script to do. Go away. You are nothing more than a cloud chaser. I am also writing you and your sister a script for family therapy because I'm trying to figure out where in the fuck was y'all failed in life. The child grew up to not only not want to be a part of your culture, talk down on the same culture that your ass is trying to come off of. Hmm? If y'all one of them damn Dominicans and them Hispanics that don't know no Spanish, I'm going to write you a script for some Spanish classes ASAP. You need to speak the native tongue of your of your people, your conquistador people. You know your people came from Spain and came over and and, 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 and conquered them uh, little native people that was in the woods through raping and pillaging. That's where you come from at the end of the motherfucking day. Because when I go to the Dominican Republic, the people look just like me. Yeah, you from the same America as your people, you know, you know, and you, you still trying to do the same thing anytime you round that motherfucking baby i want cameras around because i don't want you harming that baby in any kind of well showing any kind of animosity towards that baby because that baby look like the baby her baby her father i don't want you treating her any kind of way i don't want you talking shit about the baby because you went and started matter of fact you gonna watch your motherfucking mouth around that baby for the baby come and get in your ass again You went down there to defend your sister. You know how you could have defended your sister? Birth control, condom, self-respect, dignity, not being colorist. That's how you could have protected your baby sister. But your baby sister willingly let that nigga get on top of her and uh, inside of her multiple times for a bag. So take your child support bag and go. And you spend a little of it too because your music career ain't going no motherfucking where and hers ain't either. The best thing y'all can do is rebrand and go down there with your people at the Latin Music Awards. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. How bad was that? <laughs> How bad was that script? I know that was a hell of a script. That was a hell of a script. How bad was that? I didn't have no written down, so I don't know how bad. I don't know how bad that was. Oh my god. Oh my oh my god. How oh my god. Like how bad was that? How offensive was that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I roasted the fuck out of them. I did. The dragation. Oh, well, thank you, Jesus. Okay. We're going to move right. <laughs> We're going to move right along. 
Because <laughs> it ain't like I told him they lie. All right, so next, the doctor needs to go and talk about Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige, all right. Mary J., come on into the office. Your script is going to be swift. I ain't got nothing against you. First off, Mary J., you did a damn good job at the Super Bowl. I mean, I was expecting more, but I understand that auntie is old and auntie didn't stretch before she got out there, so I ain't mad. I was expecting a little bit of, a little bit of that, but I got to write you a script for being overworked underpaid and basically being uh, out here still being Ken Du's slave. I didn't know that Ken Du had spent all your money, Mary J. Blige. I didn't know that he had spent so much money that you, that's why you've been working so hard. That's why you didn't have to cut all these checks for this nigga that didn't do nothing but read some paperwork for you that you couldn't read for your fucking self. Mary J, I'm writing you a script to come out with, 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 with a cautionary tale for all women in your position. You know, the, the Wendy's of the world, the Mary's of the world, the Tamar's of the world. Get these hoes some damn hooked on phonics, so can't no nigga come over and, 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 and give you dick and read a big word for you and finesse you out of all your motherfucking money. That's all that nigga did for you, Mary. Can't do what, no, can't, can't, can't do what nobody special. You was already a star before you met him. What lawyers did you have that 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 that, that, that got you messed up to where you gotta pay all this damn alimony to a nigga that cheated on you with another bitch i don't care if you was eating that bitch pussy or not period that wasn't the first pussy you ate and it won't be the last but that ain't the point the point is at the end of the day what 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 bottom barrel great value yellow book page attorneys did you have that allowed you to come out of so much money that your ass gonna be working until you die First part of your script, Mary J, is that I am uh, writing you a script to go and get a loan from Diddy. Diddy then made it. No, don't get a loan from Diddy. Go get. Damn. In it. Never mind. Stay away from Diddy's house. I don't want you having to suck no dick for it. Um, I'm, a, I'm writing you a script to go and get a loan from somebody that's not going to make you do no sexual favors for it. And I want you to actually go down there to the millionaire matchmaker so you can be set up with an old European white man so you can pay back these debts and live the rest of your life in peace and not work like a dog until you break the fuck down. No wonder auntie couldn't get up there and really dance on the Super Bowl stage the way she was supposed to. She's tired. She has not had a day off. Auntie has been on her feet for the last decade. Golly. Yeah, and then y'all talking about these songs she coming out with. You're roasting her because you said her album was bad. Auntie ain't got nothing left in her. She looking for that real love. I'm searching for some love. She, she's fine. She's fine. But she ain't fine. She's tired. Look at this. She been doing this shit for, for years and can't get a break because Ken Dude didn't took all her money golly i'm trying to figure out mary j how did how did he manage to 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 not only spend all the money out the main account but all the backup accounts too you telling me you couldn't even pay your rent i done told y'all these celebrities little paycheck to paycheck just like me and you don't ever be putting none of them on the pedestal they just got fame nothing more and nothing less and so i'm also writing you a script to go for, for you to figure out some financial literacy Okay, I need you to learn how to hold on to the money that you got, or you're going to either have to downsize your lifestyle. Otherwise, you are literally going to be working until you die. And we don't want to see that for auntie. We really just don't. Uh, part three of your script is that you you need to activate the alter ego of Monet. Ain't that that, that character name, Monet? When you be busting hoes head and killing niggas over there on power, I'm going to need you to get back in the mind of Monet. And I'm going to need you to do whatever you got to do to make sure you ain't got to pay this money no more. Okay, Mary? That's what you're going to do. So we're going to send you to the millionaire matchmaker. We're going we gonna to give you some financial literacy. you going to get rid of this problem. And on top of that, you're going to write a book. Well, you're going to pay somebody to write a book. You're going to speak into a microphone, into an audio system. And we're going to write a book about how any woman, successful woman coming in the game, got to be hooked on finance, got to be, got to have a game on point. So can't no nigga come and finesse her talking about you need me because all because all he can do is read your contract to you. That's all that nigga did for you was read your contract to you and read the light bill to you when it came. You know your numbers. You know that light bill said two hundred dollars. You ain't need to know where the hell it came from. We gonna have you take the time to learn that shit for yourself. So can't no motherfucking nigga finesse you no motherfucking more. You make sure you stay your ass on power, too. We want you to be able to keep them lights on. I damn sure don't want you being held in contempt of court. So, just for that, Mary, I ain't know it was that bad for you, Mary. I'm going to support anything you put out. I'm going to play whatever record you put out, any album you put out. I ain't going to like it, and I'm going to probably keep it on mute, but I'm going to at least 
I'm gonna at least play it, you know, but on mute. On mute though, on mute. All right, people, let's move right along. Let's move right along. You're talking about leave Mary alone here. Don't be mad at me. Mad at the nigga that took up money. Last one, I, uh, no, he ain't the last one for today. We got to talk about Christopher Maurice Brown. He is once again being accused of Bill Cosby and R. Kelly and Trey Songz uh, 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 well, basically Hollywood and a hoe on a yacht uh, around there, Brown with Diddy, okay? We already had talked about one lady that claimed that he gave us something that he allegedly put something in her drink. She felt sleepy and she woke up with him on top of her unprotected and him nothing at her. We already know that Chris Brown does not wear any condoms. He uh, admitted to that in 2000. 2012 interview with the breakfast club his hair was like purple and greenish at the same time the very same interview where Charlemagne told him you better stop doing all that to your hair before you end up looking like me and Chris Brown gave him a look like never never would I ever even without her look like your ugly turtle ninja turtle looking ass that was the look he gave him and it is what it is you know Chris Brown don't like nappy headed niggas or nappy headed uh, nappy headed hoes as he would say and so we not mad uh, um, I'm here to really only write this script not really because we give a fuck because this nigga has been self destructing ever since well ever since we can fucking remember because instead of taking my script that i wrote him years ago to go and work on his demons he continues to think that simply doing more drugs drinking more liquor and fucking more whores we'll, we'll get rid of the demons and it's not it's a pretty more demons on to you and i know he didn't win a little crazy ever since his baby rihanna then is having a baby and he ain't the baby daddy and it's asap that actually uh uh got in and and, and you know asap nut uh uh with his horrible strokes is the one they got through i know chris brown looking like but damn rihanna i was fucking you better than that you should at least have my baby so i could have some ties to you in that billion dollar empire but you did it and she did and she was smart and she had a nigga a baby by a nigga that she knew that she could keep in check and not one that she had to somersault and fight with and you know i'm just i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying it, it, it is what it is and so your ass has been uh on a downward spiral ever since because you don't want to deal with your demons you don't want you don't want to keep your mental health in order either you just keep dancing the, the, the crazy doctor away they keep giving you pills to take and you just keep dancing well i mean you can keep dancing but you can't dance around these allegations sir and so but once again Black women, black ladies, this is not your problem. I'm not really writing him a script to help him. I'm We just talking about it because we talking about it because y'all brought it to my office. When that shit came through the fax machine, I really wanted to tear it up. But we're going to talk about it anyway. So we're going to say... Thank you, Chris Brown. You didn't want no nappy-headed hoes and no dark hoes on the yacht with you and any part of with you. And that means that no black women were harmed, raped, or drugged in your presence. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. You said you don't like black hoes. You don't like nappy-headed hoes. So that means none was somersaulted down the steps. None was threatened. Was threatened and they had a life threatened and they brother life threatened and family life threatened. None got monkey stomped in a in a Ferrari in a Lamborghini in a dark alley at night, ear bitten off and, and, and face bitten all that shit. Nobody had to go through that. Nobody, no no black woman had to be home when you threw that chair through the window at Good Morning America. No black woman had to be on. So I'm going to say. Thank you and happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. All you, the ancestors is dragging all of you motherfucking niggas for Black History Month. So enjoy your exoticals, enjoy your wanna bread, and enjoy, you know, your females with 3C hair, which is who is now going to drain your bank account for everything that you worked hard for. You know, had you got you a nabby headed hoe, she probably would have stayed by your side and got her probably been, I don't know, mm, li living together in a happy marriage. And, you you know, you'd have all your money and um, actually be a family man and not just creating all these broken and homes all around the world because you know anytime some foreign pussy lets you in you gotta have a foreign baby in it you know I didn't I didn't never think it was I, I didn't never really think consider the fact that these niggas really don't want babies that look like them and then I heard Cynthia G said and ever since she pointed it out it's so damn true it's just it's so true that they don't they, they don't they don't want the babies that look like them if they got money they figure I'm gonna erase myself point blank in a period but you can erase yourself but you can't damn sure can't erase some traumas that you're gonna be passing from generation to generation so it ain't no skirt from you it, for you it ain't black women's problem y'all don't go save him don't gonna be captain save a nigga he don't like you remember he said y'all too dark and too nappy headed to get in the club and i bet not see not near one of y'all trying to force yourself in his section at the club because i'm gonna drag you y'all gonna learn stop going to spaces that you don't want to be in anyway that's it good luck chris We'll be here to report on any other story that come out about you.
All right. Next, we need to talk about Robin China. Did y'all know that this law? Oh, let me move over. Did y'all know that this lawsuit was still going on with Rob and China? Oh shit! Look at that shit. I'm just saying, that just looks shiny. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm tell y'all who who made this for me later. That shit looked dope too. Anyway, all right, back to the story. Back to the story. So we got Robert Kardashian Jr. and we got Angela Renee White, aka Black China, aka our favorite feline cat. This picture is very feline esque. I just I I. Anyway, when y'all see Black China, y'all point it out to me. Okay, so I don't know if y'all knew they was actually headed to court. They've been suing each other for a while. And Robert, you have now finally decided to drop the case. You say you're not going to pursue no claims that Black China was assaulting you. Now, first thing I do got to write you a script for Robert. You, you, you are, you, are, you. <laughs> You are a batter. You, I got to write you a script. I got to diagnose you with batter woman syndrome. Black China had been whooping off in your ass. She had been kicking off in your ass. She had been taking telephone cords and wrapping them around your neck. I didn't even know people still had them long ass telephone cords no more. And and I'm not saying you deserved it, Robert, but damn, she just got frustrated. You know, at the end of the day, she was raised by Tokyo Tony. And she don't know. You know, how to motivate and how to get a point across without abusing and beating your ass. I mean, you didn't want to brush your hair. You didn't want to brush your teeth. You didn't want to shower. So, you know, when she was coming up, if you didn't want to do no things, you got your ass beat. And she didn't know what else to do. You was cheating on her, so she wrapped a phone cord around your neck. Now, I'm not saying that that is normal. And I'm not saying that that is okay. And the embezzlement of it all. But the whole point of point of it robert is that i would have thought that after you being a better woman for all those years hiding out in chloe's basement smoking weed jerking off and eating up all the doritos and fritos you know all them damn doritos and fritos and chest of fries and, 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 and taco bell that they say that you be eating they say you be going you know you don't go nowhere because you don't leave your house and they say you be uber uber eats it about 30 damn beef tacos they say your order be like 30 beef tacos 50 empanadas and a diet coke guess they don't need to worry about that diet coke your whole order is already diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and basically you don't give a fuck about your life or your existence literally your food meal already screams clinic depression and so there's no need to try to spice it up a little bit with a diet coke go on get that a regular coke <laughs> and go on swallow that high blood pressure down with some diabetes like go on here to lose that foot while your heart giving out my point <laughs> Okay, that might have been too far. My point is, why you didn't want to go to court, Rob? You said you was going to get her, Rob. What happened, Rob? Is it because China had the receipts? Is it because China came with the receipts? You didn't want it leaked that you was calling her all kinds of niggers and nigger bitches in the text. Ain't that right, Rob? Robert. You and your fat head ass sister Chloe love saying the word nigger. It comes off y'all tongue pretty easily. Robert. You didn't want us to know how racist you is. You didn't want us to know that you couldn't read and roast back. So you had to you you had to stoop to calling her a nigger the same nigger that you got on top of and gave a baby to. The same nigga that your baby is half of. I love how y'all, I just, I just, I, I'll never understand the psychology, but just because somebody sleep black don't mean they like black. That family don't like black. I'm still mad at Black China for even having a baby by you, but I'm also proud of her at the same time because Black China represents the ultimate petty. I don't believe in these Zodiacs for real, for real, but let's just talk about how a Taurus is the petty of the petty is. They might not say shit when you're doing something to them. They just go, okay, and then literally become a part of your family tree. I know no Kardashians was mad that you got her pregnant and you had a baby girl. The only thing that would have made it worse was for you to have a baby boy so that that name, that Kardashian name would never be changed, but that's okay. The first true second generation Kardashian came from a black vagina. Much like, well, I mean, hell, a black vagina birthed the whole existence. So I'm just I'm just saying, anyway, you go around it, the whole Kardashian family owe everything that they got to black dick and black pussy. Hell, we round here holler about reparations. We need to go get it from the Kardashians. If we're being honest. So keep it real, Rob. Why you don't want to go to court? Hmm? Is it because you're protecting the mother of your child, even though you ain't protecting nothing she done done to you before? Or is it because you done called her all kinds of nigger bitches and you don't want it out now? Is it because you and your family have already hit the nigger limit? 
And you don't want us to know how, how much y'all really be saying that term behind closed doors. What y'all think it is? Why y'all think he didn't want to go to court all of a sudden? Why y'all think he didn't want to go to court? He was all gung-ho. She was whooping his ass. Why he didn't want to go to court? I'm just saying. He didn't want us to know. So, with that being said, since we already kind of know, I will be writing a script to subpoena that phone, all your phone records, every single phone you got, including them Blackberries that your sisters hide in their pussy lips. And I want all of the text message records so that I can blast all and how many times did you call her all kinds of nigger bitches. I'm also going to be writing a script for Lamar to have to get a temporary pass out of the celebrity Big Brother house to come and stomp your ass out for every nigger word that you said. If you said it a hundred times, you got to take a hundred licks from Lamar. Well, hell, your ass want to lick Lamar anyway. You was all, you know what, Robert? I'll never forget that scene when Chloe and Lamar was doing it in a closet. You know, they had both got out the shower. This was back when Lamar bathed. And they had both got out the shower. I don't know if the tooth was still rotten back then or not. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I know they used to do it and do it good. And I know he used to fuck your sister good when you downstairs. How did it feel, Robert, to, you know, not only have seen your own junk, in the last twenty something years, and to see your own career and your yo yo your life go to abyss, how did it feel to hear your sister get her fake cheeks clapped up top of you? I don't give a damn how big your house is when you got two big beasts in the bed like Lamar and Chloe. You gonna hear them do it. You gonna hear that bed board hit that wall. You gonna hear your sister ah uh, ah uh, scream in passion, pain, and pleasure. Because one thing about it, ain't no bitch ever came out and said that Lamar couldn't please him, allegedly. And we already know the rumors. And we know that crackheads fuck like no other. So, with that being said, I ain't even gonna talk about how coke keep your dick hard. And I heard that. I don't know that to be a fact, but I heard that. But how did it feel to hear your sister up there getting smashed, dashed, and thrown around? Why you couldn't do nothing but beat your meat? To early 2000s porn while you play Xbox and smoked weed, huh? How does it feel to know that you threw your own life away and that you had so much potential? Robert! Wait a minute, Rob. Robert! Robert. We gotta talk. Because now, all of a sudden, you don't want to go to court. And I'm trying to figure out why, Robert. Rob. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm trying to find a good picture. There we go. There we go. Rob. Hmm. We want to know why did you gain so much weight? Did you gain all of that weight so your damn mammy and sisters won't make you participate in their rituals and you didn't have to be on TV no more? Is that why you gained all that weight, Robert? Rob. Rob. Oh, shit. I lost the pitch. I put it down too low. Oh, well, I lost the pitch like you lost your Johnson. Wait a minute. Let's try it again. We gon' we gon' we gon' we gon' we gon' try it again, damn it! Look at look 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 at I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm just I'm trying to figure it out. How you gonna wear the Kardashian name and not represent it to the best? How you gonna be a man in a family where the women work harder than you? They supposed to look to you, but you look into them. That's how I know y'all shit is ass backwards and ain't no God in that motherfucking family. Oh, it's a God and ain't my God though. Let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it since nobody else wants to talk about it. Hmm? 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 Rob, how did it feel to be downstairs and you... How did it feel to know that you didn't have your own house to smash no girl's head into the head boy with, but you had to hear your sister get fucked upstairs? How did it feel to be playing the Xbox with Lamar and then Chloe comes home and you tell him just this one more game, Lamar, this one more game, and he like, yeah, I gotta go fuck your sister, bro, and you like, ooh, go make me a nephew. How does it? How does it feel? You bust in that room one too many times. How, how, did, how did it feel? 
to see that schlong that your sister was taking. You kept wondering why Chloe was always complaining about she was sore. You kept wondering why Chloe kept adding all that ass to the back. She wanted some cushion. How does it feel? And don't say she was fat then because hell, she was a white girl with no ass. Hmm? How did it feel to be that inappropriate in your sister's house? And you finally felt like, man, when you was fucking black China in her house until, well, Chloe came home in the middle of y'all fucking and kicked y'all out her house. How did it feel to have thrown your life and your youth and good looks away? For what? For what? And you dare call Black China a nigger? You are a waste of white skin. And you are white. Because your damn show ain't black. You are white. You got, you, you are white. And you got the devil on your side. And yet you still failed. What you do? You came out with a sock line? We don't give a fuck about no sock line. You should have came out with way more. You should have been way more. You should have been a billionaire before Kylie was a fake billionaire. All you had to do was stop eating and you couldn't even do that. But Black China's a nigger. Black China pulled herself up from D.C. You couldn't pull yourself off the couch. But Black China's a nigger? You got some motherfucking nerve. You smell like Taco Bell, empanada, sweat, and schmegma, and ass, and skid marks. Whose mammy had to buy him a house. Because you done torn through your inheritance. And ruined your legacy, bitch. And yet, Black China's a nigger? She should have whooped your ass. I wish she'd have whooped your ass more. Had your goddamn mammy whooped your ass, she probably would have had a little bit more discipline in your fucking life. Damn. Scott Disick is a drunken drug addict, and he at least went and worked and hosted some parties in Vegas and made his money. And Scott had an inheritance. That's why Courtney had a baby by him. That's why she got with him, because he got the right bloodline to start with a J. He the only child. He got an inheritance when they got together. Courtney had no motherfucking money. She lived in a damn town home with Chloe and spent a 250k off the Norwoods' credit card to get the first set of merchandise for Dash. You get your life together. You got out of this one. You get your life together, sir. Ever fix your mouth to call nobody no motherfucking nigga. You can't get your shit together. You waste a fucking white skin. I don't feel sorry for no motherfucking white man in this world. Especially one with a name. And a head start in life. And you depressed. You so weak in the knees. Stand up. Stand up. Tumbling and strong. Stand up. As y'all can see, I really don't have time to play with none of them today. I don't have time to play with any of them today. At all. Now, people, we got 2,500 people watching and only 759 likes. And so I'm going to need you guys to get my likes up to at least... I need at least 1,400 likes. I'm going to need 1,400 likes. I don't know why y'all be so scared to hit the like. I know y'all watch me like you, you, you know, like you, you don't be want people to know. But I'm just letting you know I'm going to need 1,400 likes. Don't worry. I'll wait. Likes. I'll wait. I'll wait. You said you saw his socks in Burlington? Mm. Okay, we're at 876. Y'all hit them likes. 920. Y'all hit them likes. Come on now. 
Come on now, or I could call it a night. I didn't I didn't give you 45 minutes. I didn't give y'all 45 minutes. I'm giving you grade eight entertainment. You liked it, thank you, Britannia. Britannia. Shit, this a whole thank you. This a whole HBO special. I need 310 more likes. Cause we gonna get to 1400 likes before we move on. Yes, ma'am. Get those likes up. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for that donation. Thank you, Leslie. That's what you do when somebody's giving grade A entertainment. Come on now. Y'all ain't heard a good read like that in a while. I'm a, I'm a wait on y'all. Thank you, Cynthia G. Hey, I appreciate that, Cynthia. Shout out to Cynthia G. We at eleven eighty one. Thank you, Mika. Thank you. We at twelve hundred, fourteen hundred likes. We can move on. Why is it so hard to click likes? Because don't you know we had the haters that come over here too. Why do YouTubers beg for likes? Because we want engagement. Because the likes are free. That's all we asking. That's all I be asking. Now, you got some YouTubers won't move on until y'all send a certain amount of money. I ain't even treating you like that. I'm not even Kevin Samuels you. I can't get a like. Shit. It'll hit that like. Ah. Uh. Your goods in the chest alone is worth a like. Thank you. We at 1260. I'm waiting on 1400. I'm, wait, I'm waiting on 1400. Y'all let, how you holding us? I'm holding you hostage. Tell your people to hit the like. We can't see the like button when the live chat is going on. You better find that like button. Hit that X on the, on the upper right and hit the like. Thank you, Caramel Cutie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia G. She said, y'all need to what, hit, the, hit the like. You watching? Thank you. We had 1306. Just 94 more likes. Just hit the like. I got to pull your teeth to hit the like. Do I got to dance up here for likes? Y'all make a nigga be up here slutting himself out. Now, I ain't got no problem with it. But don't make me feel like a slut. Come on now. We there? Is that oil a KY? Wow. Oh, you freaky freaky. You know I ain't got KY jelly on my chest. Please stop. It's tea tree oil. But anyway. All right. We had 1372. There we go. There we go. I appreciate that. That's all I was asking for. That's it. All right, next, we need to talk about Nicholas Cannon, okay? And we're bringing in Nicholas Cannon for being, well, one of the most dumb, ignorant niggas in, in Black History Month. I will say you niggas have truly failed us in Black History Month. I mean, it just it, it just has went all downhill. Now, I don't even remember this haircut that Nick had, but y'all know I'm good for finding a shady picture of someone. And this is the only picture we will use of Nicholas Cannon going forward until he decides to use some rubber. So until he decides to strap up, I'm going to keep shooting at him with my cannon, this picture right here. So we're going to listen to some audio of him talk to a doctor in an attempt to sound smart about what polygamy is and about what monogamy is and how it's bad. And we're going to attempt to listen to a, a no good nigga at that explain his debauchery all right and explain it in a way that he thinks makes sense and in, in a way that he thinks even makes sense to these hoes but the only reason why these hoes let him get away with it is because he got that check that's it why y'all think this man was about to kill himself when, when, when he was about to be canceled he wasn't gonna be able to keep them hoes happy without them hoes he damn sure ain't gonna have no validation of who he is as a man unfortunately anyway let's listen to this audio here and we're going to see what script we need for Nicholas. Y'all let me know in the chat if you can hear it. You should be able to. You know, know and it. are they not doing it with anyone? You know, know and it. are they not doing it with anyone else? From what they tell me. Uh -huh. Are they allowed to? 
So the so the psychologist asked him. By the way, let, let me know that y'all can hear it. So I don't be here just talking to myself. Let me know y'all can hear it, right? Y'all can hear it? Doctor, y'all can hear it? Let me know. Ooh, shit. Thank y'all for the... Oh, Super Chat's coming in. Y'all can hear it. Okay, cool. If they... If I feel like if I'm not fulfilling you and you... There's a void in your life, please feel free to go. Nicholas said if he's not fulfilling these women who he is not monogamous to, who he is all going raw in at the same time, who he is making single mothers, who he is creating illegitimate bloodlines with, who, who, who he is practicing a nigga's version of polygamy with because God forbid these niggas that spend all these money on books, you know, you ain't supposed to just have these books for decoration, Nicholas. It's supposed to actually be, you know, for you to read it and understand what's going on inside of it. You know what I would never understand? Why can't somebody ask Nicholas this question? Nicholas, this is what we want to know. For these white people that you call cave-dwelling bees, this is what you call them. You said that they are not human. Why do you want to continue to have babies with entities that are not human or do you just like demons or it ha or has it not all changed when 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 mtv and viacom laid down white zaddy dick on you and put you in submission let's go back you know, I know and are they not doing it with anyone else from what they tell me <laughs> are they allowed to if they if i feel like if i'm not fulfilling you and you there's a void in your life please feel free to go you know the void that they have in their life a boyfriend a father that's in the home. Help. Reliability. Duty. Commitment. That's what that's what they're missing. You think because you're feeling with dick is good enough. It's not good enough, Nicholas. It's not. That's a different answer than what I asked. I because I first I don't have dominion or the authority to tell them what they're allowed. But if they were with someone else, it wouldn't mean necessarily you weren't satisfying them physically. It could be or emotionally. I say I didn't say physically. Yeah. Because it's not a physical thing. Yeah. If there's something in your life, there's a void in your life that I'm not fulfilling. You should go find it. Right. And is there after he has made you a single mother, <laughs> then put. As many babies inside of you as he can now go and find your happiness. Ain't that some shit? I did. I mean, if the, I mean, if I truly can diagnose you with anything, it's just being a nigga, being a black American nigga. I've now given you a baby. Now go find a bum to raise it. For any consequence for that, if she does, I think there's a natural. And I'm gonna get back to the to my process, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. now Sorry. we're going, we we made a let the. I'm I think, just so fascinated. Yeah, I, I think there is definitely a natural, I won't even call it consequences, cause and effect. If I believe that you are solely for me and there's certain things, there's certain energies that we'll share on that level, as soon as I know that there's someone else in play, and whether that's financially, whether that even emotionally, I'm going to say, oh, let me pull back so you can have an opportunity to, to yeah. grow with that other yeah. person. And I've been, I've been deeply in love with people that that actually occurred and I stepped back and allowed that to happen and now that person has flourished and is carrying on and has a, an yeah. amazing relationship. Yeah. Amazing relationship with your children. Why is he using all these big words to explain the fact that he just want to fuck hoes and get them pregnant? Why is he using all this big language thinking that, why is he trying to T.I. us? Why is he trying to T.I. and Tiny us? Why is he trying to mind fuck us like he mind fuck these dumb hoes? Even though these hoes are actually fucking him over. I, let, let me just finish the clip. So I understand but that. are there financial consequences? Of course. But yeah. hopefully I'm dealing with strong enough women and, and, and you know, well-minded in the sense to where they were never really in it just for financial reasons. No, of course, of course not. not. They've gotten used to a certain but life. If I buy Why else would they be with you, Nick? I also have to write you a script for delusion because you actually think that these exoticals and Wonder Bread these wild and out girls, you're paying 500 an episode to come up there and, and, and you know, in a skimpy uniform, you, you think you are the new version of a Hugh Hefner 
Well, we know what Hugh Hefner was doing. When are we going to have surviving Nick Cannon? Because it sounds like that's going to be coming out pretty fucking soon. I'm trying to figure out why you think that these women actually love you for you or give a fuck about you. Who was there for you when you was about to end it all, Nick? Who was there for you when you was about to lose everything, Nick? Who, who, was, who was there for you? That, that, that's, that's what I want to know. Of course it's financial. That's why you work seven jobs. You think these women, you think all these women just ain't put you on child support because they like you? No, it's because you're keeping them happy. And you're going to keep making them hoes happy or they're going to all run the court at the same time and drain you of everything. And we're going to be watching Wild and Out season 56 with your old ass. You're going to be great as fuck. Still up there trying to tell a joke. I a house. Yeah. And you feel like you need to have another man in your life. That man, I got that house. You that house needs to become now become you and that man's house. Right. No longer my house. Right. So whatever financially, however that has to happen, you got. Hopefully, you've chosen a man that can now do the same things well, or better so than I can do. They're not gonna do that. Like let's. Well, that's their fault. <laughs> that's their fault. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all listen to the clip again. I ain't going to no, say no. But are they not doing it with anyone else? From what they tell me. <laughs> are they allowed to? If they, if I feel like if I'm not fulfilling you and you, there's a void in your life, please feel free to go. That's a different answer than what I asked. I, because I, first, I don't have dominion or the authority to tell them what they're allowed to But if to they do. were with someone else, it wouldn't mean necessarily you weren't satisfying them physically. It could be. Or that, emotionally. I say, I didn't say physically. Yeah. Because it's not a physical thing. Yeah. If there's something in your life, there's a void in your life that I'm not fulfilling, you should go find it. Right. And is there any consequence for that if she does? I think there's a natural, and I'm going to get back to the, to my process, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. now we're, we, we made a left. The, I'm I think, just so fascinated. Yeah, I, I think there is definitely a, a natural, I won't even call it consequences, cause and effect. If I believe that you are solely for me, and there's certain things, there's certain energies that we'll share on that level. As soon as I know that there's someone else in play, and whether that's financially, whether that even emotionally, I'm going to say, oh, let me pull back so you can have an opportunity to, to yeah. grow with that other yeah. person. And I've been, I've been deeply in love with people. Oh, God, it's such bullshit. Anyway, anyway, such bullshit. We're going to talk about it, okay? So when I hear that, and this script was brought to me once again, because we didn't already wrote Nick so many damn scripts. We didn't told him we chopping the balls off. We putting the dick on ice. We didn't try to put it in the chastity belt. Hell, we didn't try to castrate him. Ain't nothing worked. Because at the end of the day, Nick Cannon feels empty on the inside. It is something that he is trying to fulfill. And he feels that he's going to find it in exotical vagina. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't you remember when he said that didn't nobody get pregnant, that he didn't want pregnant, which means he's purposely doing this for a reason we already know. I don't believe anything that come out of Nicholas's mouth. How does he explain this to his twins? He's going to tell them that he's a polygamist, but he doesn't understand polygamy, just like he didn't understand Judaism, just like he didn't understand being a Moor, just like he didn't understand being a Muslim, he didn't understand being a thug, he didn't understand being a rapper or an actor. He don't understand nothing that he do. He just kind of jump in some shit and then make it work. It ain't really no script we can write him. Because he, I have to diagnose him with really simply not giving a fuck. I feel like this nigga have been given 24 months to live. And he gonna repopulate the earth as much as he can before he go up out of here. But once again, sisters, this ain't your problem. Because he don't like you, just remember that. This ain't your problem. So we gonna let the exoticals and want the bread have it. He got it. We got look. He got it. We good. We good over here. We good. Good luck, Nicholas. When he's crying about child support, we are not gonna feel bad for him. Okay, next up, we got to talk about Delicious and Raymond Santana. Now, um, I was looking for Delicious. Have y'all seen her? Because that ain't delicious. Where is delicious at? I know I got these glasses on, but I know I ain't that crazy. Where is delicious at? Because this is not delicious. Who the fuck is this? 
I went down Google and this was the lady that I found. This this is not the delicious I remembered. Where is delicious? That's the first question. Where is delicious? Where is the where she at? Cause I'm about to write a script and put out an APB for her ass. I'm about I'm about to put out a, 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 a ebony alert for her. Who is this? Raymond Santana. Um, Raymond Santana is one of the dudes that was wasn't he part of that that case where the guys got out. They were accused of uh, of rape and they got out. The Central Park Five or something like that. I never saw the movie. Anyway, with that being said. This ain't necessarily a script. This is a cautionary script for London Charles and Raymond Santana because allegedly they have unfollowed each other on all social media outlets. Allegedly, they haven't been speaking in weeks. And the tea on the streets is that they are no longer together. Not technically divorced yet, but definitely in term in uh, in times of splitting up. Now, I didn't really want to go around there to Duluth, around there by their house to see if I saw them together or not. I'm not that much of a creep. But what I will say is just because a couple unfollows each other on social media does not mean that they are broken up. It does not mean that they are having marital issues. They could have had a little spat or they could simply just not want to see each other on each other's feed. It just it it is what it is. Our social media is not everything. I know these people may be on social media, but they don't take this shit as seriously as we do. Sometimes they don't. So just because they unfollowed each other doesn't mean that they are not together. I do dare say that I am going to send a forensic account around there to Raymond's uh, uh, bank account. He got a settlement, you know, after him and them other uh, men won that case. And so we always wondered why did Delicious want to marry him and why did she want to marry him so fast? They say you ain't even know that man like that Delicious for you to be, you know, putting that thing on him and marrying him so quick. And so we wondered, did the money run dry? We wonder where y'all at. We wondering where, where we still trying to figure out where delicious is at we're gonna put out a, a amber alert and an ebony alert and i'm gonna even click my life alert to find your ass but my thing is delicious what do y'all do for a living <laughs> what do y'all do what do y'all do what did you expect to happen you was gonna marry this man you go you was gonna run through his settlement money and then what if y'all don't write a book stay on reality tv or do something y'all are going to be broke was you really feeling this man delicious? I see. I need you. I need you to come into my office. This is a preliminary script. I need to know was you really feeling this man. I need to know what attracted you to this man. But then again, you would do anything for money because you did let Flavor Flav stick his carotid tongue in your mouth. Now that was with the old face. I still feel like y'all be changing y'all faces because y'all be wanting to forget the niggas that you let. Fuck it. But that ain't got nothing to do with me, allegedly. I don't know if you let Flav hit it or not. I know New York did, and she was, oh, this shit is proper. Oh, oh, oh. You know, New York is still fiending for Flav. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, anyway, I don't think you let Flav hit it, though. I think you just let Flav, you know, maybe fuck your face. I do feel like Flav ate that booty, though. He was he was all over that booty. Y'all think Flav ate that booty in Mexico? Y'all think Flav ate that booty in the house? They say them girls was eating coochie and ass in the Flavor of Love house. Did y'all eat uh, uh, something's ass after she had shitted on the floor like that? Or did y'all make her go take a shower first? I'm just asking. I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Who was Bucci and Coochie bumping all up in Flav's house? Did anybody fuck with Rick? Remember Rick, the security guard? Anybody give him some head or something? You know when hoes is around, whole shit gonna go down. Y'all done had a couple porn stars in there. And most of them damn girls in Hollywood gay anyway. So it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Anyway. It was mm, mm. so we got questions. We got questions, London Charles. But this is a preliminary script. We're going to keep a lookout for delicious. We're gonna put out an amber alert to actually find you first, because this is not delicious. This is the lady down there at Chop Suey that served me my beef fried rice, no veggie, egg only with a vet soda. This is the lady from the Chinaman shop. This is not delicious. This is not delicious from Detroit. Who the fuck is this? We're going to bring the couple in and we're going to get down to the bottom of this. Until then, we're not going to come to any conclusions just because they unfollowed each other on social media. That's 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 not how that that's not how that works, people. That's not how that works, unfortunately. But y'all yeah, better get to work for y'all went through that settlement money and be over with for real. They said Rick and New York mama was getting it in. Mm. 
Wow. Okay, okay. Anyway, moving right along from that, we got to talk about Wendy. All right, Wendy was on a beach with her son, and they made a video where she said, and, you know, she said thank you to everybody that's been praying for her. Thank you for everybody that's supporting her, and she's ready to get back to work and get back to what she knows best. And thank you for the prayers. First off, we're going to give credit to Chronicle Speaks. For being the first one to put this story out, you fuck ass media news outlets love stealing YouTube and shit and then not giving the proper credit. But over here, we are going to give proper credit to Chronicle Speak. She is the first one to put it out. She is the one that broke it. Now, back to what, what we need to talk about. Wendy not only was hanging out on the beach with her son, they say that she has allegedly reconnected with Kevin Hunter as well, her baby father, her ex-husband, the one that, well, was the spark of all of this, uh, for this whole mental breakdown in the beginning. They say that she round there hanging out with her ex-husband, that she is playing forgiveness, and they said that she's even rocking Lil Journey, the, 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 the step baby, allegedly, 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 I'm kidding. She said she ain't changing no diapers though, cause she ain't trying to get shit up under her fingernails, cause she don't think she like up under her fingernails, is flaming hot cheetos and caviar that is it all right and cat food because you know she a cat lady because she lonely so wendy is ready to get back to work wendy ain't ready to walk away from her top spot wendy is ready to get back to what she knows because ultimately she does not have anything else which is why she is hanging around kevin wendy you are healing finally and we would hate to see you double back all because you want to be around something that's familiar you want to be reminded of the good old times because you truly have nothing else because your husband honestly fucked you over he treated you like 12 years a slave all of those years only to take your money and spend it on a bitch down the street that couldn't even start one successful business how the hell you failed through four successful business the peter thomas of it all but anyway god damn they just be they, you know, they love to run through other people's money. But anyway, that ain't the point. The whole point is, Wendy, everybody has been portraying you. Wonder Bread at Wells Fargo been portraying you. Your husband betrayed you. Your brother betrayed you. Everybody betrayed you. And now you're going back around the very same people that, that, that started and sparked off this shit in the first place. If it wasn't for Kevin Hunter, yeah, he did do a lot of deals for you, but he ran away a lot of people from you, too. He ruined a relationship with Charlemagne. He ruined a lot of business deals for you. He ruined a lot of friendships for you. He isolated you so he could go out there on the streets to do what the fuck he wanted to do and you wouldn't find out about it or if you did find out about it you wouldn't have no choice but to let him do it in peace because ultimately that was the kind of chick he was anyway don't you remember when you had first had kevin jr wendy you said that that kevin senior was cheating so much you went in the other room you know you you up nursing the baby you'd have been through all that shit about to go back to the radio station and and, and, and put in some damn overtime because that's what you did that's why you the best and you hear him in the closet talking shit talking about fucking some other pussy in the motherfucking closet not helping you with the baby not going to get no similac formula not 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 cleaning up around the house going and getting some pussy and spending your motherfucking money quite frankly wendy they say you worth 60 million or 40 million quite frankly i believe your ass was worth double that but he spent the other half of that on holes i'm just i'm just saying wendy it's no shade it's no shade to none of y'all but now you about to take your ass around the very same people that didn't, didn't that really didn't give a fuck about you before all because you ain't got nobody else you can do bad by yourself wendy they made a whole series they made a whole movie about that for a reason it's a saying about that for oh, fuck wendy what is you thinking but you're not thinking i think you are clear-headed and you just want to go back to what's familiar even if you're not going to be treated right even if you're going to be nothing but an eight even if you 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 got to take care of a stepchild for the rest of your life and we want better for you wendy you can talk to all that shit about people over the years we won't be we want better for you it's time to move on to a new chapter in life it's time to find a new man new things do new hobbies and let kevin hunter go on with sharina in peace and let and let them raise their child off your money that you worked for all these fucking years i don't want to see you going backwards and i damn sure don't want to see you back on that shit because ain't nobody telling me nothing when you overheated in that costume you was the statue of liberty first of all that was some illuminati shit at the end of the day i feel like you represented the fall of america fall of babylon fall of whatever the fuck it just was a little bit too funny that you was dressed like the statue of liberty and you <laughs> clumps to the ground i still feel like when you <laughs> made the I feel like your ass saw the devil and thought you was finna have, thought you'd have to come pay up on that deal that you made a long fucking time ago. So anyway, this ain't about you or your soul that you need to get together. This is about helping you, Wendy. And so, um, 
I still don't understand why you would go back around him, Wendy, but we're going to send some caseworkers, some adult caseworkers running there by your house. Once a month, I want to make sure you ain't being held hostage. I want to make sure you ain't being uh, abused. I want to make sure that your diaper's being changed and that your ass is being fed because Lord knows you let Kevin Hunter back into your life. Everything is going to be back under his control once again. I mean, once we can finally get you back into your bank accounts because your bank cards is frozen. Is that really why you call Kevin? Because your cards is frozen and you said, shit, well, he got the other half of my money. The least he can do is lend a bitch a little something so until my shit open back up. Maybe that's why you really went around there. But you weren't supposed to do that. Your fucking son was supposed to go around there and say, Daddy, give me a little money for mama. You know her cars is fucked up right now. That's what you was supposed to do. But you use it as an excuse to go and talk to him. And then here we go. Why are you even putting your son back in this position again, Wendy? So I definitely got to put some nanny cams up in your house. Because I want to catch the footage when Kevin Hunter Jr. and Senior go at it again. When they fight again, they fall back in 2019 over his disrespect to you. Over your ass allegedly being pushed into the wall and breaking your clavicle. Talking about you ran into something. You old as fuck to be still using that fucking excuse when you get abused that you ran into something. That's a young bitch's excuse, not an old one. You supposed to blast this nigga out. The fuck? You gave advice all them years not to take none of the advice that you gave? Now, I know you need to get back in that money, Wendy, because allegedly you coming out to sue somebody. They say you are suing somebody that leaked a lot of your personal information. I don't know who that is. They say you coming to sue somebody that spoke on you and spoke on your personal information. I don't know who that is, but whoever it is, Wendy, I'm here to let you know you ain't, you ain't going to get to it through Kevin Hunter. Oh, baby, this child just don't know what to do. She just, she don't know what to do. She don't know what to do. And she don't listen. She don't listen. She don't listen. You reuniting with Kevin? For what? Y'all gonna put hits out on each other again? You gonna run some more dope up the East Coast? What you, what you trying to do? Allegedly. Wendy. Fuck. I know when all this fails, y'all will sell some dope like y'all did back in the day, but now is not the time. Now is just not the time. Allegedly. That's all allegedly. So we're going to write out a script for some home care. Nanny cams. And we're going to make sure that you ain't being abused while you going around there. Back with Kevin. Your ass better leave that house. Yo, they, they better be taking your ass out in that wheelchair for a walk at least 30 minutes a day. Don't be keeping you up in no house cramped up with the blinds closed and black walls like you had in that house. That was truly not a home. Hey, right, moving right along. We got to talk about Monique. Because Monique did an interview with T.S. Madison uh, over there on Fox Soul and just talked about the fact that Tyler Perry has admitted that he was wrong for blackballing her. And Oprah Winfrey knows she is wrong for blackballing her. But Monique has been given the opportunity to come back into Hollywood if she gets on her knees and shucks and jives for Tyler and Oprah. If she comes and licks both of their bussies and says she's sorry for something that she is not sorry for and should have never been in the wrong for in the first place. Now, Monique, I watched your set in L.A. All right, you looked good, Monique. It was good to see you. All right, and see you up close in person. But you said something in your, in your stand-up. You said, I, I just want to get y'all the tea on this. This ain't really no script for Monique. I just want to get y'all the tea. Monique Klang. That when Snoop called Gail King a dog head funk a funky dog head bitch, that Snoop should have never apologized. Cause she said that bitch be funky. So we got some questions. Cause see, you left us on a cliffhanger. But you can't do us like this now. You can't you can't do us like this. We need to know. Wait a minute. Hold up one sec. We need to know. Does Gail King really stink hold up i want y'all I, I want y'all to tell me what you think because monique said that wasn't no motherfucking lie so snoop didn't have to apologize because he didn't tell not nan lie 
They say he told the truth. And they gotta let me know. They say Jennifer Williams' breath stank. Girls on Fresh and Fit talking about Tommy Dick stank. Gail King said she smelled this bitch at a party and smelled her from across the room. What in the B.O. was going on? Your BFF can't be Oprah and you brought her stanking? What stunk on her, Monique? You didn't tell us. We need to know that part. What y'all think stunk on Gil? What y'all think? We gonna guess. We gonna guess. What do y'all think? Yes. That shit is true. Y'all thought it was a joke. No, it's true. What? Stung on Gail King. I need. I, I. I need to know. I first of all, I'm Gail. I'm bringing you into my office anyway, because we still ain't forgave you for that Kobe bullshit. But I want you to come into my office, so I can get a proper smell down on you and figure out where your body odor coming from. Is it the wig? It hasn't been changed in thirty years. I just thought she kept the same style. I didn't think it was the exact same wig. Is it her breath? Is it up? Un, is it her uh, her underarms? Does she not shave? You know that's old school, not shaving. I'm just saying. Her feet, y'all think her feet stink? Her breath, her body. Why ain't nobody told her that she's stinking? I mean, before y'all fell out, y'all was girls. You should have pulled her to the side. You know, you you pulled these heifers to the side on IG and told them to stop walking around with bonnets. The least y'all could have told Gail is that she was around there fucking up the place. She done been down there at CBS around Wonder Bread for so long, she ain't using a rag no more when she shower. She getting in the tub just letting the water hit her body and ain't putting no soap on it. Did her twerk wind stink? Did it stink from the front or the back? Or do she just got sweaty legs and sweaty feet? Because she wearing shoes that's three sizes too small. Sake said, I met Gail. It's her wig. Her wig is greasy. It's her wig? It's the wig stinking like that? Gail, why is your wig stinking like that? You ain't keeping no oil sheen in that motherfucker? Is you frying chicken with the wig on too? I know CBS said you got to keep the same hairstyle. They didn't mean the literal same wig, Gail. You know that. Surely you're not running around with a billionaire through all these wineries and across the world, and you thinking, Is that why they didn't let Oprah buy that purse over there in Austria or Germany or wherever the hell Wonder Bread country where Oprah didn't have no business and have enough fat ass over there trying to buy some ice cream folks though that didn't like her? Is that why they didn't let her in? Oprah said she didn't been denied interest in a few places. You always there with her right on the heels and up on her ass. So is that the reason why they didn't let Oprah in, Gail? Was it because you were stanking and they just didn't know how to stay you funky in English? I need to know. Now, Snoop, I know you watched the show. You was watching the show when Jag was dragging Diddy. I need you to hop in my DM and just let me know what stank on her. Or Monique, you can just let me know what stank. I need I need to know. Now we know why Oprah couldn't get in certain doors. Because your ass was fucking up the place. Everything ain't racism, Orpa. Everything is not. But with that being said, this ain't about Gail or uh, funky twerk win. <laughs> Say it's smelling like earring, earring backs, allegedly. This is about Monique and the fact that she has been played to the ultimate level of plativity by Oprah and Tyler. It's about the fact that she said that they can both suck her motherfucking dick and she said the only thing that she regret is that she didn't tell them to lick her balls as well. So this is how I feel, Monique. In order for you to get your respect, I'm writing you a script to throw hands with Oprah and Tyler at the same time. Winner has to make a fucking apology. That's what I want to see. Who y'all think going to win the fight between Monique, Orpa, and Emmanuel Tyler Perry? Which one is going to win? Which one is going to win? Which one? Y'all let me know. Y'all let, let me know. 
That's the only way Monique gonna get her respect back. That's the only way Monique gonna get her respect back. She gonna have to throw hands. So Eman is either Emmanuel Tyler Perry, Orpha Winfrey, and Monique. You can all throw them in a ring together. Who gonna win? Who, who gonna win? Monique? My bet on Mo my money on Monique too. Mo now Monique told us at the at, at, at the show that she said I beat up my daddy back in the day. Now I can fight. Tyler been waiting to fight all his life. Ooh, Tyler got a lot of bent up aggression. It might be it might be Emmanuel Tyler. I don't know. But y'all gonna throw hands and then y'all let this go. I love me some Monique. Monique, come to the show. Come to the show. We want to talk to you. All right. Moving right along from that, people. We got to talk about Kanye West. Because Kanye West, huh, how can I put it? He has been out here stalking and harassing Kim uh, for weeks. <laughs> now, I know y'all thought it was funny at first, but now it's a little scary because he ain't really letting up. And he's talking in the third person. But now he's dishing out the family secrets. And so... I'm not going to waste our time talking about more Kanye and Kim information because, quite frankly, we talk about them too much. But what we is going to talk about today is the fact that he calling out his chocolate brethren, Corey Gamble, Hips himself. He is calling out. He said that Corey is not of God. He said that Corey has been cheating on Chris. He said that we still don't know nothing about Corey. We still don't know Corey's family. We still don't really know what he do. And we still really don't know why he's around. Matter of fact, let me, let me read the act. Let me read it. I want to read it. So I, I, I don't want to paraphrase. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess it up. Because baby, Kanye been talking. And I'm still waiting on North's tell-all. As soon as we get North's tell-all, uh-huh, uh-huh, we going to know it. All right. Kanye West said, God has a plan to remove the godless Corey ne needed to never be here anyway. But he was there to fuck Kris Jenner. He was there for her to strap. He was there to lie on his stomach, toot it up, do the crybaby. That's what he was there to do. Them hips is very open. He love to dance. In that, in that uh, screenshot right there, he dancing and sweating with his big ass all over Wanda Bread face. They like, damn, I didn't want niggas sweat on me today. Anyway, I think he's a nice person. Not a great person. A nice person who used to be around Puff's family, then got around Justin Bieber. Then when Kris Jenner got divorced, he slid in. Uh-oh. See, Corey, I remember there being uh, footage of you when uh, they asked you, what do you do for Diddy? And you said, I make problems go away. Oh, shit. They say you was a bodyguard. Now, is you a bodyguard? Or is you the one dumping the bodies? <laughs> Allegedly. We, we knew you ain't never want no damn Chris Jenner. We knew that anyway, Corey. Your, your ex already came out and said that Chloe was more your type. Why you think that you and Chloe was getting into it on, on, on whatever the hell season of keeping up with the Kardashians where she had to confront you about whether or not you know you really cared about her. The reason why you really stayed away from Chloe and Kylie the way that you did because them, that's the pussy that you actually want to fuck, not Chris. But you would just settle for Chris while you watch our daughters walk around in little bikinis and shit. It's up to ain't creepy no more because they grown. I mean, hell, they damn near your age. Chloe is especially. All right, so he was around Puff's family. Then he got around Justin Bieber. And then he slid in when Chris divorced Caitlyn. Well, Bruce. Well, Bruce Aitlyn. Or Cruz. I don't know. He, he became the TV version of a father figure. And he always called himself a real nigga. He once told my wife he knew what music she should be listening to. So when I seen him a week later, I had him removed from my daughter's birthday party. Oh, damn, you didn't want Corey around the kids? Corey had already been around the kids. But I get it, Kanye. You didn't want him around. We still never met his family, and I guess we never will. He got my wife linked with the liberals in a deep way. That was his job. For some reason, I always felt he worked for DuPont or some organization in their pedigree. Now he's off to his next mission. His job is done. 
He's not messy enough to do something like this. It's on purpose. I love Chris. Damn, now you love Chris Kanye? One minute you hate Chris, one minute she Chris Jong-un, now you love her. Do you love her or hate her? Which one is it? Which is it? This woman is a hero, and she's done what she's had to do to protect her family and make sure they prosper, even if it meant telling everyone not to listen to me. I respect her grind, her hustle, and her mind. Chris is one of the best to ever do it. Hell yeah, she got the devil on her side. Of course she's the best to ever do it. Then somebody uh, somebody named Rodney Jer Wait, Rodney Jerkins, that name sounds familiar. Rodney Jerkins then texted Kanye and said, Oh, you forgot me too. Corey Gamble stole from me as well. Is that Dark Child? Wait a minute, ain't Rodney Jerkins, is that Dark Child? Is that Dark Child? Why does Rodney Jerkins sound so familiar? Oh, that's definitely Dark Child, oh my God. Corey Gamble stole from me as well. Stole all my NPC zips, that's music, stole all my music to give to some little producer he was managing back in the day. Oh. I'm glad Chris woke up. God is removing the evil blockers to bring restoration. Oh. So not only has Corey been out here bussy popping on the handstand, splitting, doing all kinds of splits, getting all kind of thick on Chris's money, getting custom made Ferraris. She got this nigga a custom Ferrari. Not only has he been piping down and getting strapped by the elderly, running around in Beverly Hills Hotel, Doing role play, because you know him and Chris are doing that damn slave role play. I don't give a damn what they tell y'all. Come here, nigga, 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 nigga. You, I know they always doing it. Wow. So who says you really want stealing that music from Rodney to give it to Justin? Is this, is that where Justin's black sound all of a sudden started coming from on damn well he was no kind of black and couldn't really hang with the niggas when 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 look uh not little uzi look uh little zip is that his name little zip when little zip ain't got arrested wow so not only does Corey need a girdle not only does he need not only does he need some spanks we need to send him some of Kim's skims to slim him down, allegedly. He also need to be locked up for stealing music. From another black man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you niggas is trash. And they said they asking me why I don't make friends in this industry. It ain't no friends in this industry. Lil Twist, what did I say, Lil Zip? It all sound the same to me. So Kanye has been dragging Corey. And so now, we was upset with the fact that, you know, Kanye is literally out here um, stalking somebody that does not want to be married to him anymore, does not want to be bothered by him anymore, does not want to be in his presence anymore, but he's making himself a part of their lives, even though they don't want him to be. You know, Kanye, we, 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 we know that you still hate Skeet, Long Meat Pete, and you are obsessed with him because he is banging your wife out. It is what it is. And I just don't think that you can handle somebody having bigger meat than yours fucking your wife. And I just think that's why you're mad. I'm just saying. 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 You say he ain't going to meet your kids. That man going to meet your kids. He's already met your kids. Let's be very clear. You think Kim is always sneaking around to get some dick? You think she's all? it's always happening when the kids go to school? No, she get lonely and she call him, hey, the kids sleep, come over. And he bangs her out and that shit reverberates in that concrete museum y'all call a home. And everybody hears it. Long meet Pete. Hell, your ass is right across the street. You already know what's up. Like, I already know you got surveillance cameras pointed right at Kim's house. We already fucking know. What script can we write for you? But Kanye gonna continue to be crazy. It, it, it's nothing. It's really nothing more I can really do for him. But we watching out for Corey. 
we putting a P.I. on Corey. Because where there is smoke, there is fire. If he's really a thief, if he really makes people disappear, he's this random person where we don't know where he come from and who his family is. There is more than meets the eye. There is more that is going to come out about Corey. Y'all just wait and see. So this script will be put on ice until I find out more information on you, Corey. It's hard to find out anything about you. But when I do, we gonna blast it. Just like you blast them hips open. I'm still trying to figure out how them hips is so damn open. For you to be so thick. You spread open easily. Okay, I'm done. 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 All right, people. So, Sister Savant said Kanye is a crazy ass Gemini. Y'all didn't know? Man, listen. He been going so hard, I ain't been able to keep up. So let me uh, take y'all comments here for a little bit. Then we're going to call it a night. <sighs> I got a clean impact because I am going snowboarding tomorrow. All right. So I'm going to read y'all comments here. Thank you to everybody that tuned in. Thank you to everybody that donated, sent super chats, cash apps, all that. And they hit the like. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm so Cinderella said he's a booty goon. Ooh. Get Leola Brown, Storm, you would get all the truth. I reached out to Leola Brown. I keep reaching out. Let, let Leola Brown know that I'm looking for her. Uh, let's see. Lily T did a great breakdown on Kanye. Kim, the whole Kardashian family benefited. Mm, good point. Good point. Oh, you're about to have so much fun snowboarding. Look, it's going to be it's gonna be my first time. All right, I'm going to be in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, so it should definitely be fun. Uh, let's see, let's see. I can take, oh, take that off now. Oh, shoot, this uh, necklace right here. Old boy on IG. I'm going to show y'all his IG. This actually says Taurus, and I forgot what, like, gym that this is, and it got herbs and stuff in it. I didn't forgot. Uh, his name is Rainy. Hold up. I'm going to show y'all his page. Let's see. Okay, you can find him under Melanation on IG. Whoop, there we go. Yeah, you can find him under uh, Melanation on IG. So he's a photographer. Uh, he makes all kinds of like African chains and pyramids, all kinds of dope shit. But anyway, right? Uh, you're amazing, Storm. Thank you. Thank you, Lady T. Is the industry targeting black men? There are so many dying or arrested. Probably. Yes, ma'am. You know, I truly feel like it's sacrifice and season anyway. I, I just feel like that. Um, It's Aventurine. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot. I ordered this so long ago. Hell, I forgot. Uh, Let's see. Did you get that from the guy at the Halloween party? Yes, he was a photographer at the Halloween party. Don't wear that piece on the slopes. Oh, I'm not. It's not leaving the house. No after show tonight? Uh, Probably not, because I got a pack. Yeah, because I got a pack. So probably not. Did you hear about Robert Kelly getting a new lawyer? Thank you, Sexy Head Rock. Did you hear about R. Kelly getting a new lawyer? Wow. Um, I did not. I did not. Uh, Matilda says, speaking of sacrificing, what happens to Travis Scott in the lawsuits? I heard that the people that uh, were victims, oh, I'm going to come out of this now. Fine. Oh, oh my God. You can come out of this shit. Ugh, shit's tight. Oh, okay. Whew. What I heard was the people, um, the the families of the victims are all like gonna do a big giant lawsuit on them. So I forgot what they call that. Um, when people jointly sue your ass, I, I can't think of it, but he gonna come out some money. You would love Gatlinburg. Make sure you visit Dolly World and, and try some Tennessee whiskey and cotton candy wine. Oh my God. 
Not cotton candy. Why? I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, did you get your car back, Storm? Yeah, I been got the car back. Yeah, uh, uh, Atlanta Police Department, they took the prints. You feel me? Couldn't, but ain't came back with no results yet. But, you know, I said it before and I'll say it again. If anything comes back on who, class action, thank you. If anything comes back on who stole the car, I'm going to blast it live on air. And I'm blasting everything. If I ever find out with proof who took the car. Spiritually, I've already been told who did it. But when I find out the proof, everything going to be blasted. Please share your, uh, your snowboard pics. I will. I will for sure. Y'all talking about stand up. I'm <laughs> I got on like pajama pants. Y'all so nasty. I mean, I'm getting... I <laughs> What what more do you want? <laughs> um, let's see. I know what more you want. Uh, are you a Taurus? Allegedly, I am. Uh, I'll catch up with Kanye's documentary on Netflix. I do need to watch that. Are you gonna ski? No, I'm gonna snowboard. I might ski though. We'll see. We'll see. Did the place where it was have cameras? Listen, we got cameras in our garage. It was on the first level, right? The leasing office manager claimed, oh, I looked, I didn't see anything. Now, mind you, it's two days of footage he had to go through. I don't believe he looked through any of it. But you know what, though? It's all good. I told them, let me sit down and look at the footage. I got time. I, I got time. No, no, we can't actually even show you the footage, even if we knew who took it. Oh, I said, why not? Uh, you know, because we can't be, we don't want to be sued if you retaliate. I said, I'm not going to do nothing. I just want, I just want to know. I just need to be able to see who did it. Because one thing about me, I already know people can wear a mask. People can do this. People can do that. People, most people do not ever think to mask their walk. Your walk is distinctive, and that's how I would have known if I would have known the person that would have did it, or I could have known that's a man or that's a woman. I would have known. All I need to see is the walk, and I know. Uh, will you bungee jump one day? One day. Uh, Storm, be safe on the slopes. I will. I will. Angela said, Ty oh, okay. I'm sorry to hear that about Tyrese. You know, I don't I don't want to talk about, you know, nobody's parents like that, but that's sad. Um You going to a man made resort? Yeah, it's called Uber Gatlinburg. Hold up. I should probably know where I'm going. Yeah, it's called Ober. My bad. Not Uber. Ober. Ober Gatlinburg. Oh, they got all kinds of shit too in the Smoky Mountains. What? Oh, this shit finna be hella fun. Hella fun. It's gonna be a whole. It's gonna be a whole lot of Wonder Bread there. Skydiving is amazing. You should try it. Mm. Maybe for my thirtieth birthday. Maybe for my thirtieth birthday. Um, let's see what else. Come to North Carolina. Charlotte is only three hours from Atlanta. I told you. Oh, wait, I didn't tell y'all. My friend wants me to consider moving to Charlotte. Apparently, a lot of millennials are going to Charlotte. Where are all the millennials going? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I heard people going to Miami. A lot of L.A. people coming to Miami. I don't know. Miami already high, though. Uh, East Tennessee is one of Wonder Bread's best kept secrets. Ooh. Be careful with the whites. Oh, my God. Uh, where is the storm only fan? Y'all, y'all, y'all. Oh, my God. Y'all are crazy. Remember your celibate? Who said I was ce Who said I was celibate? Who said that? 
Who said that? Man, who said that? Uh, they lucky I ain't have a chance to get a haircut before I go. Don't they have to give footage to the cops? Only if the cops request it, right? But the cops did not request it because they have not been able to find anything from the fingerprints. And Atlanta PD really don't care. I'm just saying, they really don't. They really don't. They were pretty much useless, to be honest. Uh, do you think Fresh and Fit would be sued behind the uh, uh, the fight over there? They could be. I hope they have liability insurance. They could be. Um, how do you get your beard like that? Uh, it grew out like that? Wait a minute. Like, it, 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 it grew like that. I don't know what you... It grew like that. <laughs> this shit dry as fuck. Mm. Uh, let's see. Are you going snowboarding by yourself? No, no. Going with going with friends, of course. Now, the friends are black. All right. And they know how to snowboard. So, I'm going with somebody that know what they're doing. Storm, you slutting yourself out for car money here? <laughs> I slut myself out, period. What are y'all talking about? Um, Storm talking about he not celibate. I mean, I'm celibate. Okay, I am celibate. How about that? If that make you feel better, I am. Um, Do you know how to swim? Uh, yes, I do. I swim better underwater than treading water because, like, my groin and my hips are really tight. Uh, so I'm working on opening out. Uh, Miss Fraser said, move to Miami. I mean, move to Hawaii. I got to get married first. So I would move to Hawaii, but I would need to meet somebody, get married, and say, hey, we're moving to Hawaii. So they would have to be down for that. Uh, let's see. Vlog the trip, yep. I still got to put up the vlog for LA. Uh, What else, what else, what else? It's good seeing black folks doing more things. Absolutely. Be careful when you're out there. I am. I'm not going up like, I'm not going up like super high on the mountains. I'm just going to, whatever the kitty baby level is, I'm going to be there. Skiing down. I'm not trying to jump. I'm, I mean, it's um, real simple. Wherever the kids are getting lessons, that's where I'm going to be. Believe that. Um, Maybe you can find your wife in Hawaii. That's true. But, yeah, that's true. Uh, Let's see what else. Move down here to Gulf Shores. I've been to Gulf Shores. Gulf Shores is nice. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Would you go hunting? I ain't really trying to. Swimming underwater is not no is not knowing how to swim, Storm. Well, due to my hips being so tight, I struggle with treading water. I can on my back. So I'm good on my back, but when I get on my belly, literally, like, my hips and my glutes are, are so tight, so... Um, I got bad feet. I don't really know. I, I got bad feet, a short leg, hips out of alignment. It's a lot going on. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else. What you think about Omaretta's new jam? I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it yet. Did you decide on a new car? Shoot, if if I do, I'm not telling y'all what it is. If I do, I'm not telling nobody what it is. Nobody. Uh, you need them Corey Hills to swim right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I ain't going to keep y'all on for too much longer. Um. Okay. Let's see. Oh, shoot. I totally forgot the sponsor. Oh, my God. Really? 
Okay. Well, we might have to do another show. Well, we did do a show this week at least. Uh, okay. Listen, listen, listen. This show, today's show, right? Tonight's show was sponsored by Her Sacred Place. My vagina is steamy clean. Now listen, spring is around us the corner. Summer is around the corner. You want to make sure that your vagina... Oh, shit. Stuff to move around. You want to make sure that your vagina is squeaky clean and smelling good. You got the sacred Yoni wash. Boom. All right. You got all kinds of wipes in here. Herbs, oils, all that shit. To keep your pH balanced together and to keep you fresh. Come on, ladies. Now, get, get, get your shit together. Now, when you get your package, it's going to come in a pretty box just like this. If I can get it back in, because I done moved stuff around. But it's going to come in a pretty box just like this, all right? And it's going to keep your vagina clean, squeaky clean, all right? Shout out to Her Sacred Place. I'm glad we've been posting it in the chat all day, at least. I mean, all night. Um, let's see. Bussy wash, use it for your bussy, too. If you want to make sure you ain't funky like Gail King, you better get Her Sacred Place. All right, uh, let's see. You read Red Bones, brother, almost as bad as Chloe Reed. <laughs> listen, listen, I did what needed to be done. I promise you I did what needed to be done. So, okay, people, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Make sure you are on my text list, 678-679-6077, so that you can get all of my notifications. Follow me on every platform, uh, Storm Monroe. Uh, on IG, you will find me at The Tatted Nerd. I mean, it's kind of obvious why I call myself that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. That's it. Links to my eBooks are in the chat. We got more to come. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you care, and I will catch you guys later. You right, everybody want this cookie. My spoil your rotten cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie. My spoil your rotten cookie. Yeah, everybody want this cookie. My spoil your rotten cookie. cut this music here and let's actually cut there we go and the thumbnail is gone so the doctor is in to give you a script for your favorite or even your non-favorite celebrity before i get into everything let me know that you can hear me and see me good and then we're gonna get it started today we can, we can get it started we can get it popping today all right all right let me check on y'all let me check on y'all storm long vacation to, look, 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 look 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 storm is not here i am the celebrity doctor now storm now listen i gotta get storm together later I got to read Storm in a video all on himself. He been out here tripping and shit, crying on the internet. Sitting here, not being himself and shit. Y'all know I got to put my foot in his ass and get him together too? Mm-mm-mm. All right, you can hear me and see me. Absolutely, we are going to get started. And for everybody that kept wondering why the day changed, why this, why that, because Queen Whisperer was on uh, 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 the TV last night, and I didn't want to compete with that. And y'all know uh, when she talking, you, you can barely hear her. So, you know, damn well, you weren't going to be able to hear Janet and her whispering ass over my voice if you play this on two different devices at the same time. Because if you love the doctor, you would have your multiple devices going at all damn times. Your kids sitting there watching anyway. Screw Elmo. Put the solution. Liberty Doctor on, just like I said. Anyway, first things first. In my office, we got to talk about Candy Lanise Burris hyphen Tucker. Two R's, two S's. You know we love Candy over here, and Candy is a sweetheart. You know, and Candy, just like she got a lot of teeth in her mouth, she got a lot of love to give out. But I think she definitely been doing too much. And so I am diagnosing you with just being team too much. We trying to figure out over here at the office. Me and Tiffany been talking about this for a while. Candy, why do you have so many businesses, Candy? Why do you work so much? Why are your restaurants so shitty? Why are you hiring people straight out the prison yard and apparently off the street? Why are you hiring people that ain't got no credentials? Why is they not cleaning at your restaurants? Why is y'all giving us another eight episode commercial that nobody asked for? Why do y'all obviously lack managerial skills to not have these niggas in order? And so, Candy, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put you on the script list because you are another black celebrity in Atlanta with a crappy restaurant with crappy service that apparently wasn't even clean. All right. 
I told y'all I went to Blaze Steak and Seafood. How you gonna name a restaurant after your baby and not give it your best? How you gonna name a restaurant after your baby and put it in a shopping mall? How you gonna have a restaurant in a shopping mall and then tell me? Well, you didn't tell me because I didn't go because me and Tiffany, we don't go to places like that. Now, Tiffany, Tiffany, Nurse Tiffany pretty much got to stick with me forever because y'all know I've been banging her out in the closet and... I mean, hell, she can sue me, and then we, we just gonna marry Tiffany at this point, but my point is, me and my work wife slash probably gonna be real wife, Tiffany, we didn't, we didn't go to your shit, we, we told Storm to go, you know, he the one that's always hungry and shit, you know, he, 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 he half fat, half skinny at this point, so he, you know, he down, he always down for a good meal, so Storm went, and then y'all told Storm he couldn't keep his hat on, and you know, the, the place was dark, and then it was supposed to be classy, but the, the, the damn hand, uh, the damn menus was flimsy and, and dirty, and the restaurant I only had one stall, one stall. What if two men just got a piss at the same time? Is they supposed to go in there together? Now, I mean, this is Atlanta, but that ain't the way Storm wanted to get down, Candy. Why is it that the, 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 the food that y'all did serve Storm didn't have no seasoning, didn't have no, no spice, it was cold in the middle, it was just stale, crusty, and just not, it was, it was very Wonder Bread ish. It was, it was, I, th I thought I was at the Cracker Barrel for a minute. Now, I'll take that back, Cracker Barrel actually. Got some decent food. Anyway, I say all that to say I got to write you a script for being back on TV for something we did not ask for to give us a nasty-ass restaurant and to try to entice people to come to this nasty-ass restaurant with stale-ass, bad-ass food. The show you need to do, Candy, I'm going I'm to I'm call Bravo. The show you need to do is, is is a restaurant cleanup. I need to send that white dude that be going to these restaurants with the roaches and shit in it. They need to go to your shit. I'm putting an anonymous tip on your restaurant. What is the 1-800 number for crappy restaurants because I'm calling that because I need him for Spike TV to come into your shit and get you together in 48 business hours. That's what I need for you to do. Giving us another damn restaurant, another damn show we don't need. Sitting here using these little ninjas in Atlanta that want to be on TV. You ain't paying them number $500 an episode, if that. You know, to act a fool, fight, put all their business on TV and continue to make you rich. Meanwhile, you got people flying in from sea to shining sea for a restaurant that's going to be lackluster. Do not go to Candy Restaurant. Do not go to Kirk and Rashida's Restaurant. You can go to Nene Rest uh, Lounge. Get your stuff and need to get the food there to go because her music is trash. Point blank and a period. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. And, and and I'm also going to and another thing too. I'm going to write you a script to actually fire all that jailhouse staff you got in there and you're going to hire an actual cook. Because I know damn well the Aunt Bertha, Aunt Nora and Mama Joyce is not back there cooking. They are simply, you know, they the faces of it because you're making money off them since so you got to take care of them. And, and just listen, Ken, just listen to me. I want you to stop being so cheap, you know, yeah, yeah, I know I don't believe in that astrology, but I heard that them tourists be trying to save a buck sometimes. But what I want you to do is dig deep into your wallet, um, not your panties, but your wallet, or dig deep in the Todd's wallet. But Todd's wallet is your wallet anyway, and everybody's wallet is your wallet too. So I want you to dig deep, 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 all the way deep. And I want you to actually hire real staff, real managers, and somebody that can give you a four and five star restaurant candy. You deserve better than that, and the people of Atlanta deserve better than that. And if you're going to wear that black skin, any food you better serve me and you call it soul better have seasoning that's just the way i feel that's just the way i feel that's just the way i feel i don't know if that astrology is just true but i read it so i repeated it <laughs> I'm just saying, right now we're giving that restaurant zero stars. I'm not even giving you an A for effort or E for effort because it don't even look like y'all put that much effort into it. Your restaurant was so bad, Candy, that I have now resorted to just asking my subscribers that live in the greater Atlanta area, when they cooking, when they have a fish fry, invite me over. I need you to have some good fish. You know, when I have my cheat days, I need good fish. I need that, that good macaroni, cheese, mashed potatoes, cornbread, who house can I come over with that? And you better have me some Kool-Aid. Grape. Extra sugary. That Kool-Aid should give me diabetes as I drink it. Nah. We're going to move right along from that. Move right along from that, people. All right, all right, all right. We got to talk about Wonder Bread here. Now, you know, we got Wonder Bread. We got we to gotta sing our Wonder Bread song. Our favorite Kabbalah witch uh, who seems to look 92 and 78 and sometimes 51 on a good day at the same time. All right. So we're going to sing to her. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me come. Nope, got to turn this way. Turn, turn, turn. There we go. 
We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread. Wonder bread. We got that spoiled milk news, that saggy booty news, that wrinkled news, that unseasoned news, that demonic news, that rich bitch and got rats in the house ass news. We ain't forgot bitch news, that ride young black dick ass news, stealing all them kids from Africa news. Why you want all them black kids from Africa? Africa news. They want all them black kids, Madonna. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news. All right. Now, Madonna, uh, you and your adrenal chrome and, and, your, and your witchery has gotten you a lot of things in this world. A lot of things, Madonna. I'm sorry. Let me, when you come into my office, you know, and I'm, I'm taking your health. Uh, health insurance card I need to make sure I call you by your name Madonna Louise Ciccione all right so Madonna Louise Ciccione I'm trying to figure out why in the hell do you have this fake booty why would you do this to yourself Madonna Let, let's all take a look at the booty the booty is sagging it is a bad booty job or those booty implants that that been out of style that's how I know you an old chick trying to be a young chick you trying to be a bad bitch, but you belong in a nursing home at the same time. It's not working for you, Madonna. Who is still hitting that from the back, Madonna? Why would you do this at your big age at 84, Madonna? This does not look good, Madonna. You look like a cartoon character, Madonna. Did somebody tell you that this looked good? Did somebody tell you? Did somebody advise you of this, Madonna? The booty is already going out of style, Madonna. You don't see Kim Kardashian and them taking all that out of their ass, Madonna? Or is it because you're still screwing Negroes, Madonna, that you thought that that's what he need, Madonna. You know damn well your ass was just on the cane. How you gonna have booty implants and a bad hip at the same time, Madonna? When your hips go out, Madonna, it's time to stop riding D. That's what that means. That's God's way of telling you to lay it down. When you take D, Madonna, take it on your side, Madonna. I know you're trying to keep up with them young men, Madonna, but you just can't do it no more, Madonna. You look a fucking mess. Let's just call it what it is. Your, your booty is sagging much like your face. All right. When we first went through that parallelogram, we still in a parallelogram. She couldn't get her adrenal chrome. Her face was falling apart. She looked at a mess, Madonna. I mean, I mean, your whole life is falling apart at this point. Let's, we ain't even going to talk about the fact that you had a big-ass mansion with rats in it. Golly, Madonna. What's going on with you, Madonna? And so the only script that I can uh, uh, really write you, to be honest... It's for you to go on K. Michelle's new show. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sending you the K. Michelle Killer Special because you purposely bought yourself to try to keep up with something that, that, that apparently it is not meant for you to keep up with no more, Madonna. And let me tell you something, Madonna. Aging gracefully is not going to be in your DNA, ma'am. I don't know if you know this, and I know you is an Italian, and Italians don't like to call themselves white, even though they are white. I don't know what the hell else you are if you are Italian. Let me tell you something, Madonna. You may have black D all up and through inside you and you may go overseas and, and take all they black kids about the villages and shit but i want to let you know it does not matter how many black children you import or how many uh black young men come inside of you uh, i'm here to let you know that you will never have any melanin you will never have the elasticity in your skin to age gracefully you will always look 150 even when you're 72 you will always everything will always fall apart you will inject your cheeks for just for them to fall again you will inject your lips for them to simply deflate because aging gracefully is not in your DNA. It's not in your DNA. And so you got mad at 50 Cent for him making a comment. Did nobody tell your stupid, ignorant ass to go hide half of your body up under the table in a Freemasonic pose with your, with your ant booty bubble butt sticking out? It doesn't look good. You look a mess. You look a clown. You look a fool. And at least when you was young making yourself look a fool, you had a nice top tight hot young body but now you are old and you was crusty and you supposed to be you supposed to be cradling your grandkids right now the, see you it look like you put two toddlers in your booty cheeks and that's why you really hurting anyway i know that wasn't good for your hips but you did it anyway and you're gonna keep drinking that adrenal chrome and hoping that it keeps you alive but i'm gonna let you know though the older you get that booty gonna hit the back of your knees and you really gonna be in the wheelchair somewhere but you just a hoe you is a freak you're gonna be a hoe and a freak to the day you die i know your ass gonna be 95 in the wheelchair drinking a drink got a couple 
of adrenal chrome in one end and a black dick in another. And that's just what it is. But God bless you, Madonna. At least you are consistent. You ain't never changed up. You 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 been a hoe. You was just a young hoe, then a middle aged hoe, and now you just a old hoe. That's it. And that machine that you call a body is falling apart because, like I told you, aging gracefully is not in your DNA. It's just not. Thank you. Thank you guys for the donations. Now listen. Listen, listen. We got 16, 25 people watching. I need to have at least 800 likes. I need to have I need to have at least 800 likes. I need to have at least 800 likes. Come on now. Y'all can do better than that. We got we got 1600 watching. I need 800 likes. Hit the like button. Y'all be trying to hide it, bro. Y'all be trying to not tell people that y'all over here. Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Hit the like button. I'll wait. I got time. I got time. I got time today. Y'all let, let me know. I got my coffee right here. I got my food waiting in the kitchen. I need to have at least 800 likes. We need a 50% like ratio. Come on now. Hit the like. At least I, I, I ain't trying to Kevin Sanders y'all seeing where the money at. Huh? Run it up. Hit the like. It's free. Hit the like. See where we at. Hit the like. Oh, we there. We there. We halfway there. That's all I was asked for. That's all I was asked for. That's it. Riley said, I'm not pregnant by you, Storm. It ain't nobody. It's only, well, only, nah, you ain't, ain't, you ain't pregnant by me. I promise that. Moving right along, we got to talk about Yellow Bone. Yellow Bone is what he want. Wow. Remember that Yellow Bone? Remember that Tweety Bird? I thought you was what he wanted. He called you a side hoe. He called you a side bitch in front of 150,000 people on IG Live. Now, if that's what being a yellow bone get me, I would be a black bone any day. But but the, but the crazy thing was, Danielle Lay, uh, uh, Curiel, the crazy thing about you was you were never yellow. You was a white bone. You was a wonder bread. You was a, con a Spanish conquistador. You was an imposter of the yellow persuasion. That was never you. All of that is bronzer and painted on. That was never you. Come on, yellow bone. You mean white bone is what he had. Golly, Danny. Oh, everything that you didn't said out of your mouth is coming back to bite you. Now, I brought you in my script today not to talk about your baby, but we just gonna talk about your baby. Real quick, nothing bad. You showed and shared a picture of your sweet daughter that you had with the baby. And one thing we learned in this world that the baby got some strong ass genes. Cutie pie baby that you have, but I thought yellow bone is what he wanted, and now you got a brown boned baby. How you gonna explain to your baby that yellow bone is better when she brown bone, Danielle? How you gonna explain to your baby that you thought you was better than you know your baby daddy, first baby mama, because she dark and you light, Danielle? How you gonna explain to her the fact that yellow bone is better? The fact that not only do she got a face color in her own house she gotta face it in her family because your family didn't even like her daddy danielle how you gonna explain to your daughter that you know you can't really she can't really come around your family like that and you gotta you know keep like her grease and oiled and with water in it because you can't let it nap up none at all because you know your family don't like that because they worked so hard to get all of that six percent of african you probably got in you up out of your bloodline danielle how you gonna explain all the looks and the weird uh, uh things she gonna have to go through going around your family danielle how you gonna explain the fact that even when she, you know, you try to tell people that she's Spanish, even though that don't make any sense because you are not a language, you're going you gonna to have an issue with that. Danielle, yellow bone is what he want. And God bless you with a brown baby. See, God don't always give you what you want, honey, but he always gives you what you need. He always does. Anyway, welcome to single motherhood. Like I told you before, uh, not only did you well, fumble your apartment, you kind of fumbled the bag too, but hopefully them child support checks is landing because one thing about you, you will, you is Wonder Bread, you is a Karen, you know, Danielle, you know, you is a Karen, a Danielle, a Patricia, and you would definitely call the police on a nigga quick. You know, when you kept calling him the N-word, Danielle, you ke I kept hearing the E-R. So how you gonna explain to your baby why you using the N-word and you ain't got a lick of melanin in you, except the melanin that came in you and came out of you, Danielle. I'm trying to figure it out. 
I want your image to improve. Prince really believed in you. And you were supposed to be a protege of his. And you are not out here serving him justice. I ain't seen you hit a split. I ain't seen you hit an album. I ain't really seen your talent yet. Because you let your mouth do all the talking. When you should have let the music do the talking. You was too busy riding the baby. And thought you was going to ride his stick into what? Stardom? A you, was, you was never it. And you was never that girl. You didn't have to do all that. You sold your soul for a bag and didn't get nothing out of it, but, you know, a baby. Because if it's one thing a black man will give you, it's a baby. <laughs> you don't have a problem with that. So anyway, with that being said, my script is for you to get into counseling right away so you can learn that you are a colorist. Come to that acceptance. Matter of fact, I'm just going to send you straight to Colorist Anonymous, the same place we tried to send Hazel E and it didn't really work. And she, you know, we I already told you about Hazel Lee. We taking our prayers back. You go back in that surgeon's office, I'm, I'm, I'm requesting a refund on all of my prayers from God in heaven or hell whoever you pray to anyway i want you to read every book on colorism so you know how to raise your daughter to love herself and love herself correctly and who she is in this world and let me put it to you this way danielle everything that your family does when it comes to colorism and racism danielle do the opposite talk all that shit and i got a brown bone baby yourself you just pitiful just pitiful pitiful Mm, 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 mm. How y'all doing tonight? Is this mic on tonight? I only know one of her songs with Chris Brown. Mm. Ugh, you know Prince died in the elevator. You know Jakuma Tati uh, killed him. Y'all already know how that goes. Anyway, moving right along from that, we got to talk about Meg the Stallion and Party allegedly. Now, y'all wanted me to cover this script because allegedly they was broken up or having relationship issues because Megan is a crazy drunk. So I have to diagnose she will be an alcoholic and being physically as well as emotionally abusive to this man when you get drunk. Now, I don't know if y'all thought we forgot about that video that linked online when Meg was in the bathroom with some other woman and Party was bamming on the door and he was, get, go, go, get your ass out of there. And you was that cussing them out. I mean, y'all was giving us a full Whitney and Bobby moment, which I am not surprised about because one thing about it, Meg, you got a lot of anger issues that your ass has not dealt with, which is why you get super aggressive when you get angry, which is why a ninja may feel like he got to shoot you in your pinky toe. I'm just saying, the Della Reese of it all. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm not saying that's what happened. I ain't saying that's right. These are all jokes, but you just, you get the point. Now, I do have to say this too. Just look at this picture right here, right? Look at this picture right here. He's drinking out of a cup, out of her ass. Is this appropriate? You said party bitch shut this down. I know, but we gonna cover it because it was sent. I know we did. We gonna cover it because it was sent. I don't find this appealing. I don't find this um, appropriate of a man that's loving a woman the way she needs to be loved. That's just what I feel. And so, Meg, today your script, like I said, oh, I'm also diagnosing your ass with depression, Meg. That's why your ass is always drinking. So my script is for you two. You are going to Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm putting you guys in couples counseling. And I want you to go away and take a break, Meg. But this time when you take a break, you're going to take a real break. Not a break where you're in a relationship, a break where you are like away from everybody and you're going to deal with the demons that your ass have been facing. And you've been trying to run away from these demons for a couple years now, which is why you continue to drink and drink and drink and drink yourself into oblivion and yet we not really getting a lot of music can i ask y'all something um in 2022 do y'all find these artists to just be like more on the lazy side or is it just me do you find them to be on the lazy side or is it just me because it, it just feels like we don't really get music we don't really get tours we don't really get we don't we don't hardly see them Can, some, can somebody just, can, can somebody tell me that? I feel like when, you know, when Nikki was in the game, she was always working. And it's, I don't feel like they're always working. We getting music, just not good music. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That was a song with Shinsia, and that song was trash. Do you see what I'm saying, Meg? So you had took that break when you were loading your alter ego, Tina Snow, all right? 
But while you was gone for your MK Ultra training, you didn't, you didn't, you weren't, you wouldn't write no raps because you came back to do the song with Shinsia, which is just a great value version of your WAP song with Cardi B. Music is garbage these days. I just, I be damned if I'm dating somebody that writes songs and my shit is that trash. Anyway, you need to take your ass to Alcoholics Anonymous. The streets say you get too drunk and too aggressive, and that's gonna be a problem. That man gonna start cheating on you now. It's cute now, it's sexy now. He's gonna get tired of it one day. I don't care what party come out and say. Of course he's gonna shut it down. Bobby and Whitney shut their shit down a lot. It was still shit going on. Y'all better wake up. Anyway, moving right along, we gotta talk about Sleepy Joe, one of the worst presidents of history. Uh, Sleepy Joe, the man that I do not believe is real, the man that I believe is a reptile, the man that I believe a lot of times when we see him on camera, we are seeing nothing but a CGI simulation. Sleepy Joe, where have you been? Sleepy Joe, why haven't you been really talking to the people and debating with the people? I ain't seen you on shows. I ain't seen you. I ain't really seen you do it. It's just like we elected you and then you went to sleep, Sleepy Joe. Is it because whenever you're asked a question, you can't really remember it, Sleepy Joe? Now, the people that's diagnosing you with, you know, old person's disease, old all Alzheimer's. I can never say that word. My people say old timers. So, you know, they saying you got the old timers because you was there cussing out the correspondent from Fox News on the mic. I guess you forgot that it was hot and we could still hear you. And I don't know how you didn't think we could hear you because the mic was right there. But see, that's how I know you old as hell. And that's how I know you're losing it. Because when old people get old, they just talk their shit right in front of you. They they, they really they really don't care. And so you're at a point where you don't care, CB Joe. But it's, it's obvious, CB Joe, that you've been asleep since you got into the office. And then I started to remember your debates. And then I started to remember this all the presidential debates and you you've been sleeping for a long time i don't think i've ever heard you actually answer a question in a coherent manner somebody always interrupted or you know the lip earpiece in your ears start buzzing and going off and they told you what to say why does it look like your skin can peel off joseph Biden? why does wait, 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 wait. we still we, i still ain't forgot about your that video or your son you know smoking a crack with the 15 year old 15 year old prostitute allegedly giving him the foot job so what why, why, why we not gonna talk about that did everybody they forget that allegedly joseph biden i'm just saying you got a lot of explaining to do so you got a lot of explaining to do and where is kamala where is copacabana casablanca kamala harris we ain't really heard from her either all she did was come on tv to shake her finger at charlemagne why does everybody fuss at Char everybody fuss at charlemagne charlemagne ain't no damn body and he don't represent the black community i felt the same way about hillary and her lesbian ass when she went on the breakfast club taking hot sauce out her bag appealing to you negroes you racist cunt So y'all said Storm, Joseph, Joe Biden, he got a sleepy person. He got that old timers. Yes. You keep missing. He's not real. This is a reptilian, an amphibian, whatever you want to call him. He might be part alien. That man ain't there. Okay, what y'all say? The facial features look different than everything. I don't, I don't believe you're there like that. I don't believe you're there, and I don't believe he's actually there. I don't believe it. So I'm writing you a script to reveal your true self. I'm going to take your MK Ultra chip out, plug it into my computer so we can get a breakdown of what damn programming do they have you on. Never have I ever seen a president get elected and then just go to sleep. Wake up. But you ain't really sleep. It's the American people that sleep. Mm -hmm. It's the American people that sleep. Hell, you forgot you were supposed to cancel student loan debt. Joe Biden, what, what happened to that, huh? Hmm? You only canceled it for people that went to the Sanford Browns and the 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 the, the predatory ass schools. What about everybody else? I thought you wanted to help the economy, Joe. You are a letdown. I dare not call you sir because you're not a human being. What happened to reparations? Why don't nobody want to discuss reparations? You don't want to get the colors, they money, huh? But we had billions of dollars in a Marignan relief fund to send out. That, that was the reparations. We need to just stop asking for it. Every time we ask for it, they take the money and spend it on something else. What's the problem? 
Or can we just come to the conclusion that Sleepy Joe ain't no different than Trump, ain't no different than any president we have, any Republican or any Democrat. They are two sides of the same demonic coin. One side is red and one side is blue. And if you know anything about Freemasonry, red and blues are very critical colors. Oh my God, red and blue is what? In the flag. And ooh, it's even in this picture. Hmm. Yeah, he got old time with disease because he ain't real. <sighs> uh, hey, I went to Sanford Brown and paid full out. Probably, yeah, but a lot of them people that went to Sanford Brown, they did get they did get that shit forgiven because that Sanford Brown they had good programs, but it was always ratchet people I knew that went to Sanford Brown anyway. Wasn't even taking their education seriously at all. Now let's move on here, people. A Vir a Virgo said, fact storm from an Eastern star. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Give me my three acres and a mule. Listen. Next, we got to talk about Kanye West. Kanye West, you are being brought into my office, not only because you refuse to take your crazy pills, but the people believe that you are losing it more and more by the day. You are, <laughs> they say you is a stalker. You scaring the hell out of Kim. You're spreading rumors about Pete. Long, heavy meat, Pete, and that's why you really mad because you didn't think somebody could out meet you, and you shouldn't even be concerned with that man's meat like that because you don't want that roast beef, that saggy, uh, tied used roast beef with high mileage on it that Kim got. Now, Kim didn't replace everything else on her body. Y'all think she got the same coochie, or did she trade that in? I don't even think you could trade that in because Kim's coochie is so damn used. Like, what lot is she gonna trade that in? Like, who wants a coochie after it's been beat in and used and came in by so many? Negroes, but anyway, I, I just feel like that's a throwaway. Like I feel like her coochie was a savage coochie. You just gotta go to the, you just gotta go to the junkyard. You just gotta, you gotta demolish it. You gotta burn it. You gotta destroy it. Maybe put it in a jar and some vinegar, let it tighten up, and maybe we'll try it again in a hundred years. I don't know, but anyway, Kanye. But the main reason why. They said you went to my office today. It's because they said you wearing the same outfit in every interview. They said you went changing your clothes from day to day, Kanye. They said why he always in black doctor, celebrity doctor, what's going on? I done seen him in four or five different interviews and he in the same shirt, same big old jacket, same pants, and same oversized boots thinking he look good and he look a hot mess. And so listen, Kanye, I mean, it's very easy for me to, to, to tell the people what is going on with you. You are simply insecure with your body body that's it you're going through a little body dysmorphic disorder you think you're bigger than what you is i mean you is built like well you, you is built like somebody that's in their fifth trimester but that ain't the point you go you got the saggy old man body and you got the failed lipo and you run around her sweating and all this black all up and through california because you were trying to hide your body that's it that's it we already we already know so i don't know why y'all had to bring this into the doctor because this is very easy i don't care and listen it was the same when they got in the got in the water with the t-shirt looking a mess i mean you just you had you had to know kim was gonna get tired of the, the fat saggy old man on top of her you had you had to know that come on kanye how you get lipo in game no way i will just never understand but that ain't the point and this ain't about you wearing black every day you know you is good for some homeless fashion i will give you that well let me give you this before i give you that your shoes are ugly I don't know who buying these Yeezys. I, I, I mean, I know who buying them. I see them out in the streets. But can we just admit that his clothes and shoes are absolutely deplorable? Your fashion sense is much like your music sense. You just take some shit and recycle it, put your name on it, and that's why it's always a hit. Much like your music. All your beats is from the 40s and 50s. It was already a hit, which is why it's a hit now. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. And so you then you want to get online in the same outfit and say, why they ain't giving the address to my baby party? They said your clothes thing. All the kids they ain't want to be nowhere near you because you ain't washed them clothes. It's the same outfit. Oh, yay. Sorry. Yay. Yay. Sorry. Sorry. That ain't your name no more. Nah, it's yay. 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 No. You dating this white girl, Julia, who used to date Drake. Can we just talk about how you have an obsession with Drake? That's what you need to be in my office for. You have an, uh, an addiction and an obsession with Drake. Why do all the dark-skinned dudes in the industry have this obsession with Drake? It's giving me Aaliyah vibes. 
Because y'all was all crazy about Aaliyah. Hmm? 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 Is Drake going to be us? Nah, Drake too high up to be a sacrifice. Is Drake a beta sex kitten in the industry? I'm trying to figure it out because they are all so obsessed and jealous of Drake. I'm just saying. It's like all the tops are fighting over the one bottom in the room. I want to know. Do y'all get it? Why is everybody so obsessed with Drake? He even got Drake's leftovers. Did she still smell like Drake when you got up inside her? Did she still taste like Drake? Did you tell him when she left Drake's house? She said, don't look, don't, don't brush your teeth. Don't gargle. I want to taste Drake. I want to taste him. Is that what it was? Let me hear about you put some hot sauce and some condoms, Kanye. Then I'm going to really know that you copying Drake. Let me see you try to dance, Kanye. Then I'm going to really know that you copy, copying Drake. Y'all beat up on Drake so much over the years and pissed on him too. He gave that bonky to who he want to get that bonky to. He ain't got to get that bonky to you. Anyway, what is your script? We're going to put you on a parenting plan with Kimberly Noel Kardashian West because I don't know last time you checked you is a Negro and she can cry into any court and get your kids permanently taken from you. You are going to sell that house that is right across the street from Kimberly and you're going to get another house in a neighborhood that's next to the neighborhood so that you can still take your kids to school and be around the corner but not literally be across the street. Kim does not want to be taking D from Long Meat Pete in that museum, that cold ass, still ass, emotionalist ass house that she calls a home, all right? And she don't have to worry about you having a damn uh, uh, fucking binoculars all up in her shit. All right. Let's talk about the sex tape. Part two of the sex tape that you went and grabbed for Kim. Because she was crying. Why did you lie, Kanye? It wasn't nothing on that tape. Wasn't nothing on that second tape. First off, Kim, why is you still crying? We have seen every single one of your holes get plowed out. There is nothing left of the imagination. There is nothing left to cry about. You sold your soul for fame? Own it and stand in it. All right? You showed them titties in Playboy. You showed them titties multiple times. You ain't got a problem with being naked. Why you care about Ray J backing, uh, breaking your back? Time about y'all all got kids. Y'all are whores and your kids are going to figure it out. But they'll grow up in Hollywood and you'll teach them the same values. Oh, Kanye, is you really breaking down because you wish you would have got a woman with values? That was Alexis Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are you mad because Kim Kardashian didn't have values and she lets North wear lipstick and makeup and you you afraid that she's going to groom her like Chris groomed Kim? Hmm? Too late! This is what you wanted. And you got the biracial children that you wanted to keep it real, keep it funky. So what is you complaining about? Take everything that go with it. You don't run shit over there. They don't respect you and you was good for nothing, but you're nut to that family, your energy. That's it. They don't like you, don't respect you and don't like it. Ain't, ain't, ain't going to really like nothing that came from you, especially if it's a male child. Mm hmm. I had no damn sympathy for you. On those overpriced ass clothes that you call fashion. Anyway, change your outfit. They said you stinking. At least wash it first. At least wash it. <sighs> anyway. Mm -mm -mm. Kimberly! All right, y'all ready for the... <laughs> let, me, let me check on y'all really quick. I've been going in for 36 minutes here. Let me let me check on y'all here in the chat. We gotta y'all wanted me to talk about fresh and fit. We'll talk about fresh and fit, cause I just really don't care about these people, but we'll talk about them. Uh let's see. Leave Kanye alone. Uh remind them storm. Twink and bear, frog and fish. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not the nicknames. Dust buckets. Oh my god. Dumb and dumber. Oh God, let's let's just talk about it. I don't even want to give a script. I just want to have a conversation. All right. 
So we are bringing Fresh and Fit into the office. Myron on the left, and I think the other one's name is Walter, but Myron's real name is like Omaru, but he had, you know, he had to change that because, you know, he, he didn't, you know, he got tired of his white friends and the white boys at the fraternity, you know, every time they saw him and assuming that he was going to have a bomb attached to his chest. And so he just, he didn't want to do that. Now, first things first, I got to say, before we get into these pictures that y'all want me to talk about, I'm trying to figure out, Myron, why is your skin tone significantly different? Was this just the summertime when you was hugged up with Chad in the bed or or did you bleach your skin? You know, you did strike me as one of those, you know, you know, as a darker Arab, as a dark Arab. And so, you know, you was bullied all your life over there in your own country, within your own religion and within your own people, because they don't even really acknowledge the dark Muslims. They only really acknowledge the light and the light brown ones. Keep it funky. Keep it funky. So much like you intimidate and put down women, it's easy for you because you've been put down all your life for the color that you came out of your mama's coochie with. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. This ain't significantly lighter now. I don't know. You you look more like the the dude on the right school. But let's let's just talk about it. Fresh and fit. Now they're in the manosphere. That I, I guess you can consider that the red pill community. I don't really know what you would call it. Um, what is red pill? It's just supposed to be about men teaching men about women's nature, right? Not to change it, but to learn how to navigate it. But it quickly turned into just a bunch of, well, you can say beta incels, beta cucks that are just angry because women don't want to talk to them. Can we keep it funky? That whole sector is filled with like 3% of like actual decent information and the rest is just fan bases of men who hate women that just want to pay for men to talk shit about women. And if it pays the bills, it pays the bills. But the show is not that good. The podcast has no beginning, middle, and end, or not that much of a plot at all. It's it's another version of a Jerry Springer show. Every show, you get the same thing. You put a bunch of holes in a room. You know, these holes are ratchet. They gonna clown. You kick them out. You get Super Chats. You get Patreon. Sometimes you get shot up because y'all ain't really about that life. Sometimes I been preach you on a box and you get scared because y'all not really about that life. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I ain't about that life. That's why I tell you, I get in my white chair, I talk my ish, and I take my lab coat off and I go about my business. Because <laughs> I ain't fighting none of y'all. I'm going I'm to be like, Tommy, run you bitches down with the car. Because I'm just not. I'm just not. Stay away from me. I don't like you hoes. Anyway, <laughs> so let's talk. Let's have an honest conversation. Black women, stop giving it. Idi- stop giving idiots like this attention. I want y'all to know when y'all thought you was dragging them online, y'all did nothing but elevate them more. Their fan base is men. They don't give a damn about being dragged on the shade room. That just gave them more exposure. Ladies, I also need y'all to wake up and realize that in this world, the majority of men hate y'all. Or got some sort of animosity towards you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. I'm sorry. Majority of the men walking around have animosity and harbor animosity towards women. And it ain't necessarily your fault. It's usually, you know, the the one before you that messed them up or or they mammies, right? Because a lot of them got narcissistic mothers. And we know narcissistic, narcissistic mother create men that are sociopaths and like kill cats and shit. (laughs) <laughs> and they beat women too. Anyway, so back to the point, back to the point. So I say all of that to say that nothing that they say should be taken seriously. This is all for entertainment purposes only, including the men that watch them, right? I know men don't watch me like that, so they ain't gonna see this, but don't take this shit seriously. Maybe 5% of what they're saying is actually true. The rest is just entertainment because they are not even living what they're preaching. Anytime somebody got to tell you they're alpha, baby, they're not alpha. Alpha is not something you tell people. It's what the world acknowledges you as. And, and, and second off, only 5% of this world is actually alpha anyway. So all these all these people running around here talking about, I'm alpha, I'm alpha. No, you may have alpha traits. You may be alpha leading, but only 5% of the population are true alphas, and most of those are white. Because it's funny to me how Myron, you talk all that shit about the blacks. But you submit 
to white daddy. You submit to Chad. That's what that, that's not very alpha like. Chad laying right on your chest like I just got through smashing. And Brand is over there on the other side of the bed. Three, this is a sausage fest. Bitch, this is Andrew Gillum. Without the poppers, without the meth, and without that green vomit on the side. And runny diarrhea on the other side. I know the I know the pick is a joke, but we gonna talk about it. If they talk they ish, they gotta get talked about too. It is what it is. Now, let's just talk about them as a podcast. I just want to talk to y'all about this because I just can't believe that sisters care this much about what these two think. First off, the one on the right, the sh- the the ugly one. You may think they're both ugly, but the ugliest one. Is that that's fresh, because he ain't all that fit to me. That's fresh then. All right, so the short, stocky one claims to have been with a thousand women. A thousand women. Do y'all believe that the man on the right has smashed a thousand women in his lifetime? I, I wait, who believes it? Who believes it? Who believes it? We're going to break this down tonight. Who believes it? Who believes it? Who believes it? The lies. Ran through the ugliest one. Thank you. The one that looks like a frog. Thank you. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Let's talk about it. The one on the right claims that he has been with a thousand women because he is from the Bahamas or the Barbados, one of those islands in the Caribbean, and that white women from Europe and, and Canada and wherever the hell used to come down to his home country all the time and they wanted to sleep with a poor black negro they wanted a black bull black cock and so he was that black cock to over a thousand women that's what he claims that's what he claims because they said they don't they don't they don't they don't like black women they don't like sisters who asked y'all who who really asked y'all who asked y'all let me say this before i say that have y'all not realized that y'all as black women are the blueprint to success? Well, pretty much in any industry, but definitely in entertainment and definitely on YouTube. Whether you're pro-black women or you drag black women, you will make money. Have y'all not figured that out yet? Have, have, have y'all not figured that out? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Y'all are the blueprint. So why are y'all giving them attention? Why are y'all going on these shows? Why are y'all even sharing this shit? Why? Without y'all, they don't have a storyline. Why would Asian Doll even go on their show to get disrespected? Why do you call into shows to get dragged? I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. Let me ask you something. This guy on the right, does he give you black bull energy? No, no. Maybe reverse Coco. That is it. But this ain't about him. This is about my rent on the side. And so between this picture here, all right, and this picture here, we don't know which is worse. We just don't know which is worse. But it doesn't seem very alpha-like. It doesn't, it just... What, what do y'all want me to say? Yes, this ish could be a joke. And yes, this is how white boys act. You around a group of white boys, they engage in homoerotic behavior. We're going to tell the truth and shame the devil. That's what they do. That's how white boys play. I'm going to let y'all know. I told y'all the story of walking in the room. And balls were slapping against one another. They were fighting each other with their balls. That's what they. I know. I know y'all. I know the women like what? I don't get. I told y'all about my other fraternity brother that would come in girls and suck it out. It's called felching. He was sucked to come out and swallow. Why ass did he swallow? And I was told, of course he swallows. What is he gonna do? My bad. I don't ever do no shit like that. My bad. It ain't my thing. Okay. So none of this should surprise you. None of this at all. 
But it's just funny to me how Fresh and Fit can talk about Night Riders, even though if you guys had actually read, you know, and uh, were actually intelligent and not just repeating talking points of other people, you would know that Night Riders were those are those actually describing like you know white women that sleep with black men. So that would be more of a reference to you, not the women. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it'd be more of a reference to you. But if we're gonna talk about Night Riders and Shaquitas, can we can we talk about the Omarus and the Abduls and the Can we talk about that? Fit? Can we talk about the fact that you know you you don't even use your given name because you got tired of being called a terrorist? Can we talk about the fact that you you might have bleached your skin? Cause I'm seeing I got a dark skin friend look like Michael Jackson, got a light skin friend look like Michael Jackson. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because you didn't even fit in in your own community. And so you simply took the vitriol from your own Arab slash Muslim community because they do not accept the dark ones. And you just put that shit back on black folks. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And you talk your shit with a, with a big ass bald spot in the back of your head and a light shining bright on it. Listen, I ain't a hater. I don't really care. But <laughs> are y'all surprised? Yo, y'all surprised. Now, I'm going to be fair. Ladies, I want you to tell me, do, because we already know the other one's ugly. And I don't believe he's been with a thousand women. Because, oh, wait, wait a minute, Fresh, didn't that white girl embarrass you on your own show when you tried to kiss her? And she, she, you know, she said, you you know, that cash app didn't clear, nigga. Huh? Ain't you the one that claimed, you know, uh, uh, paying for women is beta and you've been paid for a whole bunch and she's a sugar baby and this, that, and a third because there is no way... That, you know, an attractive white girl would ever be seen dead with you. <laughs> Not even in her casket is you going to be anywhere near her. Now, you might get one out of the trailer park with four stomachs and three necks. But that's that's going to be about it. And even the one with four stomachs, three necks, and cankles is still going to think that she is at least three to four levels above you. And if you get out of line, her brothers will hang you. Now, Fresh put aside because he's very spoiled. I want to put a decent picture of fit up because this is why they call them fit. So, ladies, do you find, do ladies, would you, I'm just asking the ladies in the chat, is this, do you want this? Would this be your kind of guy? Is this a good representation of alpha, uh, of an alpha male that you guys want? No hateration, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Y'all let me know, and then we can move on. I had to show, I wanted to show, he's fit. I wanted to show you a fit picture. Do you want him? No. Everybody's saying no. Hell no. No. Everybody's saying no. I'm good, love. They said Squidward. Damn. Everybody's saying no. They said the face messed up. Wow. Well, damn. Well, he says sisters ain't his thing, and apparently you not there. So that's it. They can get out, they can get out the office. This shit is going to fall apart. And I'm going to let you know. Something is, they have a weird relationship. I'm not insinuating no homosexual shit. I'm not. I'm being serious right now. They're going to break up as hosts, as co-hosts. They're going to break up because really their show is the one on the left talking and the right just agreeing with everything that the one on the left say. The one on the right doesn't really add anything. And he ain't the best representation of Fresh. It's given very spoiled. At least the one on the left is somewhat fit. I'm just saying. Something's going to happen and they're going to have a big blow up. I'm waiting for it, though. But anyway, we're going to move on. We're going to move along. Everybody said no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Everybody said no. Wow, hell no. Damn. Thank y'all for the donations. Basically, only thing I can tell y'all is stop looking for validation. Why is Fresh called Fresh? I, I don't know. All right, let's move right along and talk about Christopher Maurice Brown. He's being accused of uh, R. Kelly and a chick, a girl that's 20 years old. So let me let me set the story of what happened. So what had happened is that this girl who, this grown, this young woman who is being known as Jane Doe, it wants to be a singer and a songwriter. She wants to get into the industry. And so she connected with Chris. And then Chris invited her on a yacht with him and Diddy. Now, I want to ask y'all something. We're not victim shaming. We're talking because the doctor is in and the doctor's going to ask. I got to ask these questions if he wants your script. 
Ladies, if you go on a yacht with Chris and Diddy, what you expect? I'm asking, what do you expect to go down? I'm just asking. What kind of party is a Chris Brown and Diddy party? Because they both wild. So what kind of party is a Chris Brown party? I'm asking. I'm just asking. I'm asking. What kind of party is that between take that, take that, and stomp a hoe out brown? And so she get, wait, 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 see ladies, this is when you glad you not, you know, you not an exotical because this is, it's exoticals only for Chris. No nappy heads, no dark skin. That's what he said. But we're going to say thank you because, well, hell, let them exoticals take the mask open in. Shit. All right. This ain't all that much of a prize. Let's get to it. So she comes on the yacht. If she thinks she's there to discuss her career and to uh, get in his camp and write songs and this and that, and he gives her a drink right away as soon as she gets there. Now, I know we was all told don't never take a drink that you didn't see get poured, but she drank the first drink and she was fine. So they kept talking and talking about the industry and he's giving her advice and then she goes to pour a second drink herself. But as she's pouring the second drink, she starts to get unconscious and fuzzy. This this same story is very, very familiar. All right? And as she gets fuzzy, Chris Brown backflips, throws her over his shoulders. And she started to wake up a little bit because his shoulders are very bony. And so she's like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Ain't no meat on him. Okay, cool. So then he takes her into a room. And as she's in and out of consciousness, he R-words her. He has sex with her because she could not consent. He did it raw. And then he came inside of her. Didn't, did I, did, did the doctor or did the doctor not tell y'all that that's how they get down in the industry? And that don't nobody use protection. They, they pretty much all go raw and share the same everything. And that's why everybody in the industry got everything. I'm just saying. Calls her the next day. Tells her, did you take that plan B? Go take that plan B. Like I told you to. She go to the store. She take it. But then she goes and meets up with him two more times. And each time she met up with him, he didn't want to talk about her career. He wanted to go straight to the bed. And then when she wouldn't do it, he got very irate. And she thought he was finna karate chop her like he did Kawasaki. So listen, I want y'all to ask, I want y'all to tell me. If he R word you the first day, would you go back to his house? And I'm just asking. And I'm saying, I'm not saying I don't believe her, but I'm just asking. Like plan B can cure the diseases. That's how they roll. They don't care about no diseases. I told y'all that. They do not care about that. Why y'all, man, listen. She went back. Yes, she went back. They met up again. Allegedly. Allegedly. I'm just telling the story that's already out there. They said no for pay only. Well, listen. She is now suing him for $20 million. She's not pursuing criminal charges, but she <clears throat> but she wants $20 million. And if he did this, hey, he got to he gotta pay. And that's wrong. But what's more important is we got to write a script. For everybody that's think, that thinks they're going to go around these industry men and that these men is actually trying to do business with you. I'm writing a script because y'all all need to be sent to some kind of training to learn how to navigate the entertainment industry. Because I'm going to let you know something. When you're talking business, it's not in the back of a yacht. It's not at a party with Chris and Diddy. It's not in a hotel room with Weinstein. It's not at Bill Cosby's house at 2 in the morning. Allegedly. With a comedian, another comedian and his wife. I, I, I told y'all that story a couple times. It's not in a bedroom. It's not on the massage table. It's not none of that. There was never a business meeting, ma'am. I'm sure you have figured that out by now. There was never a business meeting. This is how they get their... Um, the flavor of the day. That's how they get their flavor of the day. That's how they collect them. Damn, they're trafficking. I'm just saying.
But this is how they do it. All right? This is how. Oh, you want to sing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, come meet us at the party. Uh, come meet us at midnight. What? What kind of bit? Ain't nothing open after 11 but legs. Ain't no business being done. Let's keep it real. But the young girl was naive and got caught up and learned a lesson very early. The more I think about it, pretty much all these young girls that go into this industry get our word pretty much from the beginning. Which then makes you think, why does anybody want to be a part of an industry that does that? I'm just saying, just saying. You gotta move, you gotta move correctly. You gotta move and move correctly. Especially when you're a woman. Oh, no, 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 when you're a man too, because they do the very same thing to men. Mm-hmm. They befriend you and you go to those parties, you in the studios late at night. It ain't always bitches in there. It's ninjas. It's ninjas. And you smoking, drinking, smoking, drinking, loopy, out of it. Before you know it, you getting done from the back and the front. And y'all think I'm kidding. No, this is common. This is very common. And it don't matter the age. 13, 23, 33, whatever. It's always recorded. And you told if you tell, this tape gonna get out. And so as a man, you, you're embarrassed about this. So you just never say anything. And then you do it to the next up and coming. Come on now, y'all see it? Y'all think it's a reason why these people come in the industry bright-eyed and with the soul and they leave it fleeing straight to the Lord? Because they've seen Satan and they felt Satan and some of them screwed Satan. Just ask Cassie. None of this is a surprise. Now, we could write a script for Chris to go to rehab. We could write a script and throw him in prison for allegedly what happened we can write him a script if we can do whatever we want chris is not gonna change diddy is not gonna change but you know what can change the women in the holes that go around them stay way around there from them we know what they about these celebrities is not your friend i don't care if they get in your dms i don't care if they show your videos i don't care if they feature on your songs the day is not your friends they want to smash, whether you male or female. And a lot of these bloggers the same way too, but y'all ain't heard that from me. Anyway. We're going to write him a script for a court date, and we definitely going to do a lot of text and tests on him because we need to see if this went down or not. He didn't have too many weird stories like this between his yacht story and the story about the girl uh, they had to eat the bloody vagina in the locked room while him and his boy was digging girls out with the porn going on on the big screen. It's too much going on. It's too much. It's too much. We need a lot of text and tests ASAP. ASAP. It's a large portion of men. Yeah. Alicia said she lost me after she went back. She went back. I have to tell the whole story. Trey Songz, another one. Allegedly. Pete on the girl. Like, what the hell? All right. We got to talk about Wendy real, real quick. All right. Now, first off, this is one of the prettiest pictures of Wendy that I have ever seen, I think. I am, like, highly impressed. Damn, why is it so damn dark and it's only 6.30? Anyway, okay. Focus. It's a very pretty picture of Wendy. Um, wow. Man, Wendy, you could get it. Between this and that shaved cat you got, you can get it. They say your skin look nice and supple. DJ Booth said up under that robe, the, the, the skin looked it good. And the kitty was bald. Anyway, we need to talk about the fact that Wendy Williams uh, will not be returning to her show and what are her next steps. Well, the doctor is writing her a script for her to move out of the country, get a bungalow somewhere, and to leave entertainment. But Wendy's not going to do that because Wendy will not go down without a fight. Wendy doesn't really want to tackle her drug addiction. Wendy doesn't want to really tackle her mental health issues. Wendy does not want to get a toxicology report and see if maybe or maybe not she's been drugged for the last 20 years because I think something kept her out of her mind for 20 years. That's just what I think. That's my opinion. I'm just saying, Wendy, go get tested. Go get checked out. Make sure. Hmm? Hmm? For 20 years, you didn't even leave your damn room. You went to work, went to your room, went to work, went to your room. You wasn't nothing but an MK Ultra slave your damn self while your husband and the whole down the street enjoyed your money. If anything, walk down the street, whoop that whole ass. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. You have to see. If you just spend my money, you got to see me. 
That's just how I feel. But let's talk about something else. Allegedly, and we're going to move on. From what I heard, Wendy planning a suit. <gasps> Allegedly, I read she was planning a suit. And sue somebody that's been leaking our information. Wendy, how you doing? Who are you finna sue, Wendy? You finna put yourself through the stress of suing somebody and going through trial, allegedly? You thinking about it? Because, you know, if you start suing people, Wendy, you know, people can come back and sue you for all that alleged sexual harassment when you were showing that shaved kitty and that pretty skin around that studio. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Who you... I'm just saying, did y'all know that? I ain't read that. She was planning on suing somebody. I miss her too. But damn. Sue who? Think about it. I said, I, that's what I read. The doctor's just reporting. She's going to sue somebody that's been leaking her information. So we don't look like this Wendy saga is over. Wendy, I, I'm trying to write her a script to go retire and settle down somewhere and enjoy the rest of her life. But she is not through with us yet. Whether she co-hosting that chair or not, you are going to be talking about Wendy and you are going to see Wendy. I just wanted to let y'all know. Just wanted to let you know she's coming to sue. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's going to be a shit show. Now, Damn, Chloe, I don't even have your, damn, I got these out of order, but that's okay, we're going to talk, we're going to talk, oh, oh, I want a bread song, all right, let's get to it, we got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news, we got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news, that stale ass news, low self esteem ass news, chop your head off news, new bitch every day ass news, no good ninja ass news. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news. And I held that note. Once again, <laughs> I feel like we talk about Chloe. And Tristan, every week, every week, we writing a script for y'all. Anyway, Chloe has decided that she is no longer sticking by her man and has banned him from her Los Angeles home because he was seen with chicks in his lap. He was seen doing what he's been doing since you met him, Chloe. See, Chloe, there is no script I can write you to fix you or even to help you because you have refused all of the help and the advice of the doctor so we can simply do nothing at this point but just continue to drag you because apparently you like being abused now i could talk about you and your chicken claws that you call hands because you know as much as you can change your face and stiffen that face up you know you can't do nothing about your hands you know the hands and that neck will surely age and you're looking 53 by the hands and you're looking, you're looking like another hoe by the face. I'm just saying, we don't know sometimes, some days if you're J-Lo, well, you ain't never J-Lo, but we don't know if you're, you know, a mix of Denise Richards or the old Chloe, new Chloe. We don't know to call you Karen Chloe. We don't know. You know, sometimes you try to be Chloesha with the braids and it doesn't work because, you know, you know, if you know, no braids don't work for you, period. Your head too big. The, big, the, the back of your head too big. Your, your head big like your daddy, your real daddy. Keep it real. Keep it real. You remember that episode of the Kardashians, Chloe? You went over there to Armenia, didn't look nothing like them people. Kim and Courtney looked just like them people. You didn't look nothing like them people. And they tried to dress you like a princess and the crown they were trying to put around your head didn't fit. And you said, well, yeah, I have a big head. And she said, uh, yeah, like one of those Slavic Russians, like, you know, your true ancestry. You know, I do want to run an uh, Ancestry DNA test by you. You're going to take it in front of me, and I'm going to send in the results. We're not going to do none of that shit now where you testing your mammy. And we, we know that's your mammy. We know you came out of your mammy. We're trying to see who the pap is. So, spit in this tube for me. Matter of fact, uh, you done changed your hair so much. You get, uh, give me some of them pubes. I'm going to put that pubes in them tubes. I don't even know if that's actually the, your spit at this point because it damn sure ain't the same hair from 2012. Now. The more and more time goes on, the less and less pity that I have for you and the less and less I want to be nice to you, Chloe, because you keep doing the same ninja and expecting different results. You keep getting cheated on and, and you're not even realizing that you are receiving nothing but your karmic debt for all of the ninjas that you slept 
with before, right? Because those ninjas that you were sleeping with before had girlfriends. And you just, you know, you just went ahead and slept with them anyway because you felt like you could. Because you felt like you was better. Because, you know, you was white. That's how you felt. That's how you felt. And that's okay. We didn't even want to talk about the fact that you used to be a drunken DUI mess, driving drunk, got Chloe, uh, uh, not Chloe Khadijah, Malika on chains and acting like you're Megan Goods, Pam. It was just, you, you, you have truly come a long way just to go back into shit, Chloe. We like you, Chloe, but you know we're going to drag you forever until you get it together. You ain't tired of all these scars up and down, your elbows and your knees. I was you like being dragged by the hands. You didn't try to show them. Now, why did your hands look like chicken feet? Your hands look like chicken feet because you Photoshop every picture. And this time you Photoshopped it to failure. You yelled at your grandmammy when she shared a real picture of you without all that Photoshop where you actually looked at decent. Meanwhile, we still have the internet and got a thousand pictures of you when you was 400 pounds with three necks. And no extensions and a bad dye job because you, you, you were never meant for your hair to be dark. Just saying. Chloe, we remember, we have eyes, and we have a memory that works. We Look, you may chop off your head, but we ain't chopped off ours. We still got our same original head, Chloe. Just saying. Tristan gonna be what he is. He gonna continue to make these uh, 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 white women single mothers until he run out of money and he broke, and they'll be throwing him in jail in 15 to 20 years as well. Just wait about it. Whoever is the Dr. Phil of the generation in about 15 to 20 years, you're gonna see an episode with Tristan and all these illegitimate children in a circle around him, just like they did Terrell Owens, talking about why you ain't never claimed me, Daddy, why you didn't never love my mama, why you didn't never come by. I'm just saying, he is no different than any Negro. So we ain't gotta talk about him. He's gonna do what he do. As long as he got a dick that work, he gonna do what he do. And the hoes gonna keep spreading. Because if you can get a, a kid out of him and get 40k a month, I'm just saying. I know some of y'all don't want no more kids, but a baby, a 40k a month for a baby, it might be worth it. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyway, but we gonna get back on Chloe. We gonna get back on your ass. That ass that I see you trying to suck out a little bit more and more. But I'm here to let you know, ain't no white man gonna want you if you keep letting this Negro stomp all over you. But you already got a Negro child, so at this point, you stuck with the Negroes forever. But apparently, you like you like unavailable men. You like fighting for attention. You like it, and I feel like it's because you've been fighting for attention your whole life. Your whole life, you've been fighting to be seen, and you ain't got all that plastic surgery. You did all, then then then, then starved yourself to finally look good. And I'm here to let you. Know your head is too big for your body right now, Mark. You might want to put on a little muscle mass, and the ass don't even match the thighs. It's, it's it's not looking good. But that ain't the point. The point is, you did all this to your outside, but your inside is still shook. Your inside is still lackluster. Your inside is still hurt. You have not healed, darling. And that's why, no matter what you do to your face, you keep you, you keep giving your heart to and your body to men like this. Why can't you let him go? Let him go, Chloe. We would rather see you back with Lamar, but you know what? I ain't even asking you to go backwards i just want you to go forwards i just want you to try you know being single i want you to give your box a break and let it let that engine let the smoke off of it cool off chloe chloe i know you want multiple kids i know you're gonna use a black woman's uterus to do it you know go ahead and get his nut for the second kid he don't mind giving his nut away but there's always no one understand that this dude that is like 10 years younger than you was never gonna be faithful to you ever this is not a man that can lead you. This is not a man that can lead the home. This is not, what, what are you looking for? Because he ain't it. Love ain't there. Convenience and notoriety is there for him, but not love. Love is there for you. You love that ninja. He don't love you. And the man should always love you a little bit more. Your damn mammy ain't never taught you that. Or did she just tell you to sell yourself for money and sell your, including your soul? Which is it? Now, day after day, you posting memes and trying to make them jealous with a Photoshop picture. He don't care, and we don't neither. Y'all both are a hot fucking mess. Grow up. He's never going to stop cheating. Let him cheat in peace and deal with the messed up pH balance into your older years. Or let him go and move on and mean it. You got one more time to let him in that house, Chloe, and we not, we not going to give a damn. You got, you got one more time. One more time. Do y'all feel what I'm saying? Do y'all feel, do y'all understand where I'm coming from with that? 
He for the streets. Yes, he is. Anyway, two clowns. Now, we got to talk about Nick Cannon once again. I am officially diagnosing him with a sex addiction as well as low self-esteem. Um, because Nick Cannon is expecting his eighth child. Now, the person he's expecting another child with is not important. Uh, just know she ain't black. She's an exotical. Uh, <laughs> boy, you pro-blacks don't like making black children. Jake, Jake. <laughs> Dude, these pro-blacks turban wearing uh, uh, bl uh, black J black Hebrew. They don't black. They they don't they don't want to make none black. All mixed it. Is, is that is mixed the new black? Did I miss something? Am I about to be replaced? Let me know. I thought pro blacks had black children with like one woman and created an empire, right? An empire. It's with one woman or all of your women in the same household. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, ain't gonna be damn. Ain't gonna be no inheritance for these babies. They're gonna be splitting this shit 15 ways. When your ass dies, it's gonna be this is the will of Nicholas Cannon. Split upon 20 children. Like, how do you split money between 20 children? Come on, Nick. Nicholas. I thought your counselor told you to say celibate for a year. Sir, you got another one pregnant. It has, you have not been listening. That's not what celibacy means. And please don't tell me that now you a Christian and this is the Virgin Mary because we're not gonna believe it is either. We didn't believe none of the roles that you played. Nicholas. Yo, ass, see, you was celibate again, but then you showed that weapon of mass destruction on TV, live on air. And ever since you got recognized for that weapon of mass destruction, your ass been clowning. That's what it was. You you read them Twitter comments about your weapon of mass destruction, and now you out here uh, uh, landing and blowing out missiles again. Nicholas, I'm writing you a script to chemically temporarily castrate you for one year i don't i don't care if that's not how it actually works but we are putting your genitals on ice for about a year you may feel attraction to women but it will be limp and useless and the weapon of mass destruction will be put in a parking garage for 12 calendar months after that we can rearrange and rediscuss letting it back out when you learn how to use it responsibly sorry it's just ridiculous just ridiculous you need a break you need a break. Whatever you running from, you ain't gonna find it in the back of a woman's vagina, Nicholas. <sighs> Golly. What y'all think? Y'all happy for Nick and a fourth baby? Nick needs to be fixed. No, I wanna put it on ice. I just wanna put I don't even want him using it for a year. He needs to go without sex for a while. He needs to go without sex for a while. Pro-black means pro-black men, not women. Oh, school me. I didn't know. I don't call myself pro-black. I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. I don't call myself. I don't, I don't even know. Y'all know I'm pro-me. So, vasectomy? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're going to put it up for a year. It's getting locked up for a year. We'll just, I don't, I Because even with a vasectomy, it's still a few months before it, you know, it's technically, you're technically sterile. And I just feel like his shit is going to untie and reheal. Like some people is just too fertile. I'm just saying. We're going to move right along. We're going to move right along from that. Oh, Lord. This, this helpful here. This is Jenny Wynn from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. She's in my office today for being a racist, chop suey, fried rice eating, pad thai eating, <laughs> Putting peanuts in every dish, having ass bitch. We have her in the office today for being racist, being uh, not not conservative, but being racist, and especially towards black people. All right, we found a bunch of anti-Black Lives Matter posts and a bunch of Facebook messages where you got memes of black people getting shot and saying that it's okay. And you know, Jenny, uh, Jenny, um, Jenny, what is your real name, Jenny? One thaw. I'm going to call you one thong or something like that. I, don't, I feel like that's your American name. What's the name your people call you when you at home with your motherfucking people, right? Because Jenny Wynn, I looked it up. You is Vietnamese, right? Now, I know you may be angry because all your life you get called Chinese. And 
you know, you like, I'm Vietnamese, and you know, that want to bread and want to bread crackers that you love so much, they don't love you. Still just call you Chinese because that's the only thing that they accept is they can't really tell the difference, you know, because to them, y'all all look the same. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's mighty funny, Jenny, 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 how you got all this stuff to talk about, you know, people that look like me. But if it wasn't for people that look like me, people that look like you would have to go back home. You would be poor. We made you rich. Now, we the dumbasses that make y'all rich. But we're going to keep it real. Without us, y'all don't have an economy. We are the economy. As a matter of fact, the only reason why a lot of y'all are sent to the Harvards and the Stanfords and, 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 and the, I, the MITs of the world is off the back of Negroes. Y'all are nothing more than a slanted eye version of a slave labor, uh, a slave owner. That's it. That's it. Making money off the backs of Negroes, just like your white predecessors. You know, the same ones that, you know, came into your country and killed a whole generation of your people. And then, you know, you go back home and you see a, Vin a Vietnamese person with blonde hair and blue eyes and wonder how the hell that happened you know, they, they came from the yeah they came from the Wonder Bread that went over there back in the day you know y'all got them high and they and they screwed y'all 13 year old girls sorry that's what a lot of those army men was doing those girls were not always of age we gonna tell the truth shame the devil a lot of them went over there to Vietnam got high as hell got their good opium and you know Come on now, come on now. And so to you, for, for you to be from a country where you were invaded and, and robbed and R-word and bombed and this, that, and they're still dealing with the effects of that today, for you to have so much vitriol in your soul, for black people, I simply don't understand. What is the obsession with blacks? Or is it simply that you know no matter how much you achieve in this world and how high your star may rise, you will always be below a white because you are not white. Ooh, let me hurt your feelings. You are not white. You are yellow. You go right, go round the right, the right, the round the right white person. They still gonna call you Oriental. You gonna be mad because Orientals are wrong. It's a spice. It's not a human. What those black people that get shot? They're humans too. But you thought you thought that was funny with your ignorant ass. And then you got a Pekingese Negro. Uh, how much did you pay that Negro to sit by you while you sat on live and lying and say, I didn't put those Facebook posts up. Then who put them up, bitch? Who put them up? Your name on the page. Who posted them? Not somebody else posted for you. You, uh, you, you, you Asian, you supposed to be so smart and couldn't even come up with a good lie. Well, let's talk about the fact that you're a failure for an Asian. You're in entertainment. Thought that was beneath y'all. Ain't you supposed to be a mathematician or a doctor or something? I'm just saying. And maybe she is a doctor. Let me look it up real quick. But for you to be on react slumming on reality TV, I mean, you surely you are not making your ancestors proud. I dare not ask you to take a sword to your stomach because you have angered your ancestors. Oh, she's a businesswoman. Okay, I give her that. I give her that. She's a businesswoman. All right, all right, all right. But what 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 is your business? Hmm? It doesn't involve blacks. The very same ones that gave your people, as well as the Arab people, and hell, the white people. Damn, we're the slave labor of the world. We need to get our ish together. Anyway, anyway, if it wasn't for, come on, come on, Jenny. And then you didn't even own it. If you're going to talk your ish, be about your ish, Jenny. Hmm? Be about it. Why the obsession? With black so much, why the obsession with black men so much? Why? Do you want to know what it feels like to have a penis inside you that can actually hit your cervix? Or do you want to know what it feels like to be filled up on the inside? Is that what it is? Because if that's all you want, that's all you have to ask for. I don't understand why you acting so ignorant you know even though we, we ain't gonna pay no attention to nothing that you talk about because like i said no matter how high you go in this world you are failure for an asian and you are not white you are not white they will always make fun of your eyes they will always make fun of your culture they will always make fun of your food they will always look at the fact that you get yellow when you tan not brown not bronzer not bronze tan they will always look at you funny Right, and anything that you even produce with a white man gonna still carry your features, honey. Come on, Jeannie. If you're gonna talk about it, be about it. They don't like you. What you thought you was gonna be part of the KKK? You thought you was gonna be part of the Proud Boys? They call you a Mongol, they think you're an animal. They blame you 
for the COVID. They blame you for Omarion. They blame your people over there eating the chickens and the octopusy out in the open, in the open wet markets for bringing that virus to this country. Come on. The people you sticking up for don't like you, boo-boo. I don't care what you do to your hair. I don't care what you I don't care what you do. We can still see the Asian in you, baby. It's all in your cheekbones. It's in your DNA. And so now you unemployed and fired. Once again, a failure for an Asian. And you want us to feel sorry for you? We don't. We don't. Now I don't know what's going on over there at Bravo. Why they ain't doing credit checks, background checks? I don't, I don't know. But somebody, it's a, the, the, look, I'm nominating, the doctor is nominating DJ Richie Sky to go over to Bravo and start a diversity inclusion board or something. Because y'all messing up. Bravo, y'all better get it together. Between these lackluster shows and all this racism and stuff coming out, another network gonna come and replace y'all. Don't, don't think you can't be replaced. We already getting tired of Housewives for real. Potomac carrying everybody on their back to keep it funky. But this heifer's a nobody. She was trying to be a somebody. And was so smart. You ain't you supposed to be so smart. And didn't even take the time to delete all of your social media before you got on TV, you ignorant heifer. Anyway. Oh. Not to mention you live in Salt Lake City which is prom uh, predominantly Mormon, and you realize that Mormons don't even think you're re a real human. <laughs> they think when you die, you're you going to be a servant for them on their planets. I'm done. I'm done. This is a dumb bitch. I'm done. We're done, people. I'm done with that for the night. We're done for the night. Oh my God! Now we we had almost four thousand people in the building. We would have probably we probably would have cracked five thousand if we would have went live Saturday. But like I said, I didn't realize Janet was on, so my bad, y'all. But y'all know we gonna get it in, okay? Now, um, do y'all? Oh, thank you, Impens. Do y'all want like an after show? Do you want to call in? I'm gonna just let, I'm gonna just let y'all do, and I ain't gonna have the time. Um, no, speaking of Asian, uh, do y'all wanna have a call in show? Y'all let me know. We'll come back while my food is cooking. We'll come back. We'll do an after show. Uh, always elite evidence. Always the documentary was good, and I gotta uh do the commentary on it. Adele. Oh, I forgot about Adele. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. Adele. Adele, and then we out. Adele, how did I forget about you? Oh, no. Adele, you thought you was going... <laughs> no, baby, you going to get your script, too. You going to get your script, too. Adele. Because we need to talk to Adele. We need to talk to Adele because Adele is out here tripping. All right, let's get to it. Adele. Now, I got to bring you in my office, Adele, because you have been, how can I put it? Bitch, you've been tripping. And I'm going to need you to get it together. You have not been able to rehearse. You have not been able to perform. You have not gave us good music. You, had, you have canceled all of these Las Vegas shows all because what? Your ninja cheating on you? So what? You ain't the first and you ain't gonna be the last white girl that he cheat on. What is you so confused and so hurt and so broken up about? Did you think that that successful fool was going to be monogamous to you? Did you not think he was going to cheat? What did you think he was going to do, Adele? Did you not know that he was with you simply for the look, Adele? Come on now. Did he pay you any attention when you weighed 400 pounds? He didn't pay you no attention then? He ain't gonna pay you no attention now when you done starved yourself for blueberries down to 150. He don't give a damn either way. Now, come on, Adele. You is a fat white woman. That ain't your first black, and it won't be your last black. 
Because if one thing a black man likes is an overweight white woman. So they said you had been with black dudes before and then you married a white dude and okay, you had your baby. Okay, now you're done with that and he took $75 million from you. So now that you're through with all that, you, you felt like once you lost that weight, you was going to get a dude to actually treat you right and be faithful to you. And that's not how it works. But I'm here to tell you, whether that dude is faithful to you or not, you're supposed to give us our music. Now, Mary J. Blige dealt with, with drugs, alcohol addiction, couldn't read and was getting our ass whooped and, and gave us the best music out of that. You're supposed to harness that energy and give us good music, and Adele, not this lackluster ass 30 album that you gave us. And I'm giving you no excuse and no recourse and no remorse for giving us a lackluster ass album that sounds, y'all said it sounds just like the other two albums. It sounds, the uh, three albums, it sounds worse. It sounds worse. We had 19, 21, 25, and on every one you look 15 to 20 years older than the actual age that you are at that time. And now that you finally look closer to your real age, you done messed up. Did all of your talent go away with the weight? You know, sometimes you're not funny when you lose weight. You're not, you don't have the same edge. So I'm just wondering, like, did your singing ability go with the weight? If not, I need your ass to get back in the kitchen, eat some ho-hos and Twinkies. I'm shoving sugar back down your throat. You're supposed to give me music that want to drive my car off a bridge. Adele, that is what you're here for because we damn sure don't give a damn when you happy. Sorry, it is what it is. So you canceling multi-million dollar shows and missing out on a bag over a ninja that cheated? What? Come on now, you got to do better, Adele. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Or is it now that we're saying that maybe Adele is just overrated and not what everybody cracked her up to be? Do you have different people writing your music? Or is your ass just lazy? You only give us an album every seven to eight years. There is no reason why that anything you give us should be any less than perfection. Or was you not putting your all in your studio because you was too busy backing it up and backing that ass up on, on, that, on that ninja? When you should have told him, get up off me, clean this cum off my booty, I got to go into the studio. Should have been gargling the cum out the back of your tonsils and in that studio singing. Had you been in that studio singing... Till you got it right, we would have had an album that was worth a damn. That's really why you had to do the interviews and and, and and you finally was, you know, talking about your life and revealing your life because that album was lackluster, much like Kanye's. Whenever they finna give us an album that's lackluster, they do everything to distract us from the actual music when it drops. We ain't really even had videos yet. This shit is sad. You say go easy on me, but I'm going hard on you because obviously you don't give a damn about us no more, Adele. You don't have the same uh, hunger for you. Well, your ass is hungry, I bet, but you don't have the same hunger for this shit deal no more because your music just ain't hitting like it used to this supposed to be a natural evolution and you was you was not evolving your ass is going backwards go back to that wonder bread well he done took your money and gone but go get go get with wonder bread again if that's the case go get back fat but we not we not feeling it these people paid their money got their vacation time pto damn ready to lost their job to come and see you and you can't work because of a heartbreak get your ass up there and work and now they got to replace you and people's out of a job now because of you? This don't just affect you. This affect background singers, like people, produce everybody. They need that job. They was counting on that. They got to refund all these people their money because of you? You only got one or two more good albums in you, if that anyway. So Vegas was going to be where the rest of your career went to die. And you not working because of a dude? You crying on the phone? The D can't be that good a deal. Surely it cannot. You know you got to feed your baby and you know you got to rebuild that bank account because your ex took most of it. Now, I like you, Zadell. I really does. But I said this from the time you came out and I'm going to stick to this. There are millions of black ladies in church that sing a hundred times better than Adele. But we got Adele. She pushed in front of us. So we like her. Okay, fine. But you got to give us. You got to give it. I'm not going to be accepting mediocre music from someone, well, who can be largely considered mediocre. Adele. You couldn't figure out Instagram, but you need to figure out that music. You need to figure out the lyrics. You need to figure out that soul and that pain. So I'm writing you a script to go back in the studio. Your feelings hurt and your pussy hurt too. Get back in that studio and sing from your diaphragm. And get in there and get it and do it until you get it right. 
and then bring us an album, not 35 or 40, 31 next year, and bring us an album that's worth a shit. This ain't your first heartbreak and it ain't the last. You crying more over this D than you did over that white man, over that Wonder Bread. I ain't even singing Wonder Bread song for you. I don't even want to. You so disappointed. You are a disappointment. You crying more over that than you did over Wonder Bread that took over 75 million from your ass. He took so much, he cleaned you out so bad in court that you asked that Los Angeles judge to please seal the docket. She was so embarrassed. Damn, girl, did he take you down to the EBT? Ain't nothing wrong with your ass. Get up and work. And go record. You are an artist. You use your pain to help others. This is what you signed up for. All them Jakumatati symbols you was throwing up and that Saturn worship you had in your ears over on Oprah Winfrey show. You already know what that's about. We saw them hand signal symbols. Come on now. The devil came to collect. And your ass must perform. Shit is pitiful. Anyway, we don't call you Adele Section 8 till you get it together and get better. Uh, let's see. Tina Marie was bad. They kept her identity hid because black people thought she was black. Right, maybe they should have did that with Adele. Uh, the Tisha Campbell story, that'll be separate. That's not a, um... Uh, you sounded like Joe Jackson? Listen. That Joe Jackson stuff worked for a reason. You gonna get in there till you get it right. Nobody's going home until the notes is right. We got a bathroom. We got a shower here. You need food? We got it. You need drink? We got it. Get in that booth and get it right. Or go home if you don't feel like singing. Uh, Cynthia in my, oh God, damn, it's so many. Damn, how did I forget these people? Well, thank you. Oh my God, how did I forget about Mike and Cynthia? Jeez, the doctor's tripping. You know what? We was out for so long. We had so many to deal with. Okay. Let me get this picture of them real quick because we, 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 we need to talk about this too. I'm going to definitely have to cut this up and split this up. All right. No, 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 no. All right, put it up. And then we're going uh, to go straight to our after show. All right, cool, 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 cool. So we got Mike. We got Mike Hill and Cynthia Bailey, both stiff, both stale. But, you know, we love them. Both on the boring side. But, you know, but, but we love them, right? Remember all them rumors about Mike over the years and him being exposed on Snapchat, sending his penis around and he said it wasn't his and Cynthia said it wasn't his and you know allegedly when Cynthia was living here in Atlanta and he was living in LA they said that the hose was running through his house allegedly but he said it wasn't true and even though Mike Hill is a man that has never been in love and never been faithful to any woman that he was with he was somehow gonna be faithful and monogamous to Cynthia Bailey at his big age of 62. Who believes any of this shit? First off, Mike, I'm going to tell you what they should have told you. You was never supposed to go shirtless on the, on the cover of that book. That was not for you. Number one. Number two, where was your male friends at that engagement party at your house? 30 women, 35 women, all your friends, those, those were your exes. Why did nobody put two and two together? Hell, Cynthia knew that. She just wanted to go down the aisle. I'm convinced that Cynthia likes walking or running from an aisle. She just likes the idea of a wedding, but I don't really think she'd like a merge. I just don't. And I still don't understand why Cynthia loved Peter. Peter, Peter loved you, Cynthia. You had your ups and downs as an entrepreneur. I, I believe you, you, know, you let them people get in your head. You was embarrassed, but Peter loved you. He loved you. Come on now. Anyway, so Mike was on a podcast and he said that even though him and Cynthia have only been married for two years, they're already having marital issues and they might not make it. How are you having marital issues and you in the honeymoon stage of your 
marriage. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot because for most of your relationship, y'all did not even live on the same coast. Y'all just not living together. Y'all just not really getting to know each other. And now y'all, 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 y'all having communication issues. How? I don't understand that y'all big age. You 75 and she's 64. What is it that y'all having trouble communicating over at this point in life? Be grateful to have somebody and sit your ass down. Them hoes don't love you, Mike. I'm here to let you know. And these ninjas don't love you either, Cynthia. So just, just, just let this be. Unless you got Peter number in your back pocket and you're going to fly down to Miami. I don't know. Now, this could all be a plot just to get back on Real Housewives of Atlanta. It really could be. Right, right, right. Or they really are having issues because they really didn't know each other like that before they got married. Does Cynthia not like LA and she wants to come back to Atlanta? Hmm? What's what's the real problem? Oh, I know. The problem is neither one of these two are just good at long-term relationships, period. Cynthia ain't good with sticking through the hard times. And Mike ain't good with, well, you know, just sticking it in one woman at a time. He ain't never been faithful and she ain't never had both feet in her marriage at once. When she hopped over that broom, it was just with one foot. She left the other foot out. She had her hands like this behind her back. Come on now. She loves to get in a wedding dress and then run away. Far from it. That's a Cynthia. She a runner. She's a track star. She gonna run away when it gets hard. That's what she gonna do. Her booty too stiff now for her to be running like that. So she's going to, you know, walk like a stiff gazelle but she or a giraffe. But she's going to get there one way or another. And yes, Cynthia, you do walk stiff. I'm sorry, boo. You do. Everything is stiff. Your walk is stiff. You dance stiff. It's just stiff. Just saying. Communication issues. I'm writing you guys both a script for intensive couples therapy. Do not go on marriage boot camp. That's not going to help your relationship. You're going to go see a real therapist and get actual counseling and get to know one another because it was hard to do that when you lived on opposite sides of the country and you only flew in to screw, drink wine, eat chicken and cheese, film a scene, and then he goes back to work. Now you with him day in and day out. And realizing you don't like them that much. Welcome to marriage, Cynthia. You ain't gonna like each other. You might not even love each other, but you make it work because that's what you committed to under God. And you better learn how to be unstiff for your man. You know he don't like being faithful. He was never faithful. The man ain't never been in love. You make it to 50 and you ain't never been in love. Who you love? He love himself. Oh, shit. And if he love himself more than he love you, y'all was doomed from the very beginning. I'm not granting you a divorce. Either one, deal with it and fix it. Sick of y'all shit. Every other year is a new marriage and relationship for Cynthia and this fool don't want to be committed to nobody. I'm, uh, get out of my face. Get out of my face. All right now. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. But he cheated, though. You get with somebody that done cheated on everybody before you, and they cheat on you, and ain't even cheating at that point. That's just to be expected. You should have known better. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this stream here, guys. Make sure you're on my text list, 678-679-6077. We are going to come right back for the after show. You can come up, uh, talk your ish about who got a script this week, and then we're going to call it a night. We will have uploads throughout the week. I think we're going to do one little live for Euphoria, but pretty much we won't be like having a major live again until Saturday. All right? That's how we're doing it going forward. Give you guys somewhat of a schedule, okay? So stay there. All right? Stay there. And we will be right back. Give me like 10 minutes and come over to the new live. Everybody wants this cookie, my spoil your rotten cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie, my spoil your rotten cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie, my spoil your rotten cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie, my spoil your rotten cookie. Yeah. What's up? 
almost a nookie He gon' eat the cookie, yeah He gon' eat the cookie, I'm not Okay, people, I'm we are back again for another one Let me go ahead and just cut the music and get right to it So, people, we came a day early for these prescriptions on this Good Friday Because, well, we had a lot to get through And I didn't really want to make y'all wait until Saturday We had to have uh, prescriptions midway through the week We had to have prescriptions on Saturday I, We might have to have prescriptions every day Because these hoes is just losing their mind day by day by day We are in a uh, Mercury retrograde And it looks like the doctor going to be writing scripts all fall and winter long Let me know that y'all can hear me so we can get it popping on this Good Friday Let me know y'all can hear me The doctor is here it said, let's get on with the mess. Y'all have some patience. Lea Leasha, Leasha, have some patience. Let the doctor get in this chair good. Me and Tiffany had a good time last night. I'm moving a little slow today. Don't you have them days at your job when you move a little slow? Y'all ready? All right, perfect. Perfect, perfect. So first things first, people. I'm going to get right on into it and talk about Ellen Pomegranate. Y'all may know her as Ellen Pompeo, but I'm going to call her Ella, Ellen Pomegranate. All right, we got Denzel Hayes Washington Jr. And then, of course, we got Isaiah Washington. And I just put up Isaiah Washington's picture at the bottom for his own uh, uh, victory, his own I told you bitches so, so he can let y'all know that he was not tripping when he was saying that Ellen up above was a complete and utter bitch on set. Now, Ellen Pomegranate, y'all know her from that show that has long overstayed its welcome on television called Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Pain in My my ass grades should have been canceled after the 12th motherfucking season because i'm trying to figure out how in an episode a bitch was dead for two hours and then came back to life i'm trying to figure out how in any regular hospital scenario they would be in there performing cpr for two freaking hours i don't believe it nowadays they ain't even letting your ass come up in there if you ain't got the you know what in the you know who and you mean to tell me these bitches was going for two hours pumping on the whole chest for her to come back in life like she was rising from the dead like Christ, not on my watch. Y'all be lying and y'all be full of shit. And so y'all, 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 well, we didn't cancel Isaiah Washington, but Wonder Bread, you know, canceled Isaiah Washington. And I want to, you know, just say Isaiah is all good. You told her she was a bitch and she, and she is apparently okay. So what had happened is that Ellen freely admitted, all right, her white privilege, all right, her Karen was Karen-ing, all right. So Karen Pomegranate uh, uh, was on set and Denzel Washington was directing the episode and, and she was claiming he didn't know what he was doing and he wasn't listening to her because he is a legend. He is Denzel D. Washington. Washington, who the hell and who the fuck is an Ellen Pomegranate? You have not done the things that Denzel has done, and you never could do the things that Denzel is. You ain't left a mark in TV and movie history the way Denzel has. It is what it is at the end of the day. Denzel is a household name. We know you as Meredith from Grey's Anatomy. That's just what it is, okay? So I got to diagnose you. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Let me tell you all the story. So they got into it on set. She called him a mother alpha and said that this is her show, and this is her shit. And I beat anybody ass in here. That's how she was acting, okay? As if she wrote it. And I'm like, damn, Ellen Pomegranate. Now you just gonna, you know, Christopher Columbus is show away from Shonda Rhimes. I thought Shonda Rhimes wrote this shit. I thought she wrote this haphazardly in her room at night. I didn't know this was your show, Ellen Pomegranate. And I said, damn, you know, we do gotta go in on you. I ain't gonna completely cancel you, but we gonna go in on you a little bit. Then I heard some of y'all saying, well, Storm, she got black kids. She got a black husband. I don't give a damn. I'm going to give them how much black dick she tagged. It don't mean she can disrespect a black legend. We're going to quickly put her in her place. Just like if Denzel had disrespected a certain kind of legend, he'd have been put in his place. Just like when Isaiah said the F word, he was put back in his place. We're going to put Ellen Pomegranate back in her place. She is Wonder Bread. She is... Oh, I forgot the song. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news. We got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, we got that Wonder Bread news, that still ass news, taking black dick news, we got that Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread, that Wonder Bread news. How y'all like my Wonder Bread song? I just want to know. I just want to know. How y'all like my Wonder Bread song? I, I held that note. I'm getting back. I'm fin I need to give y'all an album. I had Wonder Bread news. I held that note. I held that note. I don't care what y'all say. Anyway, so we gonna get... <laughs> right, thank you. She ain't black by injection. She ain't black at all. All right, so anyway, 
That being said, we are diagnosing Ellen Pomegranate with the, with all the delusion from Black Dick. Apparently, that Black Dick hit her cervix and went up through her spine, through her lungs, and and, and, and it fucked with her brain into where she thought that she was even on the same level as Denzel to even look at him in his eyes when they're actually working together. We got to diagnose you with being a Karen. No matter how much peanut butter and Nutella is spread in between the Wonder Bread buns at night, she is still a Karen at the end of the day. And so her script is that we're going to cancel that show. That show should have been off a long time ago. I'm going to need ABC, Shonda Rhimes, and whoever else is on staff to give us something new, give us something fresh, because it's old and it's stale and it's boring, okay? If Scandal ain't on no more, I don't see no reason why Grey's Anatomy need to be on. We're over it, and uh, and, it's, and it's just shitty at this point. I'm sorry, it's boring. I know y'all in love with it, but it's just, it is what it is. And the next part of your script, Ellen Pomegranate, I guess your ass and thoughts since you went over there with, with Jada Pinkett Smith at her red table, that your ass was protected. But you are not. So I am going to write you a script to be Katherine Heigl. Y'all remember Katherine Heigl? All right, Katherine Heigl and her goddamn mammy was on set and on many different sets causing such a ruckus that she is now, you know, doing them pill commercials. You can't sleep. You can't shit. You can see Katherine Heigl. So we're going to Katherine Heigl you. Now you can go back home to your black kids and your black husband and you can fuck yourself into delusion and oblivion. But what you cannot do ever in your life is come for one of our legends. I don't care how much Nutella peanut butter is spread in between your buns at night. I don't give a damn. Okay? Now, did she shit out a black child? Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all got mad at me when I said that. Did she birth out a black child or did she adopt one? It don't matter, but I'm just asking. Y'all let me know because hell, if you... Uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Y'all ready for the next script? Because I'm ready. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Moving right along. We got to talk about... Oh, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. All right, moving right along, we got to talk about Donald Carlton Lemonade. All right, y'all know him as Don Lemon. I know him as that brother on Singing In that has never had a clean fade. All right. He has had an effed up hair lining, all right, an effed up fade on national television for 10, 15, 20 some years. We don't know if you let Wonder Bread do your hair and pick your hair out behind the scenes, but we want to know why your lining is never crisp and why your edges is always dry and why your hair is never fully combed. We want to know, Don Lemon. We also want to know, how did you manage to be one of the few black people to crack? We say black don't crack, but you got more lines and crevices, craters and mounts and valleys and dips, and your face in a little bit is almost as if it's that Wonder Bread that you married to is sucking all the melanin and life out your ass. We want to know, is you getting the life sucked out your ass? Because you're getting older by the day and you're aging like milk. You're looking more and more like a raisin every day. And it ain't supposed to be that way. And you got 15 pounds of caked up makeup on you. And another thing too, why you let Wonder Bread over there at CNN put all that graveyard casket makeup on you? You look, got, got you looking casket ready like we ready to bury you in your damn Cadillac. Don Lemonade? Donald! You know damn well that your, your color, your shade is not gray. You know, you're more of the, the you, what were you, you ain't, you ain't bring your own queen collection. You is a queen. I know you got some makeup somewhere. I know, see, you got some friends that got some makeup. I know you got some friends that do makeup, and you just like, you let them wonder, the bristle. You all wrong. Anything to have that anchor seat. Anyway, moving right along. Uh, you have uh, been accused of of of, uh, 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 of being a fleece Johnson booty chaser, all right, and you are being sued by this white man uh, beside you right there. Now, here's the thing. Uh, let me set the scene for y'all, okay? All right, I can't play no music, but I want y'all just to imagine, okay? Just play with me here, okay? <laughs> Okay, so they had a club. They had a gay club. Okay, all right. And it's Don Lemonade and this white man right here. Y'all know Don Lemonade. Love him some good Wonder Bread slices. All right. So Don is doing this thing, and he sees Wonder Bread, and he slides over, slides, slides, slides. Then he takes his hand. All right. And puts it in his pants and started rubbing his phallus in front of Wonder Bread. Now, no word on if Wonder Bread was enjoying him rubbing himself out in front of him or not. We don't know. He didn't tell him to stop, but he was watching him rub and rub and rub and rub. Don Lemonade then stuck his fingers in his shit. T 
Took him right out. Took his two fingers and stuck his fingers up on the bread's nostrils and said, do you like C or do you like stick? What you like? You like peaches or you like plum? Not plums. Eggplants. What you like? Huh? What you like? And stuck his fingers right up them nostrils. That's why I hit that white boy nose crooked now. Nah. Stuck him in there and stuck him over to the side. And the white boy said he didn't like it. So he suing him. And so we got to accuse the uh, lemonade uh, and diagnose him with, like I said, having that Fleece Johnson booty syndrome. He said we can do this the easy way or we can do this a hard way. But either way, we doing it. Now, Don Lemonade, why you didn't just ask that man normally if he uh, uh, was gay or not? Why you had to, you know, stick your fingers up his nose? Was you planning on penetrating his nose? Or do you say whatever hole he got, you're going to enter? Golly, what kind of freak shit is you doing in the bed with your husband that you round here really uh, 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 cracking and widening and busting open every orifice that's on a human body? It wasn't meant for that, Don. That's not what that hole is made for. Lord, I know y'all at home with your woman bread y'all I, I, I bet you 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 hitting that that knee fat the back of the knee trying to put you in ears and shit you just you just a nasty bastard but anyway all right uh, um and we, we also are diagnosed to you with having an addiction to wonder bread bussy um having broke down ghetto ass not ghetto ass i'm sorry broke down great value ass melanin your melanin has been failing you and we don't know if you were just a, a, a product of bad genetics or like i said if that white man been sucking all the melanin out your ass so part of your script sir because this man said you assaulted him you had no right to stick your sweaty dick fingers up his nose who well, thank god it wasn't nobody with a wide nose like me oh god you went straight up to my brain and uh that have been that have been your ass anyway with that being said the first part of your script is that we're gonna fire you from your job seems like everybody there over there at cnn can't keep them hands to their cells what's up with all these anchor men assaulting people and touching people against their will did nobody tell you to touch them sir nobody asked for that we gonna get out that club now for somebody asked me if i'm gay or straight now uh next part of your script is that i want you to do community service in a local penitentiary so that way you can have all the bussy that your heart desires as a matter of fact when you get in the local penitentiary and you will be doing community i want you to do 180 80. No, I want you to do 180 days, all right? And I'm not going to let you hang out with the colors. I'm not going to let you hang out with the black folks or the lads. I want you to go and do your community service with the Aryan Nation. There's plenty of white bussy for you to last you from sea to shine to sea. And you'll be okay, Don Lemonade. Just go in there and play with that white bussy. You'll be fine. Uh huh. You'll be fine. But at least go play in there where they want it. All right? Not you meeting people in bars and sticking your sweaty balls fingers up their nose. This man said he didn't ask for that, and now he's suing you, and you're going to have to pay him. So go and cut him his check and keep it moving. Don Lemonade, Don Lemonade. How sweet is Don's Lemonade? Very sweet. All right, we're going to move right along because I am. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody said CNN stands for consent, not necessary. Damn. Damn. Mm -mm. All right, moving right along. We got to talk about Lizzo. All right, Lizzo did a TED Talk. And instead of talking about, you know, uh, uh, her story, how she went from rags to riches, instead of her talking about how she uh, learned to, I mean, how she was able to fight homelessness, instead of her talking about the origins of black people in music, all the shit that we started, she decided to go to what we've been looking at the whole time. Her ass, all right? So we got to diagnose you with disrespecting the ancestors. You got up there in that TED Talk in front of all those white folks and became mammified when you talked about the history of twerking and your big black ass. And we not mad at you talking about twerking, Lizzo, but we would like for you and your twerk talk to maybe be like your fourth or fifth TED Talk, not, you know, like your first or second. Like, we would, we would rather hear about you talk about the forgotten sister of rock and roll, because you know rock and roll was actually started by a black woman. I would actually rather you do a TED talk on something like that versus you just talk about twerking and how twerking uh, uh, was a part of your lineage and your ancestors did it, and twerking helped you to love yourself and love your body. You know, the lie detector test determined that that is a lie, Lizzo, because people that love their body don't feel the need to constantly tell people that they love their bodies. They just love their bodies. But we, but I'm not. I don't want to be too hard on you, Lizzo. I really don't. But I just hate that of all the things 
things you could have talked about. Hey, you could have talked about the history of the flute. You could have talked about black people and playing instruments and how instruments that we play over here actually came from shit in Africa. Like you could have talked about African influence in Latin culture in 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 this sector of music, in that sector of music. There's so much shit you could have done, and you didn't do none but bend over and shake your big black ass. We love you though, Lizzo, but we don't love you doing that. And so. Uh, 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 we, we also diagnose you with using your ass instead of your brain. So for your script, you want to do another TED talk where you're going to talk about black influences in music. I want you to talk about the origins of country where it really came from and rock and roll. Ain't none of that shit white genres. All that shit is black genres that was taken over by whites. As a matter of fact, you could have talked about the black man that, that Elvis Presley was modeled after shit that we still see today when we look at artists like Pink, uh, uh, Christina Aguilera, who else, who else, Miley Cyrus. Who else, who else, who else, who else, who else, who else, Cardi B, who else, who else, who else, you really could have, oh, well, you ain't gonna say nothing against Cardi, but you could have went there and talked about that, you know, how hip-hop is whitewashed, rap is whitewashed, blah, 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 anything but talking about you twerking, it seems to be all you have to offer and nobody's, you, you, you're calling for somebody to come and eat that ass, and ain't nobody coming for it, and last but not least, um, you know, when you were doing your mating call and bending over all the time, you know, you're signaling to me that you're horny, but I do believe that you're going for men that ain't really checking for you like that, and so I want you to start dating some heavy brothers, I want you to go on a few dates with them, I want y'all to do it together, if you gotta get on the floor and do it so y'all don't break the bed, that's totally fine. Suck each other's titties and rolls and love each other together and live together in sweaty bliss. But I just don't want you out here, you know, just being reduced to your ass of all the things you could have talked about, Lizzo. Your ass? Really? Targeting? Really? I'm calling that an epic fail, but we're gonna move right along from that. Get, get out of my office, Lizzo. I like you. I like you. I really do. And I will say this. I don't care what nobody say. Your face is top tier. Your, your face, Lizzo, is top tier. I you, you you shouldn't feel unattractive. You're definitely one of the prettiest girls in this industry. But all you can do is just bend over. Sick of that shit. Shit's old. Ugh. We're running along. We're running along. We like you, though, Lizzo. We do. We do. We do. We do. All right, next we got to talk about Kevin Hart and his ex-best friend, JT ja Action Jackson. All right, this is the best friend that was accused of extorting Kevin Hart for like $10 million back when uh, Kevin Hart was caught cheating on his wife with that chick in Miami. You know, that sex tape that had leaked, and then Kevin Hart said that his best friend did it. Well, it's mighty funny that Kevin Hart said that this man did it and then threw him under the bus, but JT Action Jackson has officially been cleared of all charges. And so, Kevin... We got to bring you to the doctor's office to figure out if JT was the one that extorted you, then who did? Or Kevin is the truth that you and your marketing team threw your best friend under the bus because you needed a way to look good in the situation that you was looking mighty bad. Because instead of being with your pregnant wife at that time, on her birthday, you were smashing some chick, smashing some hooker in a hotel bed that your ass wasn't even hardly able to get up in. If y'all seen the sex tape, Kevin Hart was just like this. He was all on his tippy toes, just like this. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, he was all he was all like this, all like this. I mean, on 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 the big toe, just doing his best not to fall and topple over because I mean that was the only way he was able to do doggy style with that girl. The bed was kind of high, okay. So at the end of the day, I'm just trying to figure out who put the camera there, okay, and who actually leaked it. Because the damn show wasn't your best friend. Now, you dropped your charges on him in 2019, but the state still had charges on him, which have now officially been dropped. He is cleared. He is a free man. You use him as a scapegoat because at the end of the day, you don't care about nobody but yourself. Because at the end of the day, you continue to make horrible decisions at the age of 62. Because at the end of the day, you are still an insecure little man. That's what it is. Your diagnosis is Napoleon Syndrome that you ain't got no, okay? Now, if you're a short man, mm-mm. We, we got that PTSD. We do. 
But I ain't not her doing that shit that you do, okay? You can't get your shit together because, see, here's the deal. You claim that you just can't stay faithful. No, 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 no. There was nobody checking for Kevin Hart before Kevin Hart became Kevin Hart. But Tori Hart, that is what it is. Why you married her, you had kids, and that's why y'all lived in Witted Bliss for a while until you blew up and started smelling yourself and had access to a vagina that you would have never had access to before. We all know that your wife would have never looked at you different if you were still the same. Kevin Hart that was working at the mall cleaning dirty ass shoes. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Y'all let me know. Okay? So what happened was you got fame, you got money, you got, uh, you earned it. Or you will. I mean, you was initiated to the Illuminati. We've seen that scene where you kissed the rock, but that's none of my business. Okay. Richard Roll or Richard Roll? A Richard Roll or Richard Roll? Okay. Ain't no but a little bit of scraping, apparently. You got access to shit you would have never had, and you lost your mind, and that's why you have trouble being faithful. That's why you always got to have your boys around you. Because when you go out and you see women, fine ass women, want to holler at you, they never would have looked at you before. You know, you you know, look, the big Kevin can't control little Kevin. All right, and little Kevin take over. When little Kevin take over, you make dumb ass decisions, like being in a two seater convertible with a couple to some in the morning that then crashes, the white folks almost die, you with a broken back managed to get in your securities truck and get back home all with a broke back in four places that you said was broke so close that she was almost paralyzed and was in the bed for a few months, but you never took a pain pill and was back out there working before you knew it. None of that makes sense to me. None of it. What happened to those white people, Kevin? How much money did you have to pay those white people, Kevin? What were you doing with that couple, Kevin? Because why I feel like I was in there having a threesome, Kevin. That is Hollywood. Well, Hollywood is trained. You get trans ran on you, Kevin. I want to know. What was you doing in that car? Huh? Why is you an alcoholic? Why you been driving drunk so many times in your life? Why you can't? Why? What's wrong with you, Kevin? The truth of the matter is nobody's safe around Kevin. Not now one of his friends or now one of the people on payroll. But some go down, he will throw them under the bus too. Kevin. That disrespect towards that man needs to be as loud as I'm sorry, the apology to that man needs to be as loud as the disrespect. But we both know that you ain't gonna ever address this shit. But we wanna know the truth. So I'm writing you a script to have a sit down. With Gail King, Oprah, I don't care. Maybe Robin Roberts. And that night of that crash, that night in Miami, we want to know what actually happened. We want to know. I know you thought we forgot. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't at all. Damn, drop your script. Get up out of my office. We sure need you to come in. We sure do. We got questions. Get the interview with the white couple. Man, T uh, Tanya... I think is it Tanya Richard. I can't even find I can't even find that couple. Like they disappeared. I literally think he paid them and they just like signed the NDA and went about their business. Mm -mm -mm. That's what I feel. That's what I feel. I ain't heard nothing else from him. Nah. Moving right along from there, we gotta talk about Tyrese Gibson. Once again, wilding on the internet. Now his birthday is December 30th. Uh, that would make him a Capricorn. Y'all know I don't. I don't know none about no astrology. But is is his behavior typical of a Capricorn male? I want y'all to tell me in the chat below. I don't know. He's overly emotional. I thought cancers were overly emotional. That's why I believe that astrology shit low key really ain't real. Because I'm just like it. Like it, it, people are just people. But maybe I'm wrong. Y'all let me know. Is he a typical Capricorn male? I want to know. Anyway. You were coming to my office today, Tyrese, because you broke up with Dominican girlfriend Zeli uh, Timothy or Zeli Timothy. You got her right out of the DR. You got her. You got an exotical. This was your black queen. Black where? Tyrese, we still waiting to see you with a black queen that's as black as you. When we going to get a black queen that's as black as you, Tyrese? Black queen. Black where? Black queen. Is this your black queen too? 
She blackish, close. But we want you with a true black queen. Or do you know a black queen they gonna put up with your bullshit? I think that's really what it is. So anyway, with that being said, they broke up for whatever reason. And Tyrese, um, in that bald head of his, decided to post a semi-nude photo. I'm sorry, a semi-nude video of Zelly in the tub with stinking ass bubbles and brown bath water. Now, I don't know where y'all take baths at and what kind of tub y'all ain't ever been in, but I ain't never found no tub full of brown water to be attractive or sexy. I just never have. The bubbles was, was already dissipating, which means your ass hadn't gotten in that tub, which means instead of you hopping right in that tub with your woman, you, you actually went and grabbed your phone so that you could record it and keep this later to, to, to put out there, right? So we definitely got to diagnose you with putting out revenge porn on your ex, uh, not thinking before you post, all right? You know, not, you know, not thinking before we speak, not thinking before we post, but we just want to know why you did that. But more importantly, we want to know why was her bath water brown? Did she not wash her ass before she get in that tub? Was that shit from her ass? Did she just get out the toilet and get right in the tub? I thought you're supposed to rinse your ass out before you sit your ass in that tub. Was you, did you get in that brown water after? I mean, that shit was looking like city water coming out the pipes. You supposed to have money. Did all that Fast and Furious money run out and you ain't got clean water no more? We trying to understand what kind of cheap ass bubble suds that you have that that shit was already dissipating before you got up in. Golly, did y'all do it in the tub? Then you got out and got the... But it shouldn't be brown. Did she have that much dirt on her skin? You should have scrubbed that shit off. She need a good exfoliation. We want to know why y'all was in dirty ass brown tub water. Or was the tub just that dirty? Because that's nasty as fuck to record that shit. And I got a PSA for all y'all taking pictures and selfies in y'all bathrooms. Clean your nasty ass bathroom before you post, please. Anyway, like I said, I'm diagnosing you as being an uh, overly emotional male and being a baby boy in real life. Not knowing what a true black queen is, being a complete control freak, which is why you can't keep no woman, and suffering from childhood trauma because some black girls called you ugly when you was little and you never got over it. So we are sending you to counseling. You need your head examined from A to Z. This man is still mad because the black girls that he went to school with called him ugly and he never got over it. He never, ever did. He, ne he never did. So he ain't he ain't trying to control you, Zelly. He's trying to control the little kids in elementary school that call him ugly. Point blank in the period and uh that's it nothing more nothing less hey y'all know tyrese got issues y'all know y'all know y'all been doing that emotional self always crying always doing something damn go home tyrese you need to go back to your wife because don't nobody else want you they really don't uh she posted the same video of herself she shouldn't have she shouldn't have Mm-mm-mm. Oh, who said he... You know what? I'm not even finna repeat that. We're gonna move right along to the next script. Next script, we gotta talk about J-Lo. All right? And we ain't got no script for Beyonce, but this is uh, just J-Lo basically living in delusion. So there was... A Twitter post that went viral, okay, <clears throat> that, you know, had a picture of J-Lo and had a picture of Beyonce because, you know, everything Beyonce do, J-Lo end up doing. Every outfit Beyonce wear, J-Lo end up wearing. Every note that Beyonce hits, J-Lo tries to haphazardly hits, and she doesn't. She hurts herself, and when she can't quite hit the note, she then calls on another black woman to come and hit those notes for her. That's just the truth. It is what it is. I don't know who calls this woman a singer. She is not a singer. She has never sang. She has never sung. She, she has never hit a note in her. Her life she is hit nothing but well flops all right that, that, that's it that's it and anytime she had a hit it was a black woman's voice behind her i know it's funny because we tell people to live out their dreams and to never quit and to never give up but if you chase a dream for 30 years and you are still shitty at it it is not meant for you boo boo mark anthony had the voice in your relationship all right your kids got their voice from mark anthony they didn't get their voice from you if they had got their voice from you they wouldn't need auto tune that's like they mammy that's truly what it is jennifer lynn lopez that's just what it is we love we love love you we do but baby you can't sing we didn't hurt them vocals in the studio we didn't hurt you tried to sing diana ross you couldn't you tried to sing your own songs you could but you never gave but i do give you that no matter how shitty you sound you never give Ah, uh, but why did you never give credit to Christina the million and Ashanti? How are you gonna sing a whole song that ain't your voice like the pussycat dolls of it all? Acting like this show shit. How are you gonna feature on your own song but act like you the main person on your own song? Play, come on, play that song. You know it turns me on. Just turn me up, turn me on. Ah, that wasn't you. All you said on your own song was play my mother. Get sound! You feed 
featured on your own song. It's not your song. It's not your vocals. It's not your voice. You already lip sync. How does it feel to be at your concerts and have to lip sync a lip syncation? Jennifer! Baby, you was meant to be an actress. All that Wonder Bread in Hollywood told you to do to be, they, they say you, you actors, you want to be the Latin Julia Roberts. That's what George Clooney wanted you to do. Everybody, Wesley Snipes, everybody. I was about to say Wesley Pipes. Wesley Snipes, everybody wanted you. Because they say you are an actress, you are an actress. But you said, no, I want to sing. And they said, baby, no, you can't. You can't. You cannot. It's bad. And we still remember that clip, you know, from that documentary when you and Mark was performing together and you was trying to tell Mark how to hit a note as if he don't have a beautiful voice. Like, he ain't got no beautiful face. But he does have a beautiful voice, Jennifer. And between your beautiful face and his beautiful voice, y'all did sound that bad together. But let's just keep it real. He took over the notes and you lip sank along. How does it feel to go to parties and sing happy birthday and everybody still sounds better than you, baby? Singing just ain't your thing. You done tried it for 30 years. Let that shit go. And don't get your ass up there trying to rap either. We send you out there with LL Cool J performing at Citizens Fest being very loud, wrong, and off key. Everybody come in. Why LL Cool J coming on stage yelling like that? He got to talk over her, her, her off key ass. Off key screeching all in the mic hurting everybody's ears. He got to come out. Yo, go, go, go. He got to cover that shit. You supposed to get better at your craft over the years, not worse. I want you to come to my office and take a piss test. Is you drunk? How you gonna like a meme on Twitter that say you was hitting the same note as Beyonce? That I told y'all they be watching us what we be doing online. How you go? How could you ever in your 52, 52 years, 30 some years in game, how could you ever think that you are in the same lane as Beyonce? There is no day, time, or hour that you can out sing Beyonce, keep up with Beyonce, or even be in the same studio. You can't even be in the same 100 round square radius as Beyonce when she's singing. This is a woman that performed three months pregnant with 48 hours notice and killed it and killed every no. This is a woman that can sing opera. You barely can sing happy birthday. Jennifer, you can't hit that I yo. You can't even hit that. Jennifer. Jennifer, you dare like that tweet? Let's get it out. No, let's hang it up. Let's hang it up. Let's hang it up. That's that's the new song. Let's hang it up. Wait a minute. Let me get over. Let me get over. Let me go. Let's hang it up. Let's hang it up. Let's hang it up. Let's get loud. No. No. So, main part of your script, Jennifer, is that your ass going to stick to what you're good at, which is acting and hopping from man to man. All right. You are also going to pay Ashanti and Katrina Million their reparations. And every time a song plays on the radio with your name and not your voice, you will be cutting a check to that particular black woman's voice that you stole. Nothing more and nothing less. Have a great day, Jennifer. Get up out of my office. Go on, go home to Ben and make sure you uh, keep the key to that uh, liquor cabinet because you know how Ben get. All right. All right. Mm mm mm. Mm mm mm. She ever th she thought she was on the same level as Beyonce, 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 Beyonce. <sighs> Lord. Moving right along, we need to talk about Drea Kelly. Um, I don't know how much of a script I can write for her, but I know she's sick, and so we gonna talk about it. Here's the thing. 
Ain't nobody going to tell me that Drea Kelly was in that house with R. Kelly for all those years and was not forced to participate in anything with any other girl. He made all his women do little girls and I am wondering why Drea Kelly has now spilled her own tea on what she did with other little girls while they was in the house. Allegedly, we want to know. You can't tell me he kept this woman held up in that room so long that she wasn't even aware of everything else that was going on. I'm not buying it. The blogs and the TV shows only call her to come and talk about R. Kelly. They don't ever call her to talk about her studio or anything else that she got going on. And so what I am here to do, I want to bring her in for a lot of the test because I need to ask her questions about her own activity and her own participation in the rituals at R. Kelly's house. And last but not least, I need her to not talk about R. Kelly ever again. He caused you so much pain, which he did. He, 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 he is a trigger and he is trauma. So I don't want you to talk about him no more. Anytime we see you on TV, we want to see you talking about your dance studio we want to see you talking about yourself that's it now some people say she need to get a name uh she says she earned that name taking all the mass whoopings i'm gonna give it to her that's her name okay fine whatever but my whole thing is at the end of the day i'm just not buying that all those people around r kelly was innocent anything that happened after Aaliyah, i feel like y'all knew what was up and y'all was cool with it because of the lifestyle that this man provided he got you in being sweet he he's slow r kelly's slow and he looks slow that just is what it is and everybody knew and y'all all took advantage of him too he just took advantage of you in a different way all right and y'all enjoyed everything and all the gifts and all the clout that came with being in r kelly's crew until you know you figured out you, you just couldn't take that shit no more so i'm not here to victim shame i'm not here to victim blame but i'm here to say everybody else that said all the shit they done done the papers they done signed and all the all the young kitty snatch that they done lived and i want to know what did drea kelly really have to do in that house i want to know are y'all curious like me are y'all curious like me? They said, Bruna said she need to drop the name. Who all think she need to drop the name? Who all think she need to drop the name? I just wouldn't want to keep the name of somebody that caused me all, the, all that trauma and pain. I'd have, I'd have changed my name so quick. If I was his kid, I'd have changed my name. I don't want no association. Like, I know that's messed up, but that's just, I, I, I'm just saying. No matter what, you always R. Kelly's ex-wife? R. Kelly's kid? Man, please. Come into my office, Drea Kelly, because uh, we got some questions to ask. And, and we want to ask you real questions. Uh, not that bullshit that they ask you, like, on a view of the real or whatever. Mm -mm. We got to ask you some real questions. All right, next real quick, we got to talk about Jay of the Cheese. Or child. I don't even know how to say this girl name. I don't know what this girl do, really. I, I see she's a YouTuber. She's little baby ex-girlfriend. Anyway, uh, she went to Jamaica for her 24th, 24th birthday, all right, and, and, and brought guns, ammo, and uh, ended up getting arrested and really could have done some jail time if she didn't have the paper to pay her way up out of it. Here's my whole thing about Jada. We basically got diagnosed she with being ignorant as fuck because why did you ever think that you could take your own guns and ammo into another country? Who told you that you could do that, whether you was flying private or not? And now, Jada claims that she was told by a travel agent that it was okay as long as, as long as she as long as she notified the officials and customs that she had guns with her. Jada, if you felt the need to have that mean that much that if you felt that unsafe, Jada, why did you not hire security for you as soon as you got into Jamaica? Why did you not bring any security with you? Why did you not know that when you do go to Jamaica, you find certain spots and certain, pe certain people to host you? And pay somebody $500 or $1,000 for the week to just protect you and drive y'all around. And you'd have been cool. They'd have known where to take you and where not to take you, Jada, Jada, Wada. Why? Why would you go over there taking all them guns and ammo? Do you know you really could have been spending the rest of your life in a Jamaican prison and you you wouldn't have made it? They ain't got the luxuries that we got over here, uh, Jada. That's just not how it works. Now, uh, it was said that she paid $1.6 million. It was one point six in Jamaican dollars. So it was only $10,600 U.S dollars she quickly paid that and she came on back home and she said that she want to go back anytime she said she wants to go back later and uh the country said she's welcome to come back anytime because i said if you're stupid enough to break our rules then we just gonna continue to to take your money so uh first part of your script jada since you uh in the mood of wasting 10 and 20 and 30k we want to ask you to come waste some of that money on us and donate to us if you just want to throw some money away jada we want you to throw it over here second part of your script is that you will 
uh, hire security to go to, to go with you when you go out of town, or you hire local private security there if you just feel that unsafe and that threatened. I don't really know who would have been after your ass down there. You look just like every other IG model out there, so I don't think nobody would have recognized you like that. And the last part of your script is that you are going to start booking your trips on Orbitz, Expedia. You're going to book your trips like regular people because whoever you've been going through led you wrong, told you wrong, and told you a bunch of lies. I don't give a damn what no rules say. Do not take no guns and ammo into a foreign country. You're not from there. You ain't got no need to be taking no guns there. It's one thing to go from state to state. Another thing from country to country. This was just this this was just not that bright, Jada. And we expect we expect you to do better, right? We expect you to. So you take the script, you go about your business. You was playing with fire. You paid your little money and kept it moving, but it really could have been worse, Jada. It really could have been worse. Moving right along. Mm -mm -mm. I know nothing of it. I don't either. That's why I, I did the script and kept it moving. Mm -mm -mm. Damn. All right. Move right along. We got to talk about Ezreal Clary interviewing with Gail King, the same one she cussed out last year. Was it last year or year before? Might have been year before last, 2019, when she cussed out Gail, clown and all in front of Gail. She talking R. Kelly. <coughs> 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 Every time she talk, you know, and she making sure her ass stay in line and don't say nothing crazy. Now she has completely turned and says that she knew that R. Kelly was wrong and R. Kelly was warned about all the underage girls. Yeah, he was warned, but was still able to fly them in. How he fought a man and he can't even write his own name. What computer did he use? He's illiterate. He can't even read the the the, the keys. He can't. He can't. What? He was warned, and nobody said this is not okay. Nobody stopped it. Like I said, all y'all asses need to be in jail. Anyway, I put this picture up of Asriel, <laughs> Asriel next to Angela Bassett. Do y'all see the resemblance, or am I just tripping? Do y'all? <laughs> Now I'm trying to figure out who did this girl's makeup because you know I got I got them natural bags too. Like I ain't even trying to be funny, but come on now. That come on now. Who let her go on camera like that? <laughs> who did that? Why y'all do that? I'm just saying, was this look was this was this on purpose? I don't know. Maybe it was, but anyway. <laughs> We're going to diagnose you with being a flip-flopper, Asriel, and going wherever the wind blows. First, you was all for R. Kelly, and then uh, you are not for him anymore now that you know he's going away forever and all that money has dried up. And um, more than anything, we just want to know, what are you going to do after all this is over, Asriel? Like, what are you going to do? R. Kelly about to be locked up forever. That's going to be it. Are you just going to do interviews about R. Kelly for the rest of your life? They said you was a singer. Are you ever going to get back to singing and sing? Or will you always just be known as a girl that ate R. Kelly's shit? We want to know. So I'm writing you a script to get back to basics. I want you to stop doing these interviews. I don't care how much they're paying you. I mean, are you at least coming out with a book? At least if you come out with a book, you can make some more money from your pain. But after all that run out, then what? What? Where are we going from here? I just want to know. I'm very confused. You was on one side, now you're on another. It doesn't make sense. So, Dr. going to write you a script to get your life together and get you some career planning because uh, after we don't care about this story anymore, uh, the people ain't really going to care about you. I don't know what you're going to do. And stop taking your ass over there to Dubai, as real. Let me put, let me put your picture back up there. I follow you on Snapchat and IG and shit, and I seen last year you was over there in, in, in uh, Dubai. Now, what was your ass doing over there in Dubai? Did you not learn your lesson? Or is it okay now to just be shitted on and to eat the shit now because now you consent to it? I just want to know. I mean, you are of age to eat shit if you want to, but I'm just asking. I don't need you in no kind of country where they shit and piss on people for money. I think you are all shitted and pissed out. I think our days of being a human toilet are over. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. Portia and Simon. Let me put a picture up there. Put a picture up there. Uh, they probably did on purpose to make her look like a victim. Maybe. Maybe. 
She needed PR before she started talking the first time. Sure did. She sure did. All right. Moving right along from that, we're going to talk about Portia real quick. Because Portia has, you know, decided to leave Real Housewives of Atlanta. She said she is not returning. She made the official statement two days ago. But I already told y'all that she was not returning because she has married her Mr. Chocolate, her African prince. She does not need, nor is there any, any, any desire for her to go back on a show that's already going downhill anyway. I mean, Portia gone, Cynthia gone, Nene gone. What's the point at this? What's the point at this point? Throw the whole show away. I'm just saying. But I do got to give you credit, Portia. We're going to give you credit in the doctor's office today. You went from, you know, being an unknown girl in Decatur to getting with football trade, you know, a trade that was showing booty hole on the iMac. Y'all getting in trouble on them damn iMacs and shit. Doing all booty hole on the iMac with a curmudgeon hip that treated you like shit when you should have been lucky to even be next to a woman that looked like you. But then you bounced from trade and then, you know, you 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 hop from man to man for a while. You got yourself together. You was about to put a nigga on a baby contract and then you got the hot dog scamming man. All right, Queen Virgin Remy, Queen Virgin Remy. So you went from trade to, to the cop carousel to the hot dog, the scamming hot dog man. And, you know, he had a little money and he gave you some alizane, some chicken wings and you spread your legs for it. And I ain't mad at it, okay? And then now you with your African prince. You with your African prince. And we, we you know, you, you smart Portia. Now, Portia, you are, are writing a book and you're calling it The Pursuit of Portia. I want you to retitle that book and call it The Price of Pussy. Because that's pretty much what you girls have sold. <laughs> y'all know y'all don't love them old ass men. But, but security is everything. And so I'm not mad at it. All right. So I want you to maybe even retitle your book, either The Price of Pussy or The Pursuit of Paper. Because you're going after your paper. Because Simon is close with Akon. Akon, Akon got the multi-billion dollar loans to create smart cities in Uganda, in Senegal, in, uh, I think in Ghana. No, no, Uganda, Senegal, and another place in Africa too. So Af Africa is the last frontier of the world, if y'all don't know. You want to go get rich? You better open up some businesses over there. That's what you know the Chinese are doing, and they just ain't telling y'all ass. And so anyway, with that being said, that is Portia's plan. She's going to marry Simon. She's going to start investing in those smart cities over there. She's going to open up some business over there. Maybe even put some hair businesses, lash businesses, a makeup line over there. And she's going to become a whole celebrity overseas as well as here too. She's going to make that real money. And in about five to ten years, you will literally be looking at the billionaire Portia. Portia then came a long way. Long way. Long way, ladies. This tells y'all to never give up. All right? She went from trade, spreading ass on iMac, to the scamming hot dog man. All right? That screwed her with uh, uh, for Hennessy, chicken wings, Alizé, and some cheap diamonds. To her African prince. Her African prince. We proud of you, okay? We proud of you. All right? So you go over there. You keep opening up them businesses. You make sure you marry this man. All right? And don't cheat on him like Fallon did. Which I don't think you are. But last but not least, I'm writing you a script to have this man baby to. You know, you need to secure that legacy, Portia. With the, you know, I'm, I, I know you, look, last few years you got left, you won't give it to him. All right? Give him a plethora of children, as many as you can. All right? And just solidify that shit. It can be done. I know y'all said Simon can't have no kids. Take his ass to the doctor. Uh, get that nut out and put it up in you. Y'all can make that shit work. Or oh, he'll get some nut from Shamia's husband. They look the fucking same. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know she got a strong ass uh, insurance policy on him. Por Portia getting paid. Portia ain't giving a fuck about what y'all talking about at all. At all. And I'm not mad at her. Moving right along. We got to talk about Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, the man that this man, Daz Dillinger at the bottom did an interview where he accused Jada Pinkett of being a lover of young boys. And so she is being diagnosed with having an addiction to underage sausage. Now we know she loves ruining young men's lives and we know that, you know, she's been masturbating since she was five and we know that with well, damn Gabrielle Union been too, you know, what's something with them early ass masturbators that they be weird as fuck. But anyway, uh, we know she was okay with, you know, 13, 14 year old. Willow being in the bed with that shirtless white man and said they was just friends and that's how friends hang out and it just didn't look right to me and you know we, we know them kids look traumatized from that house, that palace that mansion and we know everybody that come in that motherfucker be 
fuck when they get out. I mean, August time, but he ain't gonna be alive no more. He wasn't ever the same, having all kinds of shit going on with his face. And then you had a uh, uh, Brashear Gray, you know, drugged out after eating left the path. We trying to figure out what's going on in that household. But anyway, Jada, we want to know: Did you really? Did you really? Did you really mess with Chris Kelly from Criss Cross in 1993? That's what Daz Dillinger is a legend. Did you let him tap that? I know the 90s was a different time in Black Hollywood. I told you about that Black underground sex cult in this industry. I told y'all about it. And now they want to act like that shit didn't happen just because a lot of them are dead now. But no, we did. It happened. Y'all did that shit. So we want to know because in 1993, you were 22. All right? Because you were born in September of 1971. So wouldn't that make her 22? I think so. You were 22. And Chris Kelly was a kid. So we want to know what's really going on. Have you always had this addiction to younger men? We, we want to know why. Why? Jada! Jada, no. We could we we even got more questions too. We also want to know here when August was coming through. Was it was August for you or for you and Will? We want to know too. Because he was actually Jada's friends first. You know what? Is you that mama, that mama milf that's fucking all her son's friends? Is that you, Jada? Talking about I want to feel good, make me feel good, make me feel good. I want to know. I want to know. Anyway, you come to my office and we'll figure it out, Jada. But you probably going to run from my office. You ain't going to never come here. You ain't going to never come here and face the piper. You just not. I'm going to put your script on standby. We got to see what come of that story. We need some people to corroborate that story. And it needs to get big. But, Daz, you watch yourself because anybody that go against the Smiths don't be all right. All right, next we got to... Send a congratulations out to Britney Spears, okay? Britney Spears, who was a victim of MK mind control, all right? She was a victim of spells and black magic rituals and satanic ritual abuse. In addition to being enslaved against her will, kidnapped, uh, uh, overworked, underpaid, no access to her money, uh, uh, emotional, physical, and financial abuse, in addition to enmeshment with a father who wants to fuck her. Her father wanted to screw her just like Jessica Simpson's father wanted to screw her. They had these weird ass obsessions with their daughters and it's only their oldest daughter. They didn't care that much about the second one. It's weird if you ask me. So with that being said, she finally free. Her daddy is not her conservator anymore. I think she's still got another court process to go through, but we just going to basically call her a free woman at this point. She free to do what she wanted to do. Her daddy got to give up the money, give up the properties and give up everything because we all know without his daughter, he wouldn't be shit. So he feel like just because he busted that nut in her mammy that she owed him for life but she didn't she always had the star factor and you was just her father but you put her in the Mickey Mouse Club from a young age you put her through the satanic ritual abuse from a young age and so you made sure that the industry was going to be ready to receive her remember she said she's a slave for you it wasn't for you daddy it was for the industry and the industry the, uh, chewed her up and spit her out and this is what we have left of her today alright y'all tell me what's the difference between a girl at the top and the bottom all right, she looked just like a sister at the top, but top girl still has a soul. Bottom one, soul has been sucked out. Her life story is so sad and her father is to blame. Let's just keep it real. Brittany was a complete cash cow. She wanted to check out of the industry a long time ago. She had a breakdown when her marriage broke down with Kevin Federline. He wasn't nothing but utter gutter white trash, all right? And instead of just getting her the help that she needed and letting her go on with her life, you took that as an opportunity to enslave her to make sure that you were going to continue to milk your cash cow until it was dead. Let's call it what it is. She was supporting everybody around her and couldn't even pay a $1,300 bill at a restaurant in Las Vegas. Vegas. The girl didn't have access to the internet, didn't know what an iMac was or iPad or none of that. Couldn't even see her kid. Think about how awful it is to make her work against her will, make her do shows, say she's too crazy to have her own kids, but she's not crazy enough to do tours or, or six and seven and eight performances per week up in Vegas. Shout out y'all fucking my y'all nothing but users and abusers. So Brittany, you got a clean house at this point because I do truly feel like... There's a hit out on your life, baby girl, because when you take money from people, people get evil as shit. So first part of your script, I mean, your diagnosis, I'm sorry, your script, why well, put diagnosis, sorry. First part of your script, I want you to fire everybody. 
fire the housekeepers, fire the current security, fire everybody that watch over your money. I want you to fire everybody and hire a complete new team. I want you to then put cameras all around your house, all right? You're going to give a new security team access to them cameras, and then you're also going to give, you, you're also going to keep access to them cameras so that you can watch everything that goes on in every single room in your house, and you're going to give them kids of yours access to it too in case something happened to you. Your kids can access them CCTVs, or we know what's up, all right? In addition to that, you're going to watch what you post online. You ain't been free but two or three minutes, Brittany, and you're already showing your bare ass and your titties are still perky after all these years. I do give you credit. Anyway, I say all that to say your family and your people around you is going to be looking for anything to get you locked back up, anything to put you back under 5150 hole. And you do want to not look crazy anymore in the media. So I want you to watch what you post online. Nothing naked. Just normal videos of you being yourself if that's what you want to do. Uh, with that being said, I want you to even watch that boyfriend that you with because here's the thing, Brittany, there is nobody around you that is not benefiting from you in some way, shape, or form so that man said he love you he been beside you he want to put some babies in you and you can go on and do that now you can get that iud about you but my whole thing is you watch his ass too don't be too trusting of anybody i'm sorry to say it, but for the rest of your life you ain't gonna ever be able to truly trust anybody ever again all right uh, make sure you have some security around you wherever you go we don't want to hear about you getting no accident we don't want to hear about you getting princess diana or no shit like that or or, or chester bennington so you make sure you watch who's around you if you feeling sad feeling mad you your emotions out of whack. Don't get online talking about it. Don't pick up no drug habit. Don't pick up no pills. Don't pick up no fentanyl. Don't pick up none of that. I don't even want you picking up liquor, Brittany. Because best believe that they, you know, the brown suits, the uh, the Jakuma they're going to be trying to come after you any way they can. Because I know you done. You done working at this point. You done. And last but not least, I want you to move and live your life. I don't care if you got to move to Hawaii. I don't care if you got to, you know, all this. You know, you, hey, you do what you got to do because these people is after you. Do you really think people that use you for 20 years do you really think people that watch you be a slave lose your kids and just live in 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 servitude do you think they really finna just give up their positions that easily they they on your ass Brittany. just know that you ain't paranoid all them people on your ass your daddy on your ass all right. I don't care. I don't care what he's suffering with. I don't care how old he is. That man, that man is narcissistic. He wants to feel like he has control over you and he wants to fuck you. And I would be surprised if he hasn't ever tried to fuck you before. Now that's the real motherfucking T. Allegedly. So we're gonna get Brittany some help so she can escape and truly escape. Don't stay in that same house and people know every cr crack and crevice of that damn house. It ain't safe, Brittany. It ain't safe. The guy that she with is an escort. He has all the signs. Yeah, he really do. He really do, Loki. He really do. I wonder what he brought around just to keep her company. That's what I want to know. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thank you, love life. They might as well cancel the show. Yep. All right, moving right along. We're going to talk about Wendy Williams. Because Wendy Williams... Push back the start date of her show, just like I told y'all to, because Wendy is not ready and or able or capable of coming up, getting in that chair, doing the skedaddle and the hop, and doing her job. Excuse me. So we are going to write a script for Wendy to retire. We are sending her on her retirement. Okay, We need her to go and heal, truly heal, truly grieve. She's been through a lot, and she's done. Even if she get up in that chair now, it's not going to be the same. And the last season is going to be very tough for her to get through. As a matter of fact, did y'all even recognize that they didn't even announce future seasons? They just said, this is the 13th season. 13th is also an odd number. Did y'all also catch that, that promo video? See, the Jakuma Tati is always working. The 13th floor. Ain't that where people go to disappear on the 13th floor? I thought most elevators didn't even have a 13th floor very spooky you gotta watch your ass Wendy. i'm just saying i'm not i'm not you know between ray j the killer around you and all that other shit I'm, I'm not i'm not buying none of it so with that being said she's pretty much done allegedly nick cannon is her replacement if you look at his daytime talk show that he has coming out it's so similar to wendy's he's coming down the stripper pole he got the chair he got the the graphics pretty much everything is the same she has been replaced all right and we're trying to make sure that she is not illuminati's next sacrifice so wendy is done we are giving her a chill pill and we are sending her to a real rehab not that bullshit she's been going through so she can detox and get off that shit and stay off that shit and then she's done she has nothing left to prove why is she still trying to get up there why is she still trying to hang on but she can't do it right the, the reports say she's over it 
uh, 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 the people don't want to let her out of contract, let her out of contract. Y'all already got a $30 million life insurance policy on it. Y'all get hell. Do y'all want her to croak and die on air? Like, what are y'all trying to do? Hell, maybe y'all is trying to get her to do this shit. I don't know. But it's done and it's over. Golly, the run is over and it's okay, Wendy. It's okay. In life, you want to leave out on top, right? You don't want to leave at the bottom, but you didn't already fell off a lot. So just leave it here and move on, right? You know you want to. Move on. Okay. Nick Cannon has too many friends in Hollywood. They been had Nick in the making. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, they been had Nick in the making. They, they had that shit set in stone years before. Y'all calling her Pandy. I guess Ray J is the Reaper. Listen, I wouldn't be around him. I wouldn't be around him at all. Okay, now, I'm going to uh, take y'all questions for 10, 15 minutes here for my people in the ATL area. Or if you going to be in town on October 29th, I will be hosting my first party in town along with Talia here, the Closet Ratchet. She's another blogger on IG. We're going to have a Holly Hollywood. I be damned we not. Halloween party, okay? And I ain't even going to... Oh, thank you, Michelle. And I ain't even going to take your blood for you to come into the show. I mean, to the party, okay? So we're going to come in. It's Battle of the Decades. I got to figure out what I want to be. I'm going to show y'all who I want to be, but I don't know if I can pull it off. But I don't know, but we, we'll talk about it. Y'all tell me who I should be for Halloween. But come dress. Uh, we can only let 80 people in, so... Once the tickets are sold, they sold this out. You go to eventbrite.com, all right? And um, the moderators should be putting the link in the chat. Thank you, Tiffany. Hey, thank you, Elmira. Thank you, thank you. All right? Nikki said, I will be there. Cool. I want to let y'all know, too, it ain't no, like, separate VIP section or nothing like that. We It's, 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 it's a two-level place, okay? So everybody's going to get to meet me. I'm going to be making my rounds, taking pictures, uh, and we're going to party. Uh, we're going to have food that is uh, infused, and I'm going to leave that at that. But we are going to have a damn good time, all right? Thank you for the donations uh, to my Cash App. And let me show y'all who I want to be. Hold up. I don't know if people will know this, though, and I'm going to low-key need a lace front and contacts. But, I, okay, let me explain. I ain't trying to go in drag, but I'm going to explain who. Let me see. Uh, okay, don't, give me a good picture at least. Okay, there we go. Do, 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 do. All right, come on. Pull up. Is this, wait a minute. Image, okay. Image, damn. All right. All right, this is what I'm trying to be for Halloween. So I need a curly wig. <laughs> I need a curly lace front. I need like hazel contacts. But I don't know if people will know that I'm Philip Michael Thomas if I, you know, like, would you, I don't think they would know. I don't know. Sounds fun. Thank you. If you were Jaguar, it would be fire. Ja oh my God. If I was Taco Bell, baby, Little Nas X. Please give us a vlog store. Okay, okay. I can walk around with a GoPro. I have somebody to do that. That's who I want to be. Can I, can I do it, though? No, that's boring. Okay, but well, who I'm going to be? What Y'all want me to be Lil Nas X? Wait a minute. Go as a dark skin. Keep sweat. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all said keep sweat? No, they wouldn't know. Yeah, I don't think they would know. I don't. I don't think they would know. They if I get a curly wig, they might think I just got like a, a. I don't know. They wouldn't know. Women of a certain age. Okay. Okay. I don't want to be Chance the Rapper. Um. Wait a minute. Okay. Can I go as the baby? What about the? I. Okay. Can now? Can I pull off the baby? Well, I don't know if I can. I have to slap y'all at the party. That's the only way y'all would know. Wait a minute, I can dress. Wait a minute, how does this nigga dress? Okay, chains. Okay, so let me put that. Okay, so y'all said, I, I'm going to say the baby or y'all said Lil Nas X. Okay, let me. I'm going to have to put up a poll so we can take a, a vote. Uh, Let's see.
Let's see, let's see. I damn sure ain't coming as a pregnant little Nas X. I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, let me pull it up here. So we got Lil Nas X, <laughs> and we got the baby. I need an exotical, a yellow bone. <laughs> Oh, uh, fuck. Okay. Do baby. Do, 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 do. All right. There we go. See, I want to be, I want to be the baby for Halloween, but then I'd have to like draw a bunch of, I guess, tattoos everywhere. Big chains. I don't know. I don't know what else I could do. Y'all said Ice Cube, son. Y'all said Drake. Okay. How am I going to be Drake? How am I going to be Drake? Wear a catchy suit. Oh my God, you said be a BBL doctor, not a BBL doctor. Oh, I would have to wear a diaper. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Mm -mm. Rick James, I could do Rick James. I could do Rick James. They said Drake. Drake. Okay, Ice Cube. Um, not the Statue of Liberty. You know what? <laughs> I am done. I am done. Cut a, cut the heart in your head. <sighs> See, y'all want me... <sighs> okay, hold up. How would I dress as... Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I mean, I could. I promise y'all, and I always tease my mama because she met him in the nineties. But that's not that's not my daddy. I could, yo, I could low key start a rumor that that's my daddy. Low key, I could, cause I know. One of the other women that was in the room that actually went in the room with him, but she's married to a comedian now, so I shouldn't put her out there like that. Ooh, that would probably get me like on a TV show. I just make a rumor and say I'm Ice Cube's long lost son. They would believe it. They would believe it. Let me see what y'all say. Here. Oh, wait, let me look here. Let me look here. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. Shit, no stuffy. Uh, okay. If you're trying to lose the uh, where the hotline hotline bling, you said be be Quavo. Somebody said Billy D. Williams. Yes, if I wear that curly wig, y'all will probably think Billy D. Williams. Probably. Ice Cube. No, I no. Okay, let me find a picture of Billy D. Williams. You know, I do got a damn... Uh, my face looks like I belong like in the 80s and 90s. I don't even look like I belong in the century, for real. Uh, Let's see. Billy D. Was he in his 20s in this picture? Maybe. But see, if y'all don't know Philip Michael Thomas, you think they gonna know Billy D. Williams? Ooh, excuse me. You think so? Oh no. Okay, hold up, 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 hold up. What the fuck is it? Um, really? All right, there we go. Y'all think they would know? I don't know if they would know. Oh no, not I'm not gonna be Pootie Tang. No, 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 no. I'll be sure. Kevin Hart or Tory Lanez? I could be Tory Lanez. You look 80. Yeah, I do look like 80. Yeah, yeah, I have a very 80s face. Uh, Prince is a good one. If I do Prince, my ass cheeks going to be out. And I know y'all going to take them pictures, post them, and they going to go viral, and I don't care. If I do Prince, I'm doing the platform. Well, Prince had heels. 
That means I got to put on heels and my ass going to be out. And it's a lot of ass. So I don't know if y'all ready for that. Uh, Let's see. What about Mike Epps? They ain't going to know it's Mike Epps, though. No, I don't see. I don't. I wouldn't even know how to do Floyd Mayweather. I mean, unless I'm in like a boxing outfit. Um, Prince. Okay, let me see. Prince and who else? Tory Lanez. Okay, I'm liking the Prince idea though. I ain't gonna lie. I'm liking the Tory Lane idea too. Prince. Uh. I hope don't nobody uh, look at my Google search. Oh, I can't even put that up. Oh, no, nah, I can't wear that. Bobby Lights wore that outfit. Well, oh, man. Oh, oh damn. Uh, okay, what else did Prince wear? Because, uh, yeah. I put that in and Bobby Lights pop up. I'm good. Not wearing nothing Bobby wore. Okay, so Prince... I'm still going to need a wig on Tory Lanez. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh, okay. So, uh, J, 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 J. All right. So, we got Tory or... Got Prince and Prince. All right, turn that down. Turn that down. Okay, so we here. So we got Tory or Prince. No, I'm not gonna do my gifts. Cause how am I gonna be my gifts? Rick James. Flavor Flav, wait a minute, I ain't dark enough for the baby, but Flavor Flav, no, nah. mm-mm, mm-mm. Lenny Kravitz, I would need some dreads. I would need some dreads. That, yeah, somebody said if I'm Tory, get a gun and a horse. Oh, my God. They ain't gonna know who, oh, they ain't gonna know who Red Fox is. I could do Red Fox. Bleach your hair like Cisco. Oh my God. Not Cat Williams with the perm wig. Okay. Uh, Cisco. I listened to Cisco in the car today. So we got, you know, if I can find this red jacket though, that might actually work. Okay, Cisco. Who else y'all say? Cammy, you uh Cammy, you got me messed up. I'm I'm not coming that's no Jay-Z. Now you got me messed up. Uh let's see. Go as Diddy. Nah, I gotta piss on somebody if I'm gonna be Diddy. Um, let's see. All right. We got that. Or what was the other one? I missed it. Wait a minute. It was somebody else. Kunta Kente, wow. Oh, y'all dis oh y'all disrespectful. Y'all disrespectful for that. Y'all disrespectful for that. Kunta Kente, wow. Lenny Kravitz. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I would need a dread wig, like a rocker's outfit. Uh Okay. Damn, Len Lenny is super thin too. Um let's see. Alright, hold up, y'all. I'm putting up the pictures. Hold up. Shit. Hold up. Last ones. Last ones. I mean, look, here's the thing. We all I mean, we gonna be high at the party, so it ain't like it's not like it's gonna matter really. After I eat that infused food, you ain't even gonna know. Um, and 
Who was the other one we just said? Bobby V, I gotta be running from a trans woman. Oh, Cisco, there we go. I gotta be running from a trans woman. Uh, I gotta be looking like Winnie the Pooh with just a t-shirt and no draws if I'm gonna play uh, Bobby Valentino. I could do the Cisco and I'll do and I'll uh, dye my hair blue, uh, blue and I can do that. That ain't even blonde. That shit like white. That shit's like what? That shit's like he just bleaching and didn't even put no toner in that hole. Um. Yeah, I would need a like, I would need a whole lace front. <laughs> <laughs> Who said Coy Ray? Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Y'all know who I would. Oh my God. Y'all know who I could be. See, we gonna I'm y'all gonna have me here all night. Wait a minute. What's the state form guy? Jake from State Form. But would people get that though? I don't know if they would get it. Okay, wait a minute. I could be Jake from State Farm. Okay, come on, golly. I could be Drake from uh, uh, Drake, Jake from State Farm. Not Gucci, man. Cisco, yeah, I like Cisco. I li I like Cisco too. I like Cisco. Jesse Smollett. How would I dress as Jesse Smollett? Wait a minute. How would how would I dress as Jesse Smollett? Okay. We okay. Wait a minute. We getting closer to figuring it out. Uh let's see. Okay, so. Jesse, what happened to Jesse? Where Jesse at? All right. So I would need some curl juice. Little mini curl juice. Okay. These, these are, I'm not light skinned though. These are all light skinned people. But anyway, um, y'all think Jesse? Kanye, okay. <laughs> okay. Y'all think y'all think Kanye? Benzino, I now I don't have a neck. Actually, since I've been going to the chiropractor and stretching out, I got a little bit of a neck now. I swear I'm probably like a half inch taller. Like, oh my god, y'all so fucked up. But yeah, me and Benzino, we both ain't got no neck, so it could work. Let me see. Benzino. Thank you for the donations. And I've been working out. So it could work, but y'all wouldn't don't would y'all know I'm Benzino? And why y'all giving me all these light skinned dudes? Okay, well, they come up as Benzino. Y'all think of Benzino? Nah, look, I put in a lot of work. I ain't gonna lie. Your boy's at 16% body fat now, but I, I ain't got no LL Cool J stomach. I ain't even feel a lot to myself. Um, Let's see. You're not dark skin. Yes, I am. Um, Genuine, I'm gonna need a, uh, I have to put in a texturizer in my head. Damon Dash, so you can run up on people. Me and Damon Dash got the same kind of head. It could work, but y'all wouldn't know I'm Damon Dash. Y'all wouldn't know. 
Y'all wouldn't know. Okay, so y'all saying either Jake or Ice Cube. So let's take Benzino down. So no Jussie? No Jussie? Okay, no Jussie. Bye, Jussie. All right, bye, Cisco. Now we're going to leave Cisco up there. Who else did y'all just say? Now you know I'm not going to be Tyler Perry. Just, I don't look like just... Y'all giving me all light skinned dudes or mixed dudes. I don't, I can't. I'm, how are you going to know I'm Justin Combs? We are the same height. So that's right. I would, I would need a fucking S curl. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Okay. Da, 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 da. Justin Combs. I guess I could walk around with a Ciroc bottle. I don't <laughs> y'all giving me people I'm like the ugly version of, but it's cool though. <laughs> it's totally cool. I don't know. I get we uh, this is another light skinned dude. Tyrese. I could be Tyrese. I could be you know what? You trying to get me to come to my let me stop. Uh no I'm not coming as Beyonce. Uh Safari David Banner No 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 okay Y'all said Rick James with the wig Okay let's see Rick James Y'all said curly wig huh Uh Oh, damn. Oh, you know what? Oh, y'all, for real? I would do it, though. I ain't gonna front. I need a guitar, too. All right, right there. Oh, I hope y'all can't hear my stomach, but... I'm, anyway, hope y'all can't. Y'all play too much. Y'all really do. No, I'm not being Shanene. Cisco. I think Storm really just said he's dark skinned. Ma'am, I'm going to need you to just accept it. Um, Let's see. Birdman. I don't want to be Uncle Ruckus either. Damn, put a rope around your neck and you just see. Damn. Damn, I could do that though. Keep your shades on, disagree with everyone, and mention how you put everybody on. They will know it's Dame Dash. Ah, I don't know. I ain't going to front, though. I ain't going to front. The Rick James or the Cisco is, 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 is calling me. Or Tory Lanez. That's calling me. No, I'm not going to be Jay-Z. No. No. No, ma'am. Tiger. Mm. Nah, I don't want to be Tiger. You know I can't pull off no Amari Hardrick. Stop. I can't pull that off. I ain't even finna lot of myself. Stop. I think it's Cisco. Yeah, I think I think it's Cisco or uh Rick James. Or Lil Nas X, which I would kill that outfit. But they gonna drag can, look, can you imagine the YouTube videos that's gonna be done if I come as Lil Nas X? Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesse, a rope in a bleach bottle. Okay. Jordan Peele. 
Ooh, I do kind of look like Jordan uh, a little bit. I could be Jordan Peele, but are you gonna know how you gonna know it's Jordan Peele? Hold on. This is another nigga that look like my daddy a little bit, but that's not my daddy. Okay. Uh oh, Jordan Peele married to a white woman? Oh, Jordan Peele is mixed. Wait a minute. Wait a motherfucking minute. Wait a minute. So you telling me how many mixed people is in Hollywood? I'm looking. Oh, oh, he is mixed. I'm looking at that scalp. That scalp look real Obama ish. Oh, he just got them Negro Negro lips. Huh? OK, I could do that. But who's going to know that I'm him? Y'all not gonna know. Like, how you gonna know? Who said Nicki Minaj? I'm gonna need you to stop. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to stop. I'm gonna need you to stop. Uh, Jesse, don't do it. Uh, who else? Yeah, Buster. I don't want to be Buster Rhymes. Um, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, so I have to wear a cutoff shirt. The women ain't gonna know who that is, though. I know it's mostly women who watch me. Let me see. Hold up. Okay, so that means I'm literally going to have to dress like this. And the, and these niggas may think I'm a cheerleader if I come dressed like this. I don't know if I can pull this off. I'm definitely taking the earrings off if I come as this. That's Ezekiel Elliott. That's the only way you're going to know who I'm dressed as. Y'all think I'm finna wear that? Who the hell said Lizzo? Yeah, like they're they're not gonna know who that is. <laughs> they're not gonna know who that is. They're really not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Anyway, oh my god, oh my god. I could be Nelly. I could do that too. All right. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. All right. I have fun tonight, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. And uh, I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Everybody wants this cookie. I spoil your white and cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie. My spoil your white and cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this cookie. My spoil your white and cookie. Yeah, everybody wants this people. We are back. We are back. And we are about to get started now. The doctor is in. The doctor is in. All right, I'm feeling better. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. The doctor feeling better, okay? Nurse Tiffany got me back right. And we back in the office to, to hand out some scripts because um, I felt like we needed an emergency meeting. This is not going to be able to wait until next Saturday because these celebrities, of course, are sick as hell. And I'm here to help them get better. People out here acting like they need to be on the back of a damn milk carton when they don't, giving us haphazard ass made up dances, thinking they can go against Chris Brown when they can't. People is leaving shows even though we long left them in our hearts and our souls a long fucking time ago and people breaking up after 17 18 years together as if you gonna leave me after taking half of my life or right, kelly they've been found guilty is anybody surprised i'm surely not and we gonna write him a script for exactly where he deserves to go are y'all ready to get started because i am 
Are y'all ready? Because I am. I am. Can y'all hear me and see me good? I think you can. So let's get right on into it. First things first. Mm -mm -mm. We got to talk about Omarion. <laughs> I was about to call him Omarion Brown. I was about to miss you and Chris Brown. Well, I guess I was missing it because Chris Brown been on your tongue. Omarion was recently interviewed and said that he was ready to go up in the verses, uh, was ready to compete in the verses and compete in the verses against Chris Brown. And I said, Chris Brown, Chris Brown. Now, don't get me wrong. Y'all both can dance and y'all both talented. But Omarion is more on the, you know, the three or four or five hit one side of the game. And Chris Brown, him, his crack, his coke, and his meth, and whooping holes his ass, and doing a backflip from a seated position. His ass has been having the game on lock for the last 15 some odd years. Back when he was wholesome all the way to the devil, the devil that he is today. All right, All the way back from when he respected women to when he had hoes eating out other hoes bloody coochie boxes in rooms that was locked with porn going and cell phones locked in the laundry basket. So at the end of the day, Chris Brown had a whole lot going on and instead of uh, uh, making these exoticals into single mothers and he has still been holding down the game. The only person that Chris Brown can go against is Michael Jackson if you dig him up from the grave or Ursher. That's it. That's it and that's all. Omarion, I have to diagnose you with delusion for thinking you was even on the same level as with Chris Brown. I also have to diagnose you with trying to April Jones us. You know, you was trying to pull a wool over our head in that interview, much like you pulled a wool over her head and acted like you was going to stay with her for life and you didn't. And she still don't know why you walked out and, and, and left one day. I mean, I guess she said, damn, this nigga went to the store and got some cigarettes and just never came back. I mean, damn. I mean, you was every stereotype. Anyway, anyway, with that being said, um, <clears throat> and then we also still got to diagnose you with breaking hearts. So I'm going to write you a quick script, Omarion. It ain't nothing too bad. I want you to come back to reality and who you will be going against in the verses is Mario. You guys are on the same level, got the same amount of hits, and as far as being a household name, y'all are on the same level. Point blank in the period. Set up, get with Mario. Hell, he ain't doing nothing else. Set up that verses or set up whatever white people run versus not because they ain't ran by Negroes no more and go ahead and run that back. Last but not least, I want you to call April. Actually talk to her. She's been begging to talk to her since the day you got up out of bed and left and never came home. You know what I always wonder when people just get up and leave their house do y'all screw the night before you leave your significant other i just want to know like do you hit it one last time because i would just hate for you to have cream pie her the night before and do and, and, and when you knew you was gonna leave the whole fucking time but anyway you're gonna call april you're gonna sit down and let her know exactly why you left her and you're going to uh give her some closure so that she can move on that girl been out here rubbing scratching and beating her puss ever since you left the house so as a matter of fact she went from beating her puss with a lesbian in some kitchen in some kitchen that over some nigga house and we don't even know who it was to being with dr dre we know dr dre ain't gonna do nothing but beat up her face so she beating up her cooch and dr dre gonna beat up her face and all because you never gave the girl no closure on why you put two kids in her and never called her back now i know you know I, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that, all right? So you take this script on Marion, you call your baby mother, and you give us some clothes. Otherwise, she ain't going to be good to nobody in life ever again. You call Marion and set this shit up. Talking about Chris Brown. Chris Brown? Chris Brown? I don't know damn love was Chris Brown. Moving right along, we got to talk about this story. Oh, God, I hope we ain't talking about these trash buckets no more ever again in life. But this is leftover from last week. So let's go on and knock it out, all right? We got Jeannie Kim to my Jenkins, Jeezy, and uh, uh, we got Freddie Hard Ties there, okay? Some text messages was leaked from Freddie's um, new boo, his new fiance, who's never going to be a wife because he will forever get that spousal support from Jeannie Ma, who will forever siphon that money out of Jeezy's bank account into hers, into Freddie's, into the, into, the, into the white folks' house. So at the end of the day, uh, 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 Mr. White Man and Miss White Lady, Miss Wonder Bread is still a nigga that's supporting your household at the end of the day. How does it feel, Freddie? How does it feel to know that it's a black man that's working to support you? Now, I will say you probably don't feel shit because at the end of the day, you living scot-free off a black man and white folks been living scot-free off niggas since the inception of this country. So then when you really think about it, Freddie, you just doing what your ancestors taught you. I'm just saying it's in your DNA. I don't know why this story 
Freddie referring to Jeannie as trash was a surprise. I already told y'all how Wanda Bread get down. When you date out, you are considered trash. There are levels to this game. I can't even write on no script because he wasn't doing nothing but being a white man. This is what they say in rooms that you are not in. When they date out, it is considered dating down. White is at the top, then it's Asian, then it's white Hispanics, then it's black at the very bottom. That's it. And I'm sorry for you Afro lads, they don't even they don't even recognize y'all. Don't nobody recognize y'all. And we need to be recognizing y'all. But that's another story for another day. I'm trying to figure out why y'all thought in any world that he thought that him and Jeannie Ma was the same or equal. Y'all thought just because he was unsuccessfully cream pieing her for 20 years and was willing to put a baby in her that he wasn't going to call white, he was going to call Asian. Mm -hmm. He knew damn well he put that baby in her, that baby wasn't going to look like him. Just like she know damn well the baby that Jeezy just put in her ain't going to look like her. It's going to look like Jeezy with a little bit of a Tyson Beckford. I'm just calling it what it is because, yes, Tyson Beckford got a little bit of Chinese in him, too. And I'm still trying to figure out, Jeannie, how that shit finna work. Jeannie, when your mammy had you, she was going to call you Sunshine. Remember, Jeannie? You said this. Your name was supposed to be Sunshine. But she said you was too dark to be called Sunshine. If your ass is dark, what's she finna think about this grandbaby that you finna shit out? What's she gonna think about this grandbaby that she finna shit out? What's she gonna think about this baby's hair that you finna have? She freaked out when you was a teenager and you put them damn dreads in your head. What's she finna think about the baby that you finna have? That's finna look just what what do you get? What what do you get? I gotta quote, what do you get when you mix a meal dud and general child chicken? What do you get? What do you get? All right. We know what we get with, 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 with general child chicken and wonder bread and mayonnaise. Their child's probably gonna be beautiful, I'm not gonna lie. But how is your mammy gonna treat it? This ain't nothing but a case of everybody trying to hop into a higher fucking social class. And y'all don't see it. Jeezy round here putting up shit to a billy. She ain't nothing but four, five months pregnant, right? Jeannie, mom, we don't know if you got a baby in there or, or if you had some Taco Bell the night before, right? So he he putting a he putting the ultrasound thing all on her stomach as if it's his first damn child. How do y'all older children be feeling when y'all have new babies and be acting like this the only baby you didn't had this the first baby you had this the first this ain't the first heartbeat you didn't had. This ain't the first heartbeat you had. This ain't the first child you had. And we ain't even going to talk about any hoe that you didn't pay for an abortion. Because if you a black rapper, you didn't pay for some abortion. So this ain't your first child either living or dead. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Is Storm tripping? Is Storm tripping and I want to tell the truth? Okay, 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 okay. So let's get back to it. So Jeezy wanted to walk into certain rooms. And so he got with Jeannie. Not to mention, this is what he actually finds attractive. Since he was a child, this is what he wanted. But, the, oh, we gonna tell the truth, bitch! We gonna tell the truth. As a man, when you black and ugly, you know that you can't get certain women of other races unless you got money. It is what it is. When he amassed the right amount of clout and wealth, he was able to get a genie, who is considered a throwaway of our own community, as well as the white community, just a throwaway period. She's well past our prime, technically. 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 But he is going to a higher social class because she's not black. She is still going to be seen as above anybody in her in house. Oh, let me explain. I thought about this one day. I said, if I just so happen to be in an interracial relationship, I was just hypothetically thinking. I said, no matter what, I will always be the nigga of the house. Everybody going to have some white in them or whatever in them but me. I said, damn, I was telling my friend that. I said, wow. That's crazy. 
I'm not in an interracial relationship, but if I was, that would be the case. So guess what? Jeannie knows no matter what, she got Jeezy's balls in her hands. You understand? They have a divorce. She going to come out on top. She going to call the police. She going to come out on top. Any custody issues, she going to come out on top. Do you understand? So then Freddie quickly moved on after her and got with Wonder Bread, got with one of his own kind, got with what he knew was going to give him babies that looked like him. Babies that would be at the top of the totem pole or society or whatever. All right. Blonde hair, blue eyes. In white, in the white world, that is the creme de la creme right there. Blonde hair, blue eyes. So when he say he stepped up, he literally means that. Literally. Literally. This is how the majority of them think. Ain't nobody damn dumb. Y'all had them mixed kids and y'all hope that they look as non-black as possible. And I'm trying to figure out why you let some black go in you and you don't want it to look like what went in you. But anyway, I say all that to say, none of this is surprising. This is a case of social climbing. Everybody trying to be something that they not. And everybody ain't fully got over that self-hate from their childhood trauma. Now I want y'all to take my script and get out this office. It ain't much I can do for y'all. Everybody's fate is set in stone. Jeannie got Jesus balls. Jesus gonna finance Jeannie, her family, and Freddie's family. And to that white girl that he with, ma'am, if you was really about it, about it, you'd have done that interview with whomever because the truth don't need no preparation, ma'am. You don't want to go over there and talk to Jada because you said she's a strong black woman and I don't know if she's going to be on my side. Your side is either true or it's false, which isn't. You don't need nobody to take your damn side. You should just be going to tell the damn truth. He told you not to be with no brown people because they all stick together, much like white people do. Boy, bye. You let an Asian girl beta you for 20 years. You are a failure to your own people. To your new chick that you with, he's never going to marry you. You will forever be a baby mother as long as that spousal support is coming in from Jeannie. Into Jeezy and Jeannie, good luck. I hope y'all never break up. That's it. Because Jeannie, you can't go back now. Ain't no other man, ain't no other white man going to wife you after you have a Negro child. You are stuck with the Negroes. I hope you're okay with that. Anyway, moving right along. Oh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Now, with that being said, we got to talk about Cash Doll real quick, all right? She is expecting her first baby, or at least her first baby that we know about. But we're going to go, you know, industry people's a little different. They usually have children that we just don't see. Y'all ain't heard that from me, though. But anyway, uh, Cash Doll and her boyfriend, Tracy T., all right, uh, hold on before I put that picture up because I, I, I just want to give Cash Doll her kudos. The doctor got to give her, her kudos. She found happiness with a short nigga. And the short niggas is up a thousand points with this. He climbed that tree. It did what, what was what was needed. He understood the assignment. Ladies, the love of your life is the guy that's probably just a couple inches shorter than you. Now, you know, yeah, they go out in public and I see him with them three inch spike boots. Nigga, you ain't Prince, all right? But we are going to give them congratulations because they are a black couple all right and we're gonna say that they baby go, baby gonna be pretty because they actually a pretty couple now cash doll i was looking at tracy scout and i see he on the natural s curl side of the game so i know when he eat your box you rub that soft head and you wanted a baby with that same hair and that's probably why you stuck with him but i i see right through the bullshit but it's all good anyway i say all that to say congratulations on finding happiness okay despite what the blogs and what people in the comments got to say no words on if this is a geriatric pregnancy or not because y'all know y'all been trying to figure out her age for the longest she says she's 29 Y'all say she's 42. Sometimes Google says she's 65. I don't know how old she is. I honestly think she's probably like late 30s. I think she says she like early 30s, and I think she's late 30s. I just think that is what it is. But with that being said, the doctor is for you, for you giving a short nigga a chance, Cash Dog. The doctor's going to write you a script for free ultrasounds, free plastic surgery to get them titties back nice and perky after you have your baby. We've seen them titties in black mafia family, and they they were, they, they look, wow. I, we, everybody was impressed. Another thing, Cash Dog, you was in that scene, uh, uh, you know, having a sex scene, and you ain't want your mama to see it, but you got a whole belly, so your mama know you get down. But anyway, we're going to provide you with adjustments for the rest of your pregnancy, and y'all get on out of my office and y'all have a good day. Y'all have a good day. Short niggas up a thousand. He understood the assignment. 
He really did. He really did. Ladies, you got to give the guys a chance that, you know, that you've been overlooking. Sometimes, literally, you you tower over him. It's okay. It's okay to bend over, lean down, and kiss your man. You don't get a little back pain, and he can rub it out. Anyway, moving right along, we got to talk about Jason, Joel, Desirulo, and Jenna Fumes. This is another <laughs> another man with an exotical, another exotical relationship that has broken up. Is J- D- Jason Desirulo, is he Haitian? I think he's Haitian, right? Not that it matter, but I'm just asking. See Haitian? I think that sounds Haitian or French or something. Anyway, um, after uh, just uh, having a baby four months ago, they have decided to split up but are determined to be great co-parents of one another. So I'm diagnosing them with having postpartum flight. Uh, um, disappointing. <clears throat> Uh, disapp- oh shit, I can't even read I, The doctor can't even read what he wrote Anyway, I'm diagnosing Jason with Perpetuating the stereotype in the black community You ain't done, you, you didn't marry that girl You didn't make this girl a baby mama too And um, this shit is just ridiculous Y'all just had a baby four months ago Why are y'all breaking up? Now there's been some rumors out there Okay, you know, this is Jenna's ex right here So, I'm not saying she slept with an ex But it was some rumors that she cheated on him And then there were some rumors That he cheated on her so which do you believe? I'd have been told both. Do you believe Jason cheated? Do you believe Jenna cheated? Who y'all believe? And this is her ex. I just want y'all to compare her ex to her current. Because they don't look nothing alike. Ew, ew, ew. I mean, she like black dudes, but I don't, I don't see any similarities there. So maybe she's the open type. But what y'all think? What y'all think? Jason would be the next Nick Cannon? They say suspect. Let's see. Exotical tax. Never liked him for what he did to George Sparks. Show did George Sparks nurse his ass back to health and he left her and repoed the car. So glad he cheated. They saying Jason cheated. They saying Jason cheated. So I will be writing him a script for a lie detector test. I'm also writing a script for you, Jason, to go back home to your child and your baby mother. She just shit at that baby y'all you cannot leave until your baby at least makes it past his first birthday uh in addition to that sir i'm uh, sending you guys some um not some premarital counseling because you know a black man would do everything but marry you but i am gonna send a counseling in there so you guys can work through your issues i don't give a damn what y'all going through you just busting inside her and if you can manage to bust inside her you can manage to work through whatever is going on y'all 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 some punks out here y'all really is not made for a relationship how you just have a baby four months ago and talk about we've decided to go our separate ways when you can't it's too late you have a child together sir and just know if you leave her you will be paying child support plus an exotical tax that's at least another three four five thousand dollars a month come on sir what are you doing it's cheaper to keep and you want to keep your family intact and you surely don't want to have another black child growing up in a single mother home all right especially before he even reaches the age of one carry your ass back to your baby mama and your child and in hell you got enough money your ass is making seventy five thousand dollars per tiktok video your house is big enough she can stay on one side and you can stay on the other you better will smith and jada pinkett this shit and do what you need to do we, we we in a whole new day we're not going for this bullshit they shit out children and be broken up the next day y'all some punks y'all have one argument and be ready to be over go home jason and tend to your family Moving right along from that, we needed to actually come and talk about Nick Cannon. I decided to actually, uh, I'm sorry, Nicholas Cannon, I'm calling you Nicholas. I decided to actually uh, put up this old picture of you uh, with the tattoo of Mariah that you put on your back, the stupidest ass decision you didn't ever make. Well, probably making a bunch of children knowing that, you know, you're going to die soon is even more stupid or irresponsible or just selfish, immature or whatever in between. But with that being said, you are the baby maker. You are the sperminator. I dare say between you and future, I, you future Lil Wayne, I don't know who's worse um anyway i gotta diagnose you with being sick as fuck and selfish you're steady out here having kids that you may or may not be around to actually raise you're steady out here having kids and then splitting up the inheritance of said kids (laughs) i don't know who told nicholas that the only thing you needed to raise children with is a photo shoot and money but that's not how it works they need your time and your attention in between the five jobs you work to afford your lifestyle your hoes and to keep all these women happy ain't no way you spend enough time with these damn children so i gotta diagnose you with being sick as fuck 
and selfish, all right? In addition to that, you done finally carried your ass to therapy and your therapist told you to remain surrogate. I'm writing you a script to get a vasectomy. There is no surrogacy with you, sir. You have already proven that you are irresponsible with your penis. So there is no, there is, there, there, there is no, cel oh, that's a surrogacy, celibacy. There is no celibacy with you. You will get a vasectomy and, and, and that way when you are out here raw dogging these women, I'm sorry, raw dogging the exoticals because you make sure you strap up for the blacks. If they darken in the paper brown bag, you will be wearing a condom with them. We want to make sure that the only thing you have to worry about when you raw dogging is a good old STD. But if you're a part of Hollywood, 80% of them got the herp herp and about 60 about 50 to 60 percent actually got the other shit anyway so you know pretty much if you in hollywood you carrying around some you itching and burning some way don't act like Urshan, the only one out here scratching his nuts as he dancing out there in vegas they all scratching and itching hell we didn't you know got into y'all storage closets and seen y'all valtrex prescriptions no shade but all shade anyway also got diagnosed with, with using your last years on earth to populate it without regards to what's going to be left behind when you go misusing Bible verses for your own sexual pleasure. You don't know if you want to be Christian, Muslim, you don't know if you're Indian or Jew. You say that the Bible say to be fruitful and multiply. God meant that with your wife. In one household, not populating the world. Nicholas. In addition to that, <clears throat> you are a fake ass King Solomon out here. King Solomon had like 700 children. Apparently, your ass is trying to catch up with them, but this ain't the Bible days, and you will be paying for all your indiscretions, okay? So, like I said on the script, you're going to uh, get closure with Mariah. You never got over the fact that the woman that you obsessed over for over a decade out alpha your ass and uh, didn't uh, bow down to you and pretty much left you. You never really got over that. You're trying to find love in every woman that you put a baby in and it ain't going to work. You are going to get a, 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 a facility to house all of your baby mamas and all of your children in hell. You pretty much buy like an old uh, school building and renovate that bitch for all them kids that you got because clearly you're trying to make a football, basketball, and a soccer team. And uh, in addition to that, we, we we chopping your nuts off. You done. You done. You done. There's no more kids for you, sir. It's over. It's over. Deal with the ones you got. You don't want to say you, you could die any day. Now, I ain't trying to burn no bread on you. But you out here populating the earth that you ain't going to be here for. Damn, council talking about you need to slow down. Be celibate. No. You need to stop. You need to stop. All right? Let's move on to our next script. Let's move on to our next script. All right, we got, damn, did I forget? Uh, I be skipping. The doctor be tripping. I ain't been smoking lately, though. That's probably why my ass is all off. Damn, I ain't been smoking lately. Well, that's good, though, right? Sober life. Anyway, next we got to talk about Stormy Nicole Wellington and NeNe Leakes. Okay, now Stormy, I'm going to let you sit right up here next to the doctor because we got the same name. So you cool with me. Anyway, um, we got to diagnose both of these ladies with being very shady towards one another. Now, according to NeNe Leaks, Stormy Wellington stole her pillow talk name and concept. All right. Uh, we all know that Nene Leakes had a Pillow Talk episode on Real Housewives of Atlanta. We remember that because Nene was round there, batting her head and sweating. Candy was about to drag you in this bitch. Ma, uh, 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 Mallory was running after she pushed Todd. All right. Apollo had a prison flashback and beat the hell out of Kenya's friend. And we all know that that night was full of that and that liquor. If y'all going to tell me them people wasn't on that booger sugar that night, you lying. Whoever was on production, I'm I'm willing to bet my money y'all slipped them a little something, something. I mean, I'm just saying everybody was sweating, and that room wasn't that fucking hot. Anyway, with that being said, Nene Leakes also had other plans uh, and, and planned to do conferences with the Pillow Talk name, allegedly. But now Stormy Wellington is doing it and making a lot of money from it. And so Stormy said, if you feel like I took some from you, sue me. Now, here's the crazy thing. Stormy and Nene actually met in about 2016. They started hanging around each other. All right, this is a throwback picture of them that Stormy posted after uh, Greg Leaks actually died. All right, there's Stormy on the right. And then there's Nene. Well, you can't, you can't miss Nene ass. Anyway, with that being said, 
Who do you think is shady? Is Stormy shady for using a pillow talk name? Is pillow talk a common term so Nene need to get over it? Or do Nene need to learn to start keeping her business and her mouth closed and, 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 and stop telling people her ideas? Nene, I'm putting this script all on you. Stormy been who Stormy was from the very beginning. Stormy about that money by any means necessary. And so if you gonna throw up a free idea, she gonna take it and run with it. But you ain't the first person to say pillow talking. You won't be the last. But I will say this, uh, Nene. I'm simply writing you a script to learn how to keep your mouth closed, okay? And to call your attorneys to start trademarking your ideas and not just suing Bravo and suing Andy Cohen. Back in the day, you had an idea to put some gay bars out on... Um, in Beverly Hills on uh, Rodeo Drive, all right? And you consulted with Lisa Vanderpump first from uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And she told you, oh, darling, it's much too crowded over there. You don't want a restaurant over there. And then two years later, we have Sir and we have Pump. Yes, 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 yes. You got to learn to keep your motherfucking mouth closed. It ain't no friends in the game. It ain't personal. It's only business. I do want to know who y'all got in a fight, NeNe versus Stormy. Who you think going to win? I want to know, because Stormy says sue her, and they both to take it to the streets. They both some street-ass women. I want to know who y'all think going to win that fight. Who y'all think going to win that fight, Stormy or Nene? I want to know. I want to know. They said Stormy the scammer. They said Nene's hair is giving, is giving ramen noodles. I'm just saying, y'all let me know. But that being said, don't trust nobody with your ideas, even your friends. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Next on the list, we got to talk about Cynthia Bailey. All right, uh, Cynthia Boring Bailey. Uh, this is a throwback of her. Ooh, wow, that guy Cynthia's beautiful. Damn. Anyway, Cynthia, Diddy, and I don't know who that is on the right, but that ain't important. What's important is that Cynthia then finally made it to the media to let us know that she has decided to not return to Real Housewives of Atlanta after many, many months of thinking about it. And we are here to let her know that she is now finally deciding to leave Real Housewives, but we have already left her. We left her after like season nine or 10. She really had nothing else to offer after her and Peter broke up. I'm just being very honest. I mean, the most exciting thing Cynthia did on that show was kick Portia in her pussy on Lake Lanier. And I and, and I wasn't mad at her for doing that. You know, like Nene said, there's another side to Cynthia. But Cynthia has the Cynthia, Cynthia is not made for reality TV, in my opinion. All right. She lives a regular life. She don't have a lot of drama going on. So there it's just not much to work with with her. If it's not the magic of drama going on and she's the mediator, if she ain't mediating, we don't really have a place for her. Just like Candy Burris Tucker, we don't really have a place for her either. We just don't. So we are glad that you left. Cynthia, the doctor is letting you know it is a compliment to not be good for reality TV. That means like you have a heart and you, you, you know, you actually going to live a regular life. Now, I am going to write you a script to get on the nearest plane. We don't care if it's spirit. Southwest, Delta, or JetBlue and get your ass out to L.A. to the L.A. house with Mike because you know that Mike got a history of cheating. you the first woman he ever been monogamous with, allegedly, or at least the monogamy that you know about. So I'm just trying to say, why you down here trying to chase a reality show that's long been down the gutter and a reality show that you don't even fit in with no more. You need to be out in L.A. with your man to make sure he ain't running no holes up and down that L.A. house. That's the real reason why you wanted your daughter Noel to be out there at Mike's house to make sure he won't run no holes there with your daughter. You ain't no damn dummy. What man you know got 35 female friends with no male friends inside at that engagement party, Cynthia. You should have known some shit was wrong in and you know you ain't never been that good with picking a man. So it's time for you to go live your life and go be with Mike. You was pushing it these last few seasons. We were bored. We were yawning. We were over it. And, and I was just like, damn, at this point, Cynthia has nothing else to give us. Okay? All she was going to do was come back next season and fake a, a, a whole pregnancy journey we know damn well you weren't trying to do that so best of luck to you cynthia you take your script you get your pretty ass out of my office and you go to la with your husband and you make love to him so he don't be making love to nobody else that's what you do that's what you do all right next we got to talk about lauren hill okay lauren hill in the field yeah she's too sweet she's awesome at least on camera but you got a big heart. You a good person. You don't need to be on reality TV. Let that be for the gutter, folks. You ain't gutter. We seen that when you kicked for You kicked up one time in other You supposed to get up and then stomp out. Anyway, moving right along, we got to talk about Lauren Hill and the fact that she's back on tour with the Fugees. And we got to write her a script because Lauren 
I'm going to speak for the people and we're going to say we don't want you to waste our damn time. Now, after 25 years, the Fugees have finally forgiven Lauren for throwing that pussy around, apparently. The whole reason why we had such a great group with one album that we still talking about, no shade, but only one, that broke up what was possibly decades of legacy of good music they could have given us all because she threw a little pussy around and lied about a paternity test. Meanwhile, Wycliffe, who she was screwing, had a whole wife. So I'm trying to figure out the level of narcissism a person has to have to be a married person and get mad that you cheated on them and they're cheating on their spouse with you. Is it even cheating at that point? I'm cheating on you with my wife, but you cheated on me. With the man that cheated on his wife, which you it what? And you never got over that. You never got over Wide Club. That's why you gave us one good heartbroken album after that, and then you disappeared into oblivion. And after all this time, now y'all asked him to go on tour. And the doctor said that I'm writing everybody a script who buys the ticket. I'm writing them an automatic refund if your ass is more than an hour late to the gig. We don't want to hear that bullshit. We want to hear the bullshit about your aura, your chi, or not in one of those. I'm going to send a separate tour bus for Lauren. Okay? And this and that tour bus is going to be a day ahead of the other members of the foodie. She would get in the city a day ahead of everybody else to make sure that she will only be 15 minutes late to the actual damn show. People ain't got time to be spending their hard-earned PPP money that they asked them to go to prison for, okay, in 54321 for your ass to be a late, six hours late, four hours late, eight hours late because you had to get yourself together. Man, you ain't got but one song. You've been singing them for almost 30 years. You know all the lyrics to them. Snap, snap, Get your ass on stage. You don't even need rehearsal at this point, to be quite honest, all right? Uh, uh, also, I will say, though, Lauren, it is good to be hearing about you in the news, and, you know, it ain't nothing to do with your taxes or nothing to do with you beating your kids' ass. You know, here, apparently, apparently you was late to all them concerts because you was around there whooping ass like Joe Jackson and Neville and Brass and all them years. That's why your ass was late. But anyway, that being said, you know, you was one of the best to ever do it. It's a shame how your story ended up, but you know, we in a new day now and folks want what they pay for. So you make sure you carry your ass to every concert date that you commit to. And if you can't commit to it, then don't do it. Do a virtual concert and leave it at that. Leave it at that. And for damn sure, whatever y'all do, don't try to make no more new music. We don't care. We only want to hear the old shit. And that's that. We want you on time. We want you sounding good. All right. All right, Lauren. Okay. Took y'all 25 years to forgive her for throwing some pussy when Wycliffe was throwing dick around on his own wife. Y'all disgust me. Anyway, take your script. Get out of my office. And y'all have a good tour. Y'all enjoy y'all tour. Are y'all going to see Lauren in the Fugees? I just want to know. Y'all going to see him? Are we sure she knows she's supposed to be there? Look, I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's saying they'll pass. Not buying a ticket. Missy said, I'm pregnant by you, Storm. Um, you're not pregnant by me for sure. Anyway, moving right along from that. Okay. We're going to talk about Miguel. And Nas, real quick, right after 17 years of being together, they have broken up. And a doctor is writing them a script to quickly move in back together. We will not be approving this divorce by any means necessary because you can't take half of a woman's life and then expect her to be able to move on. Do you? Okay, okay. Let's back up. First off, they both 35. They got together at 18. They just got married three years ago. And now they separated because they need to both figure out who they are and trying to find their best selves. And let's let's just keep it real. They both a little bored and they both out here trying to find something new. We, the people, want to let you know it ain't shit out here. Go home. I know you bored. Stability and consistency is so hard to get through to know, you know, who you're having sex with every night. Then you ain't got to worry about, you know, you just, you already know who you're laying down your head with. You got all the same stories. I know it gets boring. You want a little new piece of this. You want a little new piece of that. On a side note, Miguel, I'm writing you a script to get a fucking haircut, nigga. I want you to get a haircut. I don't know what it is. It might be me. I don't like when people with loosely coiled hair get dreads. I don't like it. 
I don't think dreads are for straight haired people. It's for the kinky haired folks. It's for us. It's not for y'all. No shade. Yo, dreads look a mess. You never have them done. They look like shit. I want it out your head. You would wear that curly do that we are used to, or you can wear some waves. That's it. That's it. I hate that shit. It look, you don't even keep it up. anyway. Side note, side note, side note. That's the reason for her to break up with your ass. Not no other shit that y'all doing. But anyway. I will be writing you guys a script for some counseling, some marital counseling, because you guys need it. And all the self-discovery that y'all trying to do, you can do it with yourself. If you want to do a little Tiana and Tiny, a little Tiana Taylor and Iman, they bring a little strange little something in, which I done probably already done. But if you want to do that, do that. Knock it out. Get it out your system and move on. But I promise you both, if y'all leave this relationship that y'all have both been in since you were 18, you both will live to regret it. Dumb asses. God and found the love of their life and trying to mess it up to get some little piece of strange out here in the streets. Like, stop. Just stop. Just ruining everything. Ugh. You make me sick. Make me sick. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me read your comments real quick. Looking like a white Jamaican. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. They've been together 17 years. Mm-hmm. Sure have. All right, moving right along. We got to talk about Will and Jada. All right, Will Smith and done an interview with GQ magazine and is finally admitting that he and Jada are not monogamous as if we didn't know. We didn't know that a woman that made it clear you was not the love of her life and that Tupac Amaru Shakur, a.k.a. Lassane Crooks Jr. was. We know the same man that treated Dwayne Martin better than he ever treated Jada. We know that y'all been living separate houses. We know you didn't build that big ass compound out in California for nothing. We know when Jada admitted herself that she didn't want them kids and she didn't even want to marry you. But she damn near was forced to by her mother. Who told her, this is the best your ass gonna get you better get it. And she said, no ma, that ain't what I want. She said, you gonna walk your ass down that aisle. And then you got her pregnant and you kept her ass at home. Jada has and always will be a free spirit. You cannot keep her in a cage, Willard. And you have control issues, Willard. And according to Alexis Arquette, when Jada comes out as gay and her bearded husband admits his first marriage ended, when she walked in on him, blank servicing his sugar daddy, Benny Medina, then I will listen to them. Will threw a fit on a set of six degrees of separation when he was required by the scene to kiss Anthony Rapp. In six degrees of separation, wasn't that white boy uh, turn his bunky up from the back or was he turned that white boy bunky up from the back? I done forgot. I was like five when that movie came out. Uh, you, 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 anyway, uh, he persuaded the director to shoot the back of his head, blocking the non-existent lip lock entirely, but he ain't had no problem sticking his tongue down Jaden's throat. Gays have enemies. They lurk in gilded closets out on his healthy. You're either for us or against us. You decide today. Damn. And Alexis Arquette put that out there years ago on Facebook. Anyway, I say all that to say we knew that you guys had other people because y'all treat other people better than y'all treat y'all selves. I don't know why the world jumped down Jada's throat because she was kissing on August Alcina's tattoos and had Captain Hook down her throat making her feel good better than she didn't ever felt. Why y'all jump down her throat when Will been making himself feel good for the longest? This ain't nothing but a Hollywood setup. Do they love each other? I guess. These people ain't been together in about 10, 15 years. Stop. These Hollywood niggas get me. Tell us some stuff like we don't know. Oh my God, we're not together. Really? You know, anybody that you tell... That once you marry me, you're not allowed to leave? We pretty much know what it is, Willard. And we're still trying to figure out, and Tisha Campbell Martin is still trying to figure out how her house was in your name. And how you take Dwayne Martin on better vacations than Dwayne ever took her on. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to write them a script to keep their booze, Okay. Uh, because, well, hell, it is what it is. Uh, Will, you move in your boo on your side of the house. Jada, you move in your Captain Hook on your side of the house. Matter of fact, uh, well, no, nah, don't don't go get August Alcina. I do want to, uh, I do want all the tapes of Jada and August Alcina's uh, interactions with one another because this fool is online talking about he got one more time around the sun 
which means he got one year to live. And I'm trying to figure out ever since he's been up inside you, Jada, he ain't been the same. So we need to see them interactions for educational purposes only. And last but not least, we still want to know why you treated Dwayne better than you ever treated Jada. We want to know why you smiled harder with Dwayne than you ever did with Jada. And we want to know, was Jada ever meant to truly be your wife or was she just meant to shit you out some children and create a, a image, your Hollywood image? We want to know, sir. I'm writing out a script of both to bring our ass back to the Red Table Talk and have a real discussion. Not the fake one, the real one. Talk about all those sexual escapades. Y'all talk about everybody else's business. And it's time for y'all to talk about y'all's too. Shit, y'all know you never love each other. Tupac been dead 27 years. She's still out here wearing love letters like that man is alive. Getting tatted, looking like a more and more every day. I bet it was many times, Will, you was on top of her or maybe just behind her or maybe you put a pillow over your head. I don't know how y'all get down, but I know it was many times y'all did it and she was thinking about Tupac. If Tupac went in that bullshit, I know she would have been with him. Mm -mm -mm. God, it has to be bad to know that <laughs> you will never be your wife's first, only her second at best. Anywho... Oh, yeah, Will and Lisa Ray husband too, ex-husband too. Why are the men nicer to each other than they are to the women? Oh, you let me know. Anyway, we need to move on to talk about Kelly Price. Kelly Price, who we thought belonged on the back of a milk carton, we thought we was going to have to send out an ebony alert for her, has finally come out and said, look, I had C-19, almost died. And uh, I just want to recover in peace, okay? And I am diagnosing you with being absolutely selfish, okay? Here's the thing. You not talking to your sister, eh, siblings fall out all the time. You ain't talked to your sister in a year since your mama died, and it is what it is. If that relationship is estranged, then fine. But at the end of the day, Kelly Price, you you are not going to have to pay the price for what you did because you could have got on the phone. You could have called R. Kelly. You could have called Mr. Biggs. You could have called anybody and let them know that your ass was okay. But you sat there and you let this become a like a, a, na a national news. You let this shit go viral without you uploading a 30-second video saying, Hi, I'm good. I'm alive. I don't want to be bothered by. I do also want to know how you had time to go get your hair nails and makeup done but didn't have time to check in with your kids some people saying your daughters knew where you was some people saying your kids didn't but what we do want to know is why you just bought your husband a record label we do want to know if you bought your wedding ring we do want to know why you got married and didn't tell nobody we do want to know did you get proper counseling before your ass got married again knowing that you went through a domestic violence with your last husband for like two decades so you know after you go through after you get your ass beat for two decades you ain't all the way normal in the head and you don't really make decisions on the next person that you get with so we want to know the doctor wants you to come to the office because i need to know is this a case of true love or is this just a case of you just being desperate and wanting to cling on to anybody is this a case of true love or did your ass get scared because you died and came back and now you just don't want to live the rest of your life alone and you cling to whatever is closest to you do this man really love you or is it using you did you even get a prenup or if y'all break up, is it going to take every last little bit of R&B diva money that you got? We want to know. You didn't got the brat jumping in it now, going off on us, yelling at us in the car with the camera on her double chin. Why the hell are you yelling at us, the brat? We not apologizing for caring. We're not apologizing for thinking that the woman was missing and actually using the power of social media, which is what a shit should be used for. To just make sure she good. While she sat there and watched us give a fuck. We're not apologizing for caring. We weren't trying to get in her business. We thought she was missing. We thought she was dead. The fuck? They said her kids hadn't heard from her. I'm also sending in a family counselor for Kelly, you and your children. I don't know if you and your kids actually talking now. Some say you did, some say you didn't. This is what I do know. You done married this new nigga and your kids don't like him. 
don't trust them, don't know them, and they don't approve of this relationship. And you said, fuck them kids. I don't know if the dick is that good or if you just that desperate, but something needs to be fixed in this situation. Never have I ever ran across too many black mothers that didn't check in with their kids no matter what. Ain't nothing stopping a black mama from picking up the phone. Either she checking on you or she cussing you out, but she picking up that phone nonetheless. You ain't talking to your kids. Sounds like isolation. Sounds like the second stage of domestic violence if you ask me. So I just want you to come to the office so we can make sure you good. Make sure you ain't out here buying love. Okay? If you wanna, if you wanna mess with your sister, cool. If you don't wanna talk to her, that's cool too. That's cool too. But I'm gonna write you a script for you to write a check back to the police department that spent resources out looking for your ass because you was on a missing persons list and you could have did it this in, in a 30 second video. You could have just FaceTime your sister. Bitch, I'm good. Bye. That's it. That's all you had to do. But instead, you let us cause a ruckus and then say, I just want my peace. Ma'am, 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 you can have your peace, but just let us know that you're good. That's it. Let your kids know you're good. But if you with any man that don't want you to have a strong relationship with your kids, shit, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. We want to know why you bought that man a record label. We want to know. <sighs> you bring your ass to my office, Kevin. Matter of fact, don't come to my office. I'm going to send a caseworker by your house to check on you for uh, once a month for the next six to 12 months, okay? They're going to interview you in the room alone, and I want you to blink twice if your ass be held against your will of being cloned. I almost thought your ass was MK Ultra, so I figured out you ain't had no hit record in years, so they ain't worried with your ass. But people cared. And we being demonized for caring? You got the brat and Nikki Gilbert going at it and throwing shade. And making this about them. When it wasn't about them, it was supposed to be about Kelly. And the brat, you gonna sit your ass down. You got enough anger, damn issues. You got smoke for anybody, you gonna have smoke for your sister. Who embarrassed you on Fox Soul when you just want to wish her a happy birthday. And she cussed your ass smooth out. You go get some therapy for your sister that you still scared of. Like she going to put you, your big ass over her knee and spank her. At, you, you 45 years old. Girl, you still scared of a whooping? You better fight back. Lisa Ray got hands like that. That girl put the fear of God in you when she put the rod on your ass. Why was she whooping your ass anyway, Brett? Weird ass people. And stop that damn baby voice she be talking in on the show. Stop the sick of that shit too. Anyway, Kelly paid them people back. Brett, go on back and, and make sure you marry that woman. That's the best thing you didn't have. Uh, 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 Nikki gonna, you know, Nikki gonna do her. Nikki didn't say nothing too bad. She plugged the show. So what? So what? So what? All right. Oh, and another thing too, Debrat, stop telling us you Mariah Carey best friend because she sure don't claim you like you claim her. Is you her? She, you her best friend? Is she, but, uh, that's my best friend. She a real, be I'm just saying, she claimed you, but you claim her, but she ain't claiming you. Brat. Sick of that fucking nickname too. Damn, they're 50 years old being called Brat. That's your damn problem. That's why you're still talking to that fucking baby ass motherfucking boy. Brat, Brat. It's time to be Shantae. It's time to be Shantae. Or Sean when you're feeling a little stud. Like, anyway. I forgot to put R. Kelly's picture up here. Let me pop this picture up real quick. Uh, let's see. So they didn't uh, convicting him, a racketeering, 10 counts of blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's guilty and he's facing between uh, 10 years to life in prison. OK, if I can find this picture, if not, I'll find another one real quick. R. Kelly. I hate to even talk about this fool because um, none of this is a shock. But anyway. Uh, OK, OK, OK. Hold up. Hold up. Mm 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 mm. -mm. R. Kelly, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. All right. Let me check on y'all comments here before we 
talk about this fool. Get this fool in it. A matter of fact, I mean, we got to do this script virtually because uh, they ain't letting him out to come to my office. Uh, let's see. I love y'all. Shout out to all 4,400 of y'all in the building. All right. We go, why y'all call her Shonda Stud? Stop. Anyway, move right along. We got to talk about Rob, We got to talk about Robert Sylvester Kelly. All right, the Pied Piper. We do. Um, we we do. <laughs> I guess I will give him props for literally telling us all these years who he was and nobody cared. But let's talk about it. All right. R. Kelly is found guilty. I would like to write him a script, but I don't write scripts for pedophilia. I don't write script for sexually traumatized fuck ass niggas that still want to screw kids and will always want to screw kids. Okay. I want to write a script for his sister, fat ass Teresa Kelly, who wrote his dick as kid, which is why he's so messed up. Now I'm on a script for her. I don't give a damn if Teresa is in the church now. Uh, she always going to be that molester to me. That's just my opinion. You think you, 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 you think about it how you do. Now here's my thing. He's guilty. He's guilty. He's guilty. Okay, Michelle told y'all about the women in the fish tank and the women in the rooms. It, it got, we, we all know what's up. It was it was the men, it was the women, it was the force, it was the young, he like a 15, 16. We already know what's up. He was trying to flee to South Africa with the girls before he got hemmed up, but hell, he couldn't spell their names for the, he can't even spell his own damn name for the damn uh, passport application. Not to mention that he took them girls out before they had their own socials and birth certificates. So it just, it was, it was a mess. It didn't work. Anyway, with that being said, what script can we write for Robert Kelly? He walk around with a Bible that he can't read, okay? He act like he innocent, but he wasn't innocent when he was doing that bullshit. But you know what I'm writing him a script for? I'm writing him a script to confess, all right? You need to confess how you did all of what you did. See, the documentary is only telling us so much, okay? Because it's protecting the John Legends. It's protecting the Jay-Zs. It's protecting all the artists, that, that did features with you, that was around you, that saw what you did and said nothing. All the parents of them daughters, I'm writing them a script for them to be in jail right next to you because y'all are all just as guilty. Everybody who orchestrated, everybody who bought a plane ticket, a bus ticket, a Motel 6 room, they are all going to jail with you. That is my script. He's a P-E-D-O. It ain't no change in him. He's done. He's ruined. He's tarnished. He's trash. But everybody around him and everybody in the industry that was cool with it, making music in the studio, he got a pissy stained mattress next to the mic. You telling me these artists he doing songs with don't see the pissy stained mattress? You telling me when he was running them trains in the studios? Come on now. It was in the books. We're going to call the thing a thing. You mean to tell me that none of them rap dudes he was having, making songs with, none of them participated in it? You mean to tell me he didn't bring his girls for none of his homies? He loved sharing with the homies. He loved the homies. It's plenty of booty in prison for him to get his fleece Johnson on. He'll be perfectly fine. Okay? It's enough uh, supporters out there to keep money on his books for the rest of his life. It ain't no script I can write him. Y'all should have called him 20, 30 years ago. He's lived his life. This man could die now and pretty much die a happy man. Now he's going to get three hots in the cot. Okay. And y'all going to act like he ain't the king of R&B, but he is. But that's okay. But that's cool too. All right. Justice for Aaliyah, Aaliyah. But it ain't going to be no justice to Aaliyah's parents are in prison too. Because they sold her. And her uncle who sold her. And a pastor who married her to him who said, this don't look right, but I'm going to marry him anyway. All you hoes need to be in prison next to him. It ain't just him. That I'm not an R. Kelly supporter, but it ain't just him. And I hate how y'all get on these these these, these hate, I don't want to say hate train because he deserves it, but I love how like y'all let the media rile y'all up and y'all forget that this is a fool that can't can read he just learned how to order his meal at mcdonald's this is a child in a grown-ass man's body that still wants you to call him daddy okay maybe when Teresa was riding him she made him call my mommy i don't know i know he's been screwed up from the start because didn't nobody take the time to teach him how to read now Teresa, when you was riding him and molesting him at least you could have done this gave him a little hooked on phonics 
with your nasty ass. All y'all nasty. All y'all sold y'all kids for fame. Y'all thought y'all daughters was going to be the next Aaliyah, the next K. Michelle, the next this, the next that. And they weren't. A lot of y'all parents weren't shit, didn't come from shit, happened to have a half-talented daughter. And instead of taking the correct route, you tried to take a shortcut into the industry and it didn't work. You was left with a bumped up box and many disappointments. But I'm sorry, you was messed with you. Your, your box, y'all boxes out here looking like Nestle Crunch Bars. You had many black eyes and got choked out. You will never, ever get over the memories of drinking urine and feces. Okay, no word on if he ate that corn before he made you eat them feces. You would just never, you would never be the same after all you went through. And for what? To forever be mm, the girl that R. Kelly pissed on, shitted on, kept in a room, kept in a fish tank. And y'all want some sympathy. Y'all get snubbed for me. Y'all all need to go to prison. That's what I hope. That's my prayer at night. That y'all all pay for what you did. And how you sold them girls. Mm, 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 mm. Best of luck to you, Robert. Whether you do 10 years or you do life, you ain't going to be worth nothing once your ass get out. And all them people that was around you benefiting off your money, Robert, you $2 million in debt. Where they going to be at? They going to be gone. Long gone. If they smart, they'll leave the country before, you know, more charges start coming down. I'm just saying. Just saying. It ain't no script I can write them. It, it, it ain't no script I can write them. He's sick. He done. He been sick and he been done. So let me uh, take like five to ten minutes here to answer y'all questions. And then, ooh, my uh, Instacart arrived. Okay, cool. And then um, I want to come back tonight so you guys can actually like chime in and uh just talk about all the stories from the past week and what you think about it. So let me know if y'all be down for an after show on this channel. It's going to be on this channel where y'all just click on and tell me what you think. Oh, damn. We topped out 4,700 in this piece. Um, all right. Questions, comments, concerns, put them in the chat. Got five to 10 minutes. Let's, let's get it. They need to go after the white execs to do the same and worse. Yes. Um, it, it gets deep. It gets deep, but then you're going to get into like the government officials. It, it gets very deep. It gets very deep. Uh, the script don't drop the soap. He wants to drop the soap. No, he wants to. He slept with men and women, so he's going to be fine in prison. He told y'all he was trapped in a closet. Oh my God. Queen Dora says, Storm, I love you so much like family. Oh, I love you too. They said I'm down for the after show. You better get that food out of the heat. Listen, it ain't no uh, perishables. It's some protein bars and shit. Uh, love the backdrop. Thank you, thank you. He won't do all that time, though. It's not over. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, what fish tank? Okay, so in his house, I don't know if it's the Atlanta house or the Chicago house, he had women literally in fish tanks in the walls. So you know those movies you see with, when the drug dealers got the women in the fish tanks, like, like it's literal fish tanks that fit on the wall, that, that are built into the wall. Let me see if I can find one to show y'all. Okay, Michelle told y'all about it. Uh, fish tanks in wall. Um, I'm going to give y'all an idea. Nope, one in the actual house. Okay. Let me uh, fish tank. Let me post this up. So it's something like way, way bigger though, but something like this. Uh, there we go. All right, cool. So it's like that, but way bigger. So imagine a wall to wall fish tank and women swimming in it with their snorkels and all. I mean, they were dead in there, but they were, they were part of entertainment. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, Michelle need to go to jail too. She need to be, she should have been subpoenaed. Thank you, uh, C Cutie. Is Rihanna pregnant? She might be. I've been noticing Rihanna been holding her stomach. Uh, I'm sorry, Rihanna been holding her stomach a lot. Um, she's happy. And I mean, you can tell who run, who wear the pants in that relationship and that works for them. I'm happy for her. I know a lot of y'all think that Rih Rihanna and, is it ASAP Rocky? 
I get him mixed up with Travis Scott. I know y'all think like that's a weird like pairing, but it works. Uh, so do you think the Gabby story is a psyop? It might be. Um, one of your best shows. So, oh, thank you, thank you. So the industry sacrifice from uh sacrifice them so they can keep others on top. That's the thing about this industry, right? They'll let you get away with whatever as long as you're the cash cow. But if you but if you going down. Will take them down. They're going to do what they have to do to get you out the way. Everybody's trying to protect themselves. Like my inside scoop told me, basically this game is, okay, so the industry is everybody working together, but competing against each other. So there's tension, but fake befriending each other to get tea on each other, to spill it to the blogs and the tabloids so that their real tea don't get out. So, yeah, that's that. Okay, that's that. That's why I don't tell nobody nothing. I don't tell nobody nothing that I don't want to get out. My life boring anyway. I don't be doing nothing like that. Like that. Uh, oh, y'all want to know what I did in Mexico? I keep forgetting. I forgot. They said I did a whole porn in Mexico. Like I need to. I live in Atlanta. Like I need to go to porn uh, to Mexico to do an adult film. Anywho, your thoughts on the view issue? They knew that Sonny was about to tear into Kamala Harris's behind about the Haitian immigration issue, and that's what that was. And they quickly pulled Sonny off stage and pulled the other lady off stage. All that was fake. We knew that. TV is fake. Is Kylie having twins? I don't know. I think she is having a boy, though. Kim K hosting SNL on the 9th. It will be lackluster, much like it is whenever Kim talks. She's come a long way, though, but I don't see her as funny. But maybe she'll do a good job. Maybe. Maybe. So, what do you think about K. Michelle's new Lifetime show? It's about damn time it came out. I hope she warned them girls. Only thing is, I don't know why y'all ain't pretending that all of these girls' booties done dropped. They steady telling us they booty real, they booty looking lopsided, booty falling to their knees. It ain't they losing weight everywhere but that booty. All of them finna be looking crazy in 10 years. That shit's a fad. Hey, we already passed it. Looking like ants life on bugs life on purpose. What's up with Shaq saying he's not claiming celebrity status no more? Shaq is a Prince Hall Freemason. He don't want to be sacrificed. Bye. A porn star said Rihanna is out here burning people like Ursher. I did hear that. Those Rihanna STD rumors have been around since she was with Chris. If y'all remember, they said that was the real reason why Chris beat her up because he burned, because she burned him, allegedly. But listen, most of the industry burning, that is nothing new. Next. Samantha said, what do you think about Rihanna, uh, Nikki and Petty? Here's the thing with Nikki and Petty. This is what I think Nikki needs to do. I think Nikki needs to give one good interview and she needs to, I don't, I don't it can, it can be to anybody. But no, it has to be the right person, a reputable person. And when and if this interview happens, y'all give me my credit that I said she needs to do it. She needs an interview with a reputable person that will give her an opportunity to explain why she chose Kenny. No matter what, both sides of the story has been told, okay? He has paid his dues to society. I'm not gonna get on here. I yeah, yeah. I already know what y'all finna say. So if you want a Nikki interview one day, so you don't ever talk about her. No, but at the same time, I'm not going to kiss ass either. So listen, she need an interview with a reputable person. She doesn't need to explain herself because people got questions. Her husband got his pass. We know what happened with her brother. That ain't her fault, but by proxy, it don't look good. So that's it. An interview for them to truly show and tell their life story. Open and honest. Any question asked, they answer. And then after that, everybody will move on. You still might not like it, but they need to show, no, we united, and it is what it is. And plus, Nikki didn't make her money. She said for life, she really don't care what y'all think. Next. Next, next, next. Uh, Andy Cohen, nah, nah, she don't need to interview with Andy Cohen. She should interview with me. She should. I'm going to ask her real questions. But, you know, I don't have a big name like that yet. Um, Let's see. 
She needs to interview with you. I'm here for her interviewing with me. I'm here for it. Is Wendy coming back this year? She going to dope herself enough, up enough to come back. The real question is, is she going to make it back next year? Do you think R. Kelly going to snitch on everyone? He might. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee he's already been threatened, though. What time is it? Let's see how far we going. A few more minutes we can get off here. What do you think about the Karen Silver mess? Um, yeah, I I decided like not to talk about her too much outside of the interview. Um, just because some bloggers that was involved with it, I didn't I did not want to talk about them. I don't even want to say their name. Ugh. But anyway, I'll say this. Um, when it comes to her, she's industry standard. I'll leave it at that. That story with her is not uncommon in the industry. It's just not. Now, allegedly, her asking WAC 100 to off another rapper, that's what y'all need to be talking about. Damn some money. In this game, you do got people that will have another person taken out. But they tell you, oh, it was a car accident. Oh, they did this. Oh, they did that. Hell no. Now, they pay people. This game is full of mobsters, gang members. This... I'm telling you, in this game, you're going to stay in line if you want to be a part of certain circles. And you always wonder why people don't speak out. They don't speak out because their life is at stake. When you have enough to back you up, then you can. But usually not right when something happens. You usually can't. I'm just saying. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What do you think about Woe Vicky exposing the industry? Woe Vicky exposed that she went to a Hollywood party that was held by an A-list celebrity that required her to give up her phone, sign documents, okay, and as well as give a prick of her blood. This was on Halloween. This one number the ritual. Y'all know this is what Hollywood parties are for, for rituals to be done. And if you don't believe me, that's fine, but... You can't tell me that them Hollywood parties ain't weird and that stuff don't be happening and going on. Just saying. So, um, for as so as well Vicky is, and I, I thought she was the type to be drooling on herself, she said, you ain't, I ain't give you my blood to come here and I ain't signing shit. And she didn't go. And I got to give her respect for that. I give her respect for beating up bad baby. I give her respect for not going to that party because I wouldn't have went either. I ain't going nowhere. I can't take my phone. I guess it ain't meant for me to go. I guess it ain't. I don't, mm, too damn paranoid for that. Um, let's see. Um, yes, it was Bella Thorne. Yes, AJ Johnson. Is that the one that, yeah, that's the one that passed away. Okay, AJ Johnson, the one that passed away. His wife was out here, I guess, trying to shame people for not giving to their GoFundMe. It was not our fault that that man didn't have life insurance. And it's not our problem. Um, as black folks, we deal with that enough. Okay. If you a grown ass person and you ain't at least got a $10,000 policy on yourself to put you in the dirt. Cremating ain't nothing but 3,500. As far as I'm concerned, he needs to be cremated. I don't know why people are so against cremation. It's affordable. You can keep that. Some of the ashes if you want, but Y'all really let this funeral business trick y'all into spending a bag on something that's going to go in the ground. And you never going to see it again. I guess, I guess, I guess I'm, I, you know, I, you know, I, I know I done came off as cold and therapy is working on me. Okay, so I get the emotional part behind it. I said the same thing when my grandmother died. I ain't going to front. I said the same thing. What are we having a funeral for? She didn't fuck with half the people that showed up. What are we doing this for? And 30K for a funeral? No, ma'am. You can bury that man for less than 10. Even in LA. Stop. Stop. They trying to finesse you because you got a little bit of celebrity. I'm sorry he passed away. Yeah, I was obviously estranged because it was normal for you not to hear from your husband a month at a time, two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time. So we can read in between the lines, no disrespect, but you get no sympathy here. Cremate that man, keep him moving. 
How do you feel about the situation with the Haitian immigrants? I think if we can let them South American immigrants in here, we can let the Haitians in here. I also think that um, we need to keep an eye out on them because we still don't know what happened to all them Haitian kids from that last earthquake back in the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I worked in Arizona in DCS, let's talk about it. I'm going to tell y'all. A lot of those Haitian kids from the hurric from the uh, earthquake back in 05, I think. Y'all correct me on a year. A lot of them got adopted by white people, okay? Uh, when I worked in Arizona, we dealt with several cases of those then kids that were then turning 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever. And uh, the white folks didn't want them no more. And they didn't want them because they didn't turn out to be an athlete or an entertainer. You know, they just, they didn't have no more use for them no more. Some of them was, screw, was literally screwing them kids, okay? So a lot of them got sold into a little bit of sex slavery. I'm going to let you know, okay? Uh, there was also a group of people in Arizona, a husband and wife in particular. This is public record. that went over to Nigeria, Somalia, and Mali, convinced parents over there that for a price, I'm going to take your kid over because these, Af these African kids were like seven feet tall, right? By the way, them African kids was the most well-mannered kids ever. They, like, literally, on my case, load, they seven feet, I'm five, six, and they still show me, like, respecting. You know, they don't look you in the eye, and they sit down because they can't talk on the same level. It's with, anyway, anyway, respect. I'm like, damn, y'all way more respectful than these black American kids. But anyway, uh, brought these seven-foot-ass Africans over here, all right, put them all in apartments, on bunk beds, and told the boys, because these were all boys that they was collecting, that, and this was a white lady doing this. So, husband, wife, bunch of African teenage boys. And she said that the way you make money in America is that you sleep with white women. White women. So, if you want to stay here, you got to sleep with me. And she had them boys running trains on her. She had them seven foot, look like grown ass men, so you already know it's a BBC fantasy. It's a sick ass fantasy, and her husband was down for it, and then they got paid by the parents. Do y'all know? Even though she was running that in Arizona, she was in jail sixty days, got out on probation. They put her on the sex offender list, and that was that. So apparently, when you do certain crimes, you don't really do no time for it. But that's the direction this country is going in. But that's a Patreon conversation. Um, they said, I believe it. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's the truth. That is the truth. And I ain't saying no allegedly because I that was literally on my caseload. We literally was like, look, you know, you 17. We can't send you back home to your war torn country. So, I mean, we got them help. We put them in other foster homes, but some of them boys was traumatized. Um, let's see. That's horrible. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's what it was. Are you serious? I'm dead ass serious. I used to work for the Department of Child Safety in Arizona. I worked out of the Mesa, Arizona office. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's see. Slavish, yes. Slavery never stopped. All right. Let's see. Uh, I'll give you a couple more minutes. I had fun tonight. Did y'all have fun tonight? I had fun tonight. Storm, what do you think about Doja Cat talking about starving Africans after what she what she say about starving Africans? Ain't she half African? Uh, Queen Dora says, Storm, the sports agents told me this, as did the athletes at my college for D1 basketball. It's business. Yeah, it's a business. It's a whole business. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to leave that there, okay? We had a good show. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. We will be back live tomorrow, of course, and I want to come back live. Uh, give me like an hour to eat, and I want to come back so you guys can chime in on everything that's been going on this week. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Storm Monroe. 
Um, make sure you text me 678-679-6077. Right? Just, just text what's up to that number. 678-679-6077. You will get text updates, announcements, etc. I will be announcing um something real soon. All right. There will only be 80 spots for it. Um, I gotta talk to y'all about this new nutritional product. I guess we'll talk tomorrow. We can talk tomorrow, but anyway. Um, catch y'all in a little bit and, uh, yeah, peace out.